Aha! Aha! Heidi ho! Heidi ho, neighbor! Hello, traders. Uh, hello, friends, family, and everyone else. Welcome to Top Step TV. And today we've got, as it says, a stacked, stacked all star crew. It's going to be here for you today. And of course, we've, there's no other show like we give you each and every day of the week that offers everything such as education, trading buddies, market knowledge, rants, and trade entertainment. This is Opening Call. He's Mick and I'm Keith, and we've got an informative and educational show for you today. Each and every day we do have that. We'll be your trading buddy, uh, your trading mentor, newscaster, fellow trader, good friend, neighbor, the kid that bags your groceries, and even that voice in your head that is telling you what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. It sounds <laughs> like the mantra for the market, right? But uh, anyway, let's get ourselves ready and let's say hello to everybody's friend, the trading mentor, the strutter with the gray sweater, John, a.k.a. Mick Hoagland. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Eddie. Tuesday, April the 18th already, as always. We're focusing yeah. on accurate context, good risk management. And remaining patient in our trading. And hopefully, uh, we're all going to have a good trading day. Hoping for profitable days for you and for all, for everybody. Eddie, uh, you're a good looking Keith there. <laughs> a little Botox. I got some Botox at Menards and did it myself. <laughs> Menards. What is it? Home Depot. Home Depot. Let's get ready here. Let's light the wick and see what happens. News today. We had uh, a lot of um meat on the bone here today markets really didn't get loony uh we did top out highs here gold at 240360 we did see some trades here around the 17 685 level for nasdaq e es here sort of same same play 5073 last and the crude just topped the new high here at 8267 but still under the the 8590 level where a lot of traders are hoping that we can get to but uh, we did see yesterday that the S&Ps closed lower, NASDAQ falling for its fourth straight session, and the Dow Jones dropped for its seventh straight session. Um, we did see the uh, economic releases. John's going to talk about those. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, for our uh, semiconductors, this is coming in here on the news that Taiwan Semiconductor, the world's largest contract chip maker, uh, had some badass first quarter results earlier uh, today, posting a 9% rise in profits that beat market market expectations. 9%, that's damn good. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, Tesla had a rough ride lately, announcing earlier that it would be cutting 10% of its workforce, which is around 140,000 employees at the end of 2023. Um, this follows the electric vehicle manufacturer reporting an 8.5 year over year decline in the first quarter deliveries uh, that first dropped since 2020 as it struggles uh, with the Chinese market. Now, yesterday, Elon uh, Musk, my good old friend uh, from the drinking days, also confirmed in an internal email that the company sent out severance packages that were too low for the laid off workers that week. So hopefully they're going to be getting some more, some more cash in the pocket, which is pretty cool coming from him. Uh, but the Tesla stock has fallen more than 10% over the course of the last week. And now is down 37% so far this year. So he's got to do a turnaround there and get that company back up and running. But uh, John, what do you got to add to some news today? Well, as far as economic numbers this morning, everybody, at 7.30, the jobless claims numbers came out. Uh, they were looking for 215,000 initial jobless claims. It came out at 212,000. Nothing shocking there. Nothing shocking in the continuing jobless claims is either. Either, But at 7.30, the Philly Fed number came out. And this is the highest number in two years. They were The previous month was 3.2. They were expecting two. It came out 15.5. That's good news, you would think, right? But is good news actually bad news these days? The markets will let us know. At 8.05, right now, Bowman is speaking. Williams is speaking at 8.15, as well as Bowman. 9 o'clock, existing home sales. 
uh, misleading indicators. It's leading indicators, but we used to call it misleading indicators on the trading floor. 9.30, the net gas numbers come out. 10 o'clock, Bostic speaks. At 10.30, there is a four-week bill auction. And at 11 o'clock, Collins speaks. And that's going to be pretty much a, everything known that is coming out during the trading session today. Earnings, Taiwan Semiconductor, Blackstone, Ele Elevance Health all came out this morning. Uh, Taiwan Semiconductor and Elevance Health missing on revenues. I'm looking at the uh, at the heat map here. We're seeing a, I'm seeing a lot of misses in these uh, in these earnings as far as uh, uh, as far as uh, revenues are concerned. Seeing a lot of red on that board. Netflix is due after the close. One of the big uh, first big tech numbers uh, due out after the close. VIX this morning down 1.5 percent at 17.93. Dollar index flat 106. And the yield on the 10-year, 4.6%, pretty much right where it was yesterday at this time. So um, we're, you know, we're kind of opening in range, opening in value. Uh, that tells me we're going to have to try and be patient today. And that's one of the things we always talk about is remaining patient in your trading today. So, yes, I did put on the rally sweater today. No idea if it's actually going to work, but uh, we, will see what, we will see that throughout the day. Um, looking for a good trading day. Thanks, Johnny. And that sweater looks so good on you. Royal, where's my oil? Dude, where's my crude? Crude prices weakened today. Uh, until we did see this rally just a little while ago, we did see sharp losses prior, uh, even after the Biden administration reimposed sanctions on Venezuela uh, crude imports. So we'll see what happens there. The uh, We did see crude earlier trading 0.4% uh, lower, 82.33 a barrel. Right now we're looking at 82.47, so we're right about there. Uh, the news about the U.S. government has decided to impose sanctions on Venezuela has provided an element of support along with the elevated geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. Now, Venezuela's oil grew about 12% to about 700,000 barrels per day in 2023, it was after the U.S. eased some sanctions on the country's oil industries. Now, um, oil industries rose by 2.7 million barrels to 460 barrels a week. That was our EIA yesterday, and that nearly doubling uh, expectations. Johnny, you, you, you drink a soda every once in a while, right? Yeah, usually it's laced, but yeah, I do drink soda <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> With ice cubes? No, 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 yeah. no, no. Uh, Cuba Libra, right? A little, uh, yeah. little Roman yeah, Coke I there. like a nice Roman yeah. Coke once in a while. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah you, you ever drink Dr. Pepper? Yeah, uh, I, I do like Dr. Pepper. Um, you know, I try not to, to drink too much soda pop. I mean, it's really not that good for you, so it's I try and avoid it. Right. Unless it's lace, then I'm okay with it. <laughs> Unless it's lace. Well, you know what? The latest creation from Dr. Pepper, um, they're talking about this thing called a dirty soda. It doesn't sound appetizing. They should have named it something else. But last month, the soda brand teamed up with Coffee Mate uh, to release a special dirty soda creamer uh, meant specifically for Dr. Pepper. All you had to do is add the coconut lime flavored creamer uh, to your sweet and spicy soda, and you've got a dirty soda. Now, Dr. Pepper is taking an innovation here one step farther. Uh, what they did is they've, they're coming out with a limited time creamy coconut and coconut zero sodas uh, after a layer of tropical toasted coconut and finish creamy with the unique Dr. Pepper flavor. So it's not really a true dirty soda, uh, but uh, doesn't it just sort of give you that sense of summer mm -hmm. is here? Coconuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coconut. Say it. Coconut. I love Dr. Pepper. I'll give it a shot. Why not? Why not? Why not? Laced or not. All right. Um, James, our good friend James, we were talking to him earlier this morning, and uh he's up and ready, got us going here, a little kick in the butt saying, Okay, guys, you're on. But James, can you bring us our tip of the week, please? And there it well, he is quick on that button. Mm -hmm technical analysis well you know what i'm going to talk about volume volume is very important uh as a technical analysis increasing volume um sometimes does show us price movement confirms strength in the market in a trend uh while if you're seeing light volume like we've been seeing here this week uh this might signal a potential reversal so keep your eyes on the volume and uh, trade accordingly john 
Uh, well, right along with volume comes open interest. Open interest is even in the Series 3 books as a an important uh, fundamental indicator, also kind of a technical indicator. When we see a strong trend with higher volume and increasing open interest, we can we can then kind of uh, we can kind of think that you know this 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 auction is doing well and likely to continue. So right along with volume, there comes open interest, and we talk about those every morning here on the opening call. All right, and uh, for those for everybody, everybody. Um, now yesterday we had our uh, fire drill. We had our bell to bell fire drill. And those that did get three check-ins, remember you had to have three, all right, three check-ins, um, those eligible, you're going to get an email with a code before the end of the day tomorrow, all right? So Friday, you'll get the end of the day before the end of the day. So you might even get it earlier, uh, but I would suggest save it for next week. You know, let's end the week tomorrow. Um, and that code is good until May 1st. All right, so you got to activate that and uh, get that up by May 1st. So just a little tip and a little hint. And uh, from there, let's hit some charts. Let's take a look at some charts. Johnny, what do you got for our contestants today? All right. Well, as always, starting with the daily on the S&Ps. Now we've got, you know, a pretty good uptrend, uh, change in direction. And we're currently in a downtrend. Uh, it is currently intact. We, Eddie and I were just talking about volume and open interest. And the volume has been kind of falling off as we've been pushing to lower pricing. In the S&P, so has uh, open interest. We're losing approximately 17000 in open interest yesterday. That's not encouraging for continuation of this downside move. Now, there's a lot of data today, a lot of talking heads. A lot of uncertainties, you know, um, geopolitical uncertainties remain out there. I'm really giving this auction process to the downside a C minus right now because it's not it's not building volume and it's not bringing open interest. Now that can change in a heartbeat, of course, if there's some sort of event or some sort of news that comes out. Everything can change in a heartbeat, of course, and we always say that. ECH, ladies and gentlemen anything can happen this previous trend line that the market seeked out and traded to yesterday is the top of this megaphone pattern that occurred back in december and in january so once we broke out above that we've taken one look below that trend line and that was swiftly rejected we've taken another look at that trend line yesterday we were unable to close below it settlement price was 50 62 quarter uh, we did take a look down there. We're, we're kind of sitting on it today. Look at what the thirty minute is telling us. Um, just early in the just early in the session here, do we have any overnight inventory that might be helpful to bring us back to settlement? It appears that's already happened. So we don't really have any overnight inventory. Uh, I was looking at it. It's a little bit longish, but we just came back and traded back down to settlement. So I think we've evened out that even that overnight inventory. What is it looking like in conjunction with yesterday's range and area of value? We're in the middle of the range and we're in the middle of value. So is that telling us that overnight there's been very little change in the perception of value of the S&P 500? That's what that's telling me. It's basically hanging around yesterday's regular trading hour session um, uh, point of control. So it's telling me, you know, there's probably going to be some gyration from some settling. Uh, we don't know, uh, you know, what's going to happen with any of the uh, talking feds or any of the remaining economic information. Like I said, we have existing home sales and leading indicators at nine o'clock and then a couple of talking feds later on as well. So nine o'clock, may see some changes. My suggestion or what I usually try and sit and think is, all right, well, if there's no change in value, and we're really close to the point of control. We've already tested down to the to the to the to the uh, settlement price we're in the middle of range, in the middle of value. Stay patient. Better trade locations are likely to happen later on in the session. We don't know this for sure. We can't predict that, but we can kind of look back and say, you know, when the market opens in range and in value, one of two things usually happens. We usually just range and set up the initial balance and then look for opportunities there. And if there is a move right off the open. 
that move might be might might be a decent move. So looking at the profile from yesterday, it's a normal variation day, sort of extreme. Uh, you know, there was a pretty decent move down this pullback, this pullback high this this um, yesterday afternoon, fifty ninety seven even fifty ninety seven even. I'm going to be writing that down because if the if we do get an opportunity to trade there, that's where. You know, so we got too short. We we liquidated those shorts up to that level. That's the farthest level the market was able to get to. It lines up relatively nicely with value high around 50.93 even. And I, I might be looking for an opportunity if price gets to that level. Uh, that afternoon pullback high can be a useful level for us. Uh, take a look at the NASDAQ now. All right, let's get the volume up here. Get the volume, get the volume. Okay, so obviously, I mean, we've had a break in market state. We were trending to the upside, range bound. Now it looks like we're starting a new trend to the downside. And how good of a job is it doing? I would say in the NASDAQ, the, the, the NASDAQ is doing a better job on continuing this move to the downside. You see, we, have, we had higher volume in futures yesterday, and we added a little bit in open interest estimated about 1700 in open interest that's not a huge jump in open interest like we've got a whole bunch of traders coming into this market on the sell side however it is you know it is a little bit um encouraging for those of us that are looking to hold some shorts i'd like to see you know more volume more open interest to feed the auction i'm giving the downside auction in the nasdaq a B minus. It is performing better than the, the, the downside auction in the S&Ps. And remember, geopolitical certain uncertainties, much data today, a lot of talking feds, anything can happen. <clears throat> so, um, you know, we're, we're going to be, uh, you know, making sure that, that we're protecting ourselves, protecting our positions, using stops. Uh, and, you know, just managing risk is really the name of the game. Uh, take a look at the 30-minute chart here. All right. So more of a downside trend yesterday. And that, that makes sense. The volume was better. Open interest increased. We had some the com some traders coming in here looking to trade this market to the sell side. And they, they succeeded in that yesterday. On the profile, it's a normal variation extreme day because settlement is right near the low of the session. We did trade to a previous naked point of control. That kind of put in our lows there. The afternoon pullback high in the NASDAQ. I'm going to write this down as well. 17,796 half. 17,796. Let's just call it that. Everything in futures is a zone. There's no finite levels. Everything is more of an area to look for an execution than, than, than a finite level. Uh, overnight inventory. No, we've flattened that out. We've traded back down to settlement here even before the open. We are going to be opening in range and in value, value high, 17,815 approximately on this platform, 17,650 17, approximately is the low end of value, and we're opening in range in value, close to the point of control. Very little change in the perception of value of the NASDAQ, likely to change today at any time, of course. Uh, and again, the normal variation extreme almost turned into a trend day yesterday in the NASDAQ. But that afternoon pullback, again, that afternoon pullback high, 17,796 half, might be an interesting opportunity if we get there. You can see that was where these lows were along here. This is where the afternoon pullback came to. Buyers backed off, sellers took back over and closed this market pretty low. So it's going to be, um, you know, as always, a challenging and hopefully profitable trading day for anybody that is trading. The NASDAQ, uh, take a look at this crude oil chart. So in the spirit of technical patterns, we've got a little technical pattern. I'm sure many of you have been seeing this and thinking about this. We've got you know an uptrend, boom, left shoulder, head. Are we going to create the right shoulder and then head, head lower? I just wanted to point this out. I'm going to leave these lines on here just to see what plays out it is potentially setting up for a long time frame head and shoulders pattern which could lead us to the downside now it's it's shocking to me not shocking it's a little surprising to me with the uncertainties over 
in the Middle East that crude oil isn't looking for higher pricing. It's been coming off the highs. Maybe a lot of folks were really kind of preempting the idea that something bigger was going to happen and they got stuck and they got stuck long. Rollover is over now. <clears throat> almost, excuse me, almost. We've got, you know, the June contract is the front month today. If you're on Top Step X, you don't have to worry about it. If you are on another platform, make sure you are trading the June contract. All my levels have been adjusted. So just kind of watching. We've also got a double top up here. So we got a head and shoulders possibly. And this double top was really where we started to, to kind of break market state to the downside. Take a look at the 30-minute chart here this morning. Now, it's a little wonky because the, 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 the chart started June yesterday at 5 o'clock. So it looks like, you know, settlement was settled outside of the range from yesterday. This is the May contract. This is now the June contract. So settlement in the June contract, 82.15 even, 82.15, 82. .15, 82 15. Overnight inventory? No, not really. We've already looked lower. We've rejected where we've come back to settlement. So we do, and, and I don't think we, we're not seeing a gap. If we had a gap, it just closed. So, uh, you know, looking at a little bit of a bigger picture, I mean, we're seeing this market pulling off these highs. We had a potential bull flag that broke yesterday. You know, we get a move back up to this weekly kickoff low here, 80, 83 even. After we got below that level yesterday, it was pretty resistant. I mean, this was a pretty decent level. If you were trading ranges like Dolby does, this would have been a nice little spot here because we never really re-accepted back above that 83 level. So that will be a focus for me today if I were going to be actively trading crude oil, which I probably will not be. Uh, the profile yesterday, double distribution trend day lower, excess, <clears throat> single TPOs. 82.53 to the downside, 83.43 to the upside. If we, re, if we end up reaccepting in that area, we could see a pretty decent move back up to perhaps last week's low of 84.55, back up to this upper distribution of the, of the double distribution trend day. So that kind of makes even more importance on that 83 even weekly kickoff low. I want to see it hold below that because if we start taking out these single TPOs, you know, some people, I guess, call it a fair value gap, right? I guess that's ICT concept, but that might be enough to bring prices back higher. And, you know, again, this is a very news driven market. I don't think it's really acting the way the news would tell us it is, but sometimes it's more by the rumor, sell the news type of situations. Uh, gold. Uh, uh, daily. No uh, higher, Jenny. In, in, in gold? Yeah. Okay, um, on the daily chart here now. So we're range bound. Uh, we are in an upside digestion market state is what I would call it. Idling, consolidating, upside digestion, range, balance, whatever you want to call it. We had this, you know, this uh, pretty big excess on this daily bar here uh, last uh, last Friday. And we're really just kind of struggling up against that. For the last two days, volume has been slowing at this level. And we've been really inert as far as open interest. We lost 500 approximately in open interest yesterday. The, mar the market is really just seeking new data here, it feels like to me. Uh, inventories are being adjusted during this period. So whatever leg comes off of this area of balance should have some, some power behind it because all those, all those overlongs, all those, those shorts, they're, they're evening out those inventories with all this balance. And the, you know the move away from this could be substantial in either direction. We don't we don't really know what direction that's going to be. Thirty minute chart. Uh, hmm. Well, let me get this up here. Uh, I want to see the uh, the range from yesterday. So the thirty minute chart really inside the previous day's range mostly. Right, um, we did see the market open look higher you see when we opened yesterday we opened in range and value the better trade location came a little bit later in this session i mean the, the best trade location of the day came on the 9 30 bar when it put in its when it put in its high 24 12 that's kind of what i think about and what i look at when the market opens in this inside the previous day's range and value so we looked at the previous day's high 
we you know really broke to the downside after that, but on lower volume and with very little change in open interest, it's not a strong move to the downside. And again, we're still relatively range bound and in balance. So that's telling me that, you know, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to look for opportunities at the extremes. Uh, 238840. 8840 is settlement. So I'm going to put that in there. Uh, and whoops, here we go. I'm going to get that in there. Sorry. So do we have any overnight inventory? Yes, we are. We are holding some long overnight inventory. The market opened down here, you know, the 237910 approximately. It's been rallying ever since. Been rallying ever since. Uh, if we learned anything from Andre, Andre A yesterday, there's a probability every time the market opens and away from settlement that price could move back to settlement. And I say, I would say today, there's a pretty good probability of that because we're holding a lot of weaker hand longs. If those weaker hands longs don't get buying coming in after the open here, and we're already open there, so they're probably still sitting in those. But at some point, if they give up on this position, they're going to turn this market and head it right back down to settlement. So uh, take that's your deep right. breath. Um, yes. That's all right. Stay humble, grateful, creative, and centered in your trading. Pray for peace. Let's get down to business. All right. Coming up next, don't go away. We've got Anne-Marie, um, MP, Andre, and Hoga going to be doing fast markets. Johnny. Meet you at the coffee machine. We'll be right back. Right, traders, let's get our horses in the gates. And uh, back to you, Andre. Morning. Thank you, Eddie. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Top Step TV. Fast markets today. We've got an action packed day, a lot of stuff on the schedule today. Welcome, Anne Marie. Anne Marie, how are you doing today? Anne Marie, you're on mute today. Anne Marie pulled a hog. <laughs> I pulled a hog. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm doing great today i'm i'm doing fantastic we've been working through some of these strategy cards or or i have been and i've been digging into dolby strategy and Ooh. um so tons of stuff to share right there and seeing if we can set those trades up according to that and you know being light and easy uh i know that this is a really messy kind of market and so mm -hmm. Just gonna be chill. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Michael, how are you today? Are you annoyed at anything in particular this morning? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. In, in, in the amount of time. Did I screw up time? <laughs> yeah, you did screw up something. Just so everybody Just knows, it. Andre changed my layout. <laughs> and then for Orange some reason broken. it got saved. It's all okay, though, because I just fixed it. Nice. Took Thank me a God. little bit. Look Crisis at averted. that. Just, Crisis averted. You just moved my charts around. Easy, you my charts. That's all easy. I did. That's all I did. Go back to the like forward. Um, it's like, yeah, it's like somebody coming to mess with your death. Like your I'm sorry. I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be annoyed as hell, too. All right, we are open. John, take us away here. Well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we rant number one. Now, I'm not ranting. I'm not ranting. There's, we're moving on from that. That's right. What was there a rant one. about? <laughs> no, I don't know. So, uh, he just goes, uh, <laughs> never mind. In chat. All right. Johnny, go ahead. Well, I mean, in the equities, we're opening right inside, right in the middle of the range, right in the middle of value. I'm not seeing that there's any reason to, to be in an, any big hurry to get into anything here. Uh, you know, um, 
NASDAQ is trading right at settlement. There's very little change in the perception of value. We all know that there's a lot of uncertainties, uh, po- geopolitical uncertainties. We do have some uh, some uh, economic information coming out. Mostly it's going to be leading indicators that might be moving the markets at 9 o'clock, but we also have existing home sales. Um, I've got a couple of levels that I think might be really, really good, maybe even for house account trades. Um, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. We're not, we're nowhere near them right now, but, uh, you know, as far as, you know, crude is, con- is, con- is concerned, it closed the gap. Um, uh, gold is in the middle of the range from yesterday, uh, and in, and in value. So I'm with Anne Marie, I'm saying, th- I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm looking for extremes. I'm looking for the market to set up the, the initial balance early today. looks like the NASDAQ has taken a little bit of a dive here. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah the open range on the NASDAQ. Tesla. Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. They downgraded the wow. price point to 120 or something near there. <laughs> Oof. Should, Oof. I know. That's a cyber truck, Michael. Oh, that cyber truck oh, ain't doing any favors. <laughs> download the stock. Uh, called it. Downgrade the stock. Yeah. <laughs> that cyber truck. I, 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 uh, <clears throat> and I, uh, I toured a, I don't know if you toured it. I got in the, in, in the cyber truck. Somebody else yeah. at a, a friend's party or something over the weekend. Closing party for snow ma- Snowmass Mountain. There's a cyber truck sitting right there. Right when I got out, my Rivian was right there. He's like, how do you like your Rivian? I go, how do you like your cyber truck? Oh. And he showed me everything. And I'm like, no chance would I want that. I'm just, I, it's <clears throat> a city truck. It's a city truck. How big is the iPad in that thing? <laughs> oh, it's a bit, it's a fi- I think it's a 50 inch TV. You can trade on the damn <laughs> thing if you want to. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, let's get back to these markets. Nasdaq you can't, you can't. I heard you actually the can day. trade on those things. Can you really? Man. I heard it's web based. I mean, it's a web based platform. Hey, I heard top some of We saw that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Hey, shout out to Coach Dakota, that, that crude setup from last night. That was money. Fun joining you on slow markets. So, Good trade, bad execution. Hey, we are selling off here at NASDAQ and S&Ps. As always, uh, Dow doing its own thing, staying bid here. But NASDAQ and S&Ps selling off here. Crude and gold. I wanted to do the a little the yapping on oil. I just Ooh, wanted rant. to tell you guys my, Ooh, my little Ian. micro yeah. rant. Let's go, in. My micro Let's rant is Do this. it. Listen, when you read... Uh, what is that? When you read things about the apocalypse sitting on Twitter, go directly to oil. If you've got any unrest in the Middle East, you go directly to oil. Yep. And if oil is not clipping higher, everybody is lying. And they are running <laughs> an agenda. I think you're spot And I'm telling you, I've been around 20 some years looking at geopolitical markets, always the same, always the same. Everybody's working their back channels. Nobody wants to lose face. Nobody wants to look like a wet noodle. And oil is telling you that's exactly what's happening. And so every single morning I do the a morning report with all the levels. I put it in the strategy lab for us on Top Steps Discord. And I've been ranting that since whatever. And so today, or actually, yeah, today it finally came down into my 82 target. And now I'm looking for bounce action to sort of hold. If it doesn't, we're going to see 80. I like and that. Anyway, real quick. You're, 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 um, you're, 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 go ahead, Eddie. We got something we got some- off the wire. Yeah, some yeah. Feds coming over the wire here right now, speaking a little earlier than we expected here. Feds Williams says, I don't expect, uh, I don't feel urgency to cut rates. He's always saying that um, oh rates are going to be determined by the economic activity. And um, he also is mentioning if data called for higher rates, the Fed would hike. So there's, it's a, in there's our lab right now, and we're sort of, uh, our hands are tied. <laughs> They're going to be hiking, Michael. There's our break. Amory, when, when did that thing about Tesla come yeah. out, Amory? Uh, this morning, uh, this morning early. I don't know. I think I saw it about six thirty Eastern. Okay, gold selling off here. Lot. Sold forties, oh, covered twenties. On nice. Eddie, Damn. on Eddie's update, on Eddie's right when you updated Eddie, I gold just felt here. as though, even though yes, gold down ten bucks. I sold forties, covered twenties. 
we're selling off. Yep. Wow. Gold is the Wait. next uh, yeah, risk man. asset that you would want to watch if I mean, you're gold is getting concerned hammered right about now. things gold. geopolitically. Yeah, gold's down about and 16 bucks falling, in the last five minutes. Yeah. They're going to settle in. Bucks, well. It should come off. I'm looking for 2300 in gold. 2300 Well, we got 90 bucks to go to get there, but that's not out of the question with the way gold has been trading lately. That's for certain. Yeah, it's gotten very volatile. This it's gotten has. very, very volatile. And that's got to do with the yen, my thoughts, anyway. Is that right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, because the yen is losing so much of its buying power, all of the central banks in China are picking up gold. And they don't, everybody's saying, I read the most absurd thing. It's They said, hey, you know, something else is going on in the gold market. This kind of price action has nothing to do with price uh, sensitivities. It should be more elastic, Ooh. just like the question we had yesterday. Yeah. Um, but my thought is, hey, <laughs> they don't care about elasticity right now. It's They are scrambling to keep themselves afloat in dollar derivatives. And gold is priced mm -hmm. in dollars. Yes, it it's is. not priced in anything else. And so they are, as oil is fading, the dollar's holding its its uh, bid. All of that is making everybody else who's not dollar-based very nervous. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are likely to see gold clip higher until things settle down. But that 2450 that it hit, I don't know, last week, Thursday yep. or whatever it was, uh, that was an area that everybody said, you know what, let's take a breath. All the big money that is looking at where they should acquire, stop pulling, stopped buying, and you can see the demand just fall off cliff. And now they're just waiting for it to pull back. And I know this is boring geopolitical kind I love of this big stuff, but picture macro be. stuff, but listen, the chart prices matter and that's really all we're looking at i'm looking at price and i'm going hmm price matters and so if price matters the stories that we're hearing that don't match price reasonably some of them could be tinfoil hat but <laughs> if they're not matching reasonably then we have to throw it out the window and go listen i'm going to watch price I'm going to watch price uh -huh. and let it tell me what's uh -huh. going on mm -hmm. in the market. I like that. We did get too exhausted. The buyers just ran out of juice to the upside when we hit those 2448s, 2450s, like you're saying, in gold. But, Anne Marie, to your point about watching, uh, looking at oil, when the risk really hits out of the Middle East, look to oil, then gold. Everything else will fall in line. I think you said it perfectly there. Uh, Michael, what'd you sell there in the NASDAQ? Because that was a nice little sale. It seems yes, like still, it sure downside was. Downside action here. Six forties, six forties, but I covered twenty threes. So one good. Who knew, trade. Who knew Williams was going to say we're not? We're, we might be hiking rates at the end of the year. Yeah, uh, man, I wish we were. I, I wish we were looking at uh, the hey, wire here, right quick. at eight thirty. Yeah, yeah, the opening what? value trade, the opening well, range yeah, trade. Yeah, but but right, that's right when Fed's that came out on the wire that Fed oh, said he would be John, he would uh, he, he would hike rates. Guys, look at our levels. What levels do we have? Because we're coming down. We're ripping through. We have, uh, John, you have yesterday's value already low at 54. Or sorry, daily levels here on the on uh, top step daily levels. 54s and 47s. We're right by that. So is there any other thoughts? Yeah. yeah, is there any other thoughts on levels Perhaps in here that we have? It. Well, there is a good strategy. Austin Silver, a good friend, Austin Silver. As if we can break beneath 5047, uh, our friend Andre A ran a report on him. John, if you remember, taking a short when we get beneath yesterday's sessions low. Uh, we are seeing some liquidity here. In the, in the, in the yeah. NASDAQ, we, we took that out a while ago. Yeah, so adios there. There's a 500 lot sitting here at 5049 on the bid, 5049 on 500 here in the SPs. We're not too far from that. You might want to sell into that, Michael. Yeah, Andre, we've been company. seeing some. We've been seeing some pretty well, good. Talking about taken out. So we got forty sevens down there. Collectively, what levels do we have down here for a house account play? 
We're pulling them right now. We got a light response for overnight from uh, our trusted sources. So we're going to reach out again and see if we can scrape so some more levels here. I Anne-Marie might have some levels. Yeah, I have the options data on where all the put support and uh, the zero DTE levels are looking mm-hmm. like uh, for um, the S&P, the E-minis. Mm-hmm. It looks like uh, 5042 and then 5062. So it just lost 62. It's going to try and recapture 62 and then collapse if it's got further to go. So the short might be at the failed retest of 5062. I like that. With the uh, target at 5042. That's what uh, the options market is saying. For the NQ, um, all the 62s the, or 42s. Yeah. And so for the NQ, it is looking at 17,556, um, which it's in between that number and wow, nothing but air all well, the way up to 17,650. So uh, that could get, sixes. yeah, really noisy. Failed retests of 17,000. 650s are going to bring us likely into heavy congestion around 17,556, 17,535. Now, here's the thing about these levels. If we come back up here and we start holding above that 17,650, the shorts are going to buy to cover. And that is... That could give us a reversal back into that 17,900 area that's going to open up the next short. I used a great tool on um, Top Step X. Uh, it is called, what is that thing called? It's like a, oh, it's the GAN box. Mm. So because I'm using a, uh, I'm working, I'm, what I'm trying to do with Dolby strategy is uh, hammer away at it and figure out where it's weakest and where it's strongest. Why did I pick Dolby strategy? One, it's super simple. It's find a box and either if trend is down, sell the resistance of the box. If trend is up, sell the support of the box and use the wider ranges. Now where this gets tough is when the market is in flux. And so that's where it is right now. We don't know if it's got a continuation to the downside. We don't know if it's going to hold the floor in the big picture space. So I'm drawing these boxes on the daily and then looking for smaller boxes within those boxes. And the GAN box allows us to do that. So I'm going to, I snapped a couple of pictures uh, yesterday and put them in the strategy lab space. And so I'm going to continue to do that. It looks really great. It triggered a short in the Dow at 38,150. And that held right into the VWAP at 38,070 until it bounced. And so the Dow is recovering. This one is marching to the beat of its own drum for sure. And so that's really yeah. what we want to watch there. John, give me your analysis, deltas and open interests and everything that you focus on profiles. Help us out. And then All do right. it. Can you do it in layman's, <clears throat> layman's terms, John, so anybody who's listening that's new understands? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, okay. So there was, a, there, was, there was a change that occurred right on the open when William said that, right? This is the NASDAQ. We opened inside range and value, and usually that's going to be a patience thing for me. But when we left the opening range at the high of the day in the NASDAQ uh, and saw that that Williams had said that, I think that's more of what this move is all about. So if we think it's going to continue to push to the downside, what, you know, what I would be looking at is to try and find like low volume nodes to trade at or, or just below for shorts. So, you know, we, we just came up to this low volume node here at 17,598. And 
but it's kind of a big low volume node, you know, to, to, that's a little bit bigger risk. But, you know, if we think the market's going to be continuing to the downside, we're going to have to take some sort of risk, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. you know, and, and we're also below yesterday's low of day. That's, <clears throat> that's Austin's thing. You know, you can't sell it till it's below the low of the previous day. And that's where we're at. So, you know, I'm, I'm been, I've been kind of sitting here stalking in the S and P's about this is a little bit better risk, but we haven't taken out yesterday's low. Um, Emory was talking about 60, 62. That's our low volume node here. So I tried to, I, I put in an offer at 61. I got within a couple of ticks of it, and I didn't get filled on it. So I was being too a little too cheap. But this is where I'm. Kind of thinking about, okay, value low is here. So if we can't hold inside value from yesterday, we've got a low volume node here. I'm What's looking for shorts up in this area. So this this price would be, well, we're getting up there now, uh, 60, 61, 62, 63, this low volume node. If this Six remains three. resistant, Henry. yep. If this Henry remains resistant, you know, the problem is where's your risk? That's that's always the here's question. my sixty twos. Here's the sixty three. Yep. Why do you like the six? So we have sixty twos. We have seventy percent. Uh, and I'm gonna. I don't want it to hold up here. I want it to. I want it to. I want it to reject here real, pretty quickly. So this is well, you know is this is one this is one you'll marry if it goes your way right away, but don't mm -hmm. don't marry it for for long. Kessel getting. Are you in this? I got I got short twenty line at sixty two. Nice, baby. <laughs> yes. On the house all account. Right. Hell yeah. All right, all right, all right. Hey, can we get some levels here in the chat? I think we just got to say, I saw Jay in there. I saw Dakota. Love to get your <clears throat> levels and thoughts. Nick T, if you're in there. Uh, anyone that's hot right now, throw us your levels. NQ and S&Ps. We'll start with some levels, and then we'll go short, long, then we're going to need the Y, but let's just start uh, scraping here and mining for some levels. Yeah, each one of us is in it. 52, so if we did settlement, okay, we're in that one. We got our levels that match up with that. We got Anne-Marie that matched up that with Anne -Marie that. Anne-Marie right there. We got, do we have any guest levels? Do you have any levels here in the uh, pit? Oh, we're already at four grand. So that's nice. still I want to see, um, see you take out this 56 level. Take out the Ooh. 56 level. Okay. Oh, uh, super. Watch for the savage time. snapback because there was yeah. such a sharp fade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> 50 50 the tilt. And well, this would be a risk 10 to make. Uh, this will be a risk 10 to make 10 on a, on a bounce. Dude, on risk a 10. Day that where... was my biggest problem last yesterday in the DK. Might stop. It just, yeah. Let it play out. Okay, so we have 62s and I think you're short. I mean, this is a, this is a tough. Collect the thoughts out there. I'm looking, I'm looking, sure I'm looking still... here. <laughs> so 45s, 50. Do you have any, 50, do you have any patterns that, do you have any patterns that set up, well, that are set up around here? Yeah, yeah, I mean, on the on the 500 tick chart, I mean, we're putting in higher lows and higher highs. You, you don't need 10 grand of risk to find out you're wrong on this. If it gets up to 64, there's probably going to be some stops up there. There's your 64. There's your 64. So I'm out of this now. <clears throat> Stay strong here. Uh, how's the count? Short. He has at 62. Agree or disagree? I don't know. What is that? Yeah, get, get, good job. Let's get the, the thoughts in here. Mm -hmm. Are you sure we're seeing a bit of buying coming in here? We'll hold 650s, 650, 656. We got home sales in 10 minutes. Yes, we do. Eddie, drop that in on so, a vocal next time. That's fine. So yeah. you can see my chart now, Michael. This is what I was talking yeah. about. So there's yeah. there's 62. That's where we got in right there. And we had a decent push. I wanted to see it take out this low here, 55. Uh -huh. But it didn't. Uh -huh. And once it took out that high, you're out. Uh huh. So that's why I was saying 64 is probably going to be some stops. We ran some stops here. We just ran some stops. Just kiss mm -hmm. VWEB. Not getting a lot of levels. Come on, guys. We need those levels here in the chat. Yes, we're in now. Dig deep, guys. Just look. If you're looking at stuff, when I say dig deep, you don't search for a trade, but diagnose the market in a way that you're taking your skills to the next level today. Today, you're pushing yourself a little bit further. 
What am I doing that can I, that can, I can hone my tr- my trading plan even better today? How do I get smarter, not more knowledgeable on on what the market's telling me? All that kind of stuff. I want to see. I want to see us take that sixty that sixty four high and 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 get back down below that now. I want to see us start making lower lows now. Nahua, 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 Bar uh, Barbero. Okay, you got a fade on me. Good. Well, I mean, you All said right. long fifty sixty twos. I'm short fifty sixty twos. When I say I, the house account, the house account is short. House John Jones wants collectively. To 54 All of us. 45s. 45s. See a few targets on the 45s. Super duper dude. Okay. Yeah, well, you know what I don't like about this is if we have to hold this and we take heat on this and, and then we get the, the number, number coming out. Yeah, yeah speaking of that, Eddie, can you Eddie, can you hit us with the calendar real quick today? We got about nine minutes to our first number. Eddie, what do we got for eco? Yeah. Well, we got coming up here, top of the hour. We got home sales, and they're looking at about 4.2 million. This is going to be the expectation lower than prior 4.38 uh we got the sales coming up at 9 30 we got our natural gas change we will be having some speakers bostick at 10 o'clock uh, we also got collins at 11 now that's tentative and uh, for right now that's uh, that's what we've got going on here we'll also have bostick later on this evening back to you andre thanks eddie also got a I five took 10 of them off i took 10 of them i took that half the position okay we have 10 on uh, so you broke, you broke even on ten. The sixty, right? yeah, yeah. The sixty twos are yes. still in play, still short. Uh, John, you you saw the stops run up there. We talked mm-hmm. about that, mm-hmm. and you talked about this level. So we're we're on on with you. Chat saying mm-hmm. what, Andre? What's what's Chat uh, saying? Target forty five. Eddie, forty fives. Yeah, Eddie, help out with chat too, so we get the the feel for what's going on. We're uh, just trying to diagnose this trade. So it's 45, 46, agree with the short? Yeah. All right, so 50, 50-ish. 50, 50, right. We got 10 minutes, 9 minutes, 8 minutes till the number comes out. I shaved half of it out on the house account. Though we do want to trade a bit more size because that's the house account play. Uh, and uh, Number seven. Sitting right here. At six, Come sitting on, let's right here put in lower minutes. lows here. Put, put in some lower lows here for us. Yeah, target 5046. A lot of targets at 5046, 45 area. Um, that seems to be a consensus. 5047. Top step X question, ahead, please. How do we get the um the uh sell stuff to sit on the other side? I remember Dolby saying something and Robert saying something about how you can move. Your cell. See how you've got yours, and it's all the way over on the left. Yeah, I got a special. Yeah. I got Easter egg. It's an Easter egg, and you gotta get that. I just doesn't. That doesn't just show up on your dove. You gotta. You gotta hard code it. No, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just go up to the settings. Go up to the settings, and then I hide. And 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 I like uh, this dome is exactly like T four. That's how I design, that's how I wanted them to put it together because that's what I've always used. So it's, it's, guys, this is what I the dome I've always used is laid out just like this. You will see you see how my open position right here is short of sixty twos. That you'll be able to see all these uh, eventually you'll be able to see all these uh, moving average or whatever indicator you have you at that price point. We'll be yeah. right there. M four U go to settings chart and data to plot alignment Thanks. equals left. Thank you M four U in the chat. Anne Marie, there you go. That's for the cells. According to M4U, oh, yes. Well, okay, chart a minute. This isn't chart. This is dumb. Yeah, right? I'm not. Uh, I would. I don't trade off the dumb. It's. Uh, I'm. I'm. Too much of a cocker spaniel to do that. Yeah, well, My brain. Just, I'm the old. I'm the old, old dog. Yeller. That has one trick. He's old yeah. yeller over there. <laughs> <laughs> look at. Look at. I, yeah. It got right. rabies. Man, we my are all got, business this morning. <laughs> I got rabies. My mouth, my mouth's foaming at you, but I'm looking at you with the puppy dog eyes, Andre. Don't shoot, buddy. Just feed me, damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Man. So, uh, we got five minutes till the number here. We're kind of floating around. Take a look at the other markets. Uh, Dow pushing a bit higher. 
Tilt. 67 is that little push. Push higher. It's VWAP. Yeah. 67 is VWAP. 67 is VWAP. Dreamer going Super off here. Duper Dudica. Don't forget we have Netflix earnings after the bell today. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they keep at it. Did they do that password thing? I was just going to oh, ask. Yeah. Are you still oh, using really? my password for Netflix, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still using. I'm told my wife I'm still using my old girlfriend's. No, oh, 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that goal. <laughs> uh, uh, trade sixty five here. View app. I got S and P's at fifty sixty seven. Oh, we got. Well, that was a good trim, Michael. Yeah, it was good trim. <clears throat> we need a double top here, or we're. We're cooked. Yeah, we, 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 we are. We do need to these levels for four yeah. trading days. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's squishy. Yeah. Squishy. What's unrealized looking like, Big Michael? Levels. Uh fifteen hundred. Okay. Carl Hungus. Fifty fifties new bull bear line. If we can break fifties. Let's look out below. It seems to be the bull bear line. If any sustained rally will occur, it has to be there. Huge test. Seventy sevens, eighty twos. All right, everyone's kind of along the same thought here, Michael. What, what, what's that thought? We're trying to preempt the break. We got to break through fifties in the S and P's to see some follow through. So if we can retest those, give the old college tries. You like to say we might have a huge winner on our hands. But uh, we got a number coming up here in three. Eddie, please make sure to Morris code in when we get <clears> that. <throat> Ten four. This should be interesting. Misleading indicators. Active poll. Yes, active poll. Here we go. House account. We got a poll in here. Let's let it play out. Two minutes in. House account short 10 at 556062. Stop and targets are. That's. Pull St. Michael, stop, stop 10 points, target 20 points to the downside. So you'd be working 42s with a stop at 72 is what the majority of the polls say. If you want to take from that, just something to add, add it to the blender there for your what's, breakfast. What's that? What's that? Uh, what's, a, what's a 10 handle? It'd be 5, 62. 000? Oh, 10 times 5. Yes. Yeah. Five thousand or ten thousand. Two to one. Okay. Well, here we go. Uh, I don't like Back the fact the that we're going. Opening range is fifty seventy up to fifty seventy five. In about 30 seconds here, just a reminder, check your platform if you want to position on fine. If you don't, make sure that you are flat. I got my stop up there. Do not like holding a position into a number. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's always tough. Yeah. But what do you got? Is there. Yeah, stop is there. It's in a liquid market. <clears throat> Unless this thing's bananas. Which my biggest day ever, loser, was a bananas <laughs> ripped through my way off the market order. Stacking bananas. Stacking bananas. What's up? All right, coming in at 4.19. And is it home sales? Uh, existing home, 4.3%. And U.S. leading index change, month over month, 0.3%. So big number here. They were looking at 4.2, just below that at uh, 4.19 million. And uh, anything below that, uh, we should be taking. Anything lower, be taking as negative bearish for the U.S. dollar. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Eddie. All right, good. Well, we was a shoulder shrug. All right, right we'll there. We're back. Yeah, we're back. Hmm. Mm hmm. 
Filthy, nothing really on the tilt. We got numbers throughout this entire day. Bowman race. Well, Williams is saying we might be hiking rates here earlier. So maybe the market will wake up and be like, oh, yeah, that's right. Williams said that. We'll sell it. He said the words we're going to hike. Possibly. They said hike rates. They, the words hike rates came out of their mouth. Well, obviously, there's some context around that. right eagle what was said was what William you're, said you're, if data called for higher rates the fed would hike there you go yeah you are correct that's, that's all i need to hear all i need to hear to sell this sucker yeah and i was about one month ahead of that that yeah you really were and on the bitcoin trade we had a guest uh -huh. on yesterday was uh kicking themselves for not shorting bitcoin above seventy thousand. So my man MP that's when was, i called i i, I called yeah. and i had mick and, I, and i said make sure we're enabled on bitcoin I that was that. This, this this shit's bananas. Everything's bananas. Even stacking bananas is in here. Stacking bananas, your boy. Yeah, I believe Williams is a voting member. Well, hello. Let's yeah. Let's let's. The, these sixty twos are holding. That's a little bit of a concern. Ah, uh, I think there's okay. I'm seeing a lot of levels. I mean, say, or, uh, it, it, holding above it. <clears> hmm. <throat> 62 is settlement as well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You'll find all that, yeah, guys, up in the daily level at the very top. Yep. Yeah, we definitely have some sticky prices. Cruz seeing some sellers. Trading 82.16. Anne Marie this morning saying she wants to. Anne Marie said you want to see crude go down to 80 bucks. Is that what you're saying? Um, I'd like to see it go there. I mean, for that selfish would be reasons nice. for, uh, and if I <laughs> if I put my if I put my tin foil hat on going into elections, there you go. Um, all the yammering about um, letting things get out of the SPR. There we go. I, look, uh, anybody knows about the strategic pers uh, petroleum reserves? Those tanks were actually made of. They're actually giant salt caverns. And when you hmm. pull them down at the rate that we have pulled them down, they become structurally very... Uh, Unstable? What's the word? Uh, yes, thank you so much. They become hmm. extremely structurally unstable. And so they're probably going to be advised by anyone <laughs> with any sense mm -hmm. not to do that. But they're talking about it so they can have folks say, oh, don't worry about it, you know, blah, blah, oh, blah. Yeah. And That's the so that, uh, yeah. So I think coming into the election cycle, they're going to talk about SPR, SPR, SPR. But here's the thing. If you look at the options market, some people are thinking, I mean, they're buying contracts that have a $250 strike. And I'm going to tell you, they really? are throwing their money away. I'll sell Absolutely. those to them all day. That's crazy. Really? Jeez. Yeah. $250. Listen, that's the only crazy. way. Yeah. that's It's just absurd. And they're really, here's what happens. People come out and whether they're short or they want eyeballs or they think it's going to do something for xyz they're going to pound on a narrative and fear is one of those emotions that just grips us and all of a sudden everybody starts thinking oh my goodness and you know you're stuffing the mattress with dollars and so the big thing to to look at again when all that Fear mongering opens up on TweetDeck and where it is that you find your data. You can sit around and talk about that at the coffee table. But more money has been lost trying to hedge for downside pressure than any other type of positioning. And so you simply have got to go listen. What are the charts telling me? Yes, I have a healthy sell off. But it's not panic driven. It really isn't. For those of us that remember 2006, 7, and 8, 
all the days we had limit down and limit up day yeah. after day after day after day uh -huh. and it looks nothing like that no, that's what real fear looks like that's what fear looks like and so we just have to say hey we've got a healthy sell-off we had a big market run and now people are just taking profits and statistically speaking the april 15th tax day has a low dip in price action and then a bunch of noisy pressure and then it starts moving up again and so all we have to do is expand to weekly charts and realize that we're just pulling back a little bit, folks. Mm -hmm. We're just used to things going up and up and up and up and up. You know, just close your eyes and buy. We had a joke about it, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's, it's called just, OK, uh, oh, OMO or Jory missing out. Uh, OK, missing out is like because things are just ripping. Exactly. The new word. Exactly. Yeah, we're talking about. And so we just have to go, hey, this is a little bit more like normal market behavior, right? We're giving a little, we're taking a little, people are arguing. Michael, yes, sir. Michael uh, we, we, picked the, we picked the point of control for that entry there. 62, 62.75 is the point of control. So it's, it's, I mean, it's basically kind of rotating both sides of it. Very squishy, sticky area here. Well, I added that 10 back on when it started, like when it was above so the 62. No, I got it. So the average price is 61 quarter now, not 62. Okay. Which we're back in and we don't have a number coming out. Nope. Is anybody barking? Nope. Are you guys nope. net long or net short? Not yet. Short. short. We're short on we're short. we're looking for continuation on this on the out of the gate sell off. This is the first pop of okay. uh, off of it today. And I then we have the, the rally the, the, off. We got the 62s that we talked about. Well, now we got to be in point of control, which gets a little nerve wracking. Why is it nerve wracking, John? Because it's right in the middle, right? Yeah, it's the center of the range. I mean, it's the it's the fairest price, and that's not where we want to be positioned. But we're there now, so we're there now. All right, I took my rally jet. I took my rally sweater off because we want it to break. <laughs> House account has a short position, as you guys can see. In the, what do you got, hey, this this over the wire. This might be a to have some effect here. Just hitting the wire here. Uh, they the there was a poll for the Fed Reserve uh, regarding the first cut in rates in September. Fifty four out of one hundred economists uh, do say that it's going to happen in September. The rate cut rates by fifty basis points in twenty twenty four. They say fifty to one hundred economists. Thirty four say by more than fifty basis points, and only four say no cuts. So this is just hitting the wire. Rate cuts, okay. okay. Hmm. Not to go so on tilt what, here. what do we think that word salad actually means? Economists are like <laughs> weathermen. They don't know. Yeah. Good question. Uh, they, do in, <clears throat> they do in California. Every day, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're chopping around here in the S&Ps, NASDAQ, and Dow. Crude kind of chilling, gold chilling his way. We got a lot of stuff on the docket today, so we should see some good volatility. But for the time being, we're kind of just trading a little bit sideways. Sixty sevens are pushing. Mm. Just that could be opening range. Lab. Sevens, we might hit our stop limit here. Eight, it, 72? nines. There we go. Yeah, we hit it. Damn. Okay, that was a shot. 62 is why wow, that firmed up. Yeah, it did. Okay. And uh, that statement may have had something to do with it. All the economists saying so there, I, there, there, there will be a rate cut this year. So I just uh, yeah, explain. So so the the, the uh, sorry and the um, them no, talking about a rate cut. They're talking about a rate cut, and there was four of them that said possibly no. And then how right. many others were saying? Right, right. Fifty. Okay, help me that. Okay, so the market just took it higher for. Yeah, more than half of the of the economists surveyed said they're yeah. looking for fifty rate fifty point races, uh, fifty basis point rises in twenty twenty four. 
which is a, okay. the opposite of what one of the Fed members said earlier that he would he would he okay. would wouldn't uh, wouldn't uh, disagree to high, raising rates this year. So we're getting a lot of contrary information. Michael, we're back to the opening range in the S and P's. Yeah, it still remains the high of the session. That's a short. Typically, it's a short. It's back in the six forties that I got short on. Dan, you talked about the six fifties. Yeah, typically, yes. Do we want to jump into this now, or? Well, uh, house accounts uh, stopped out. Oh, that's it then. Are you thinking? What, why? What are you thinking? Well, I'm gonna take a short here, and I'm just gonna risk to the top of the opening range, seventy, seventy-five half, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay, I'm in there with you, John. Yeah. All right. Uh, you were talking about these 640s. Six, I mean, it fell out of bed for me last time right here. <sighs> what? Oh, I'm just seeing in the chat here. A lot of uh, <laughs> Monday morning. A lot of Monday morning quarterbacking going on here. Hindsight's 2020. Of course. Of Very. Of course. <laughs> you got, you, quarter, I mean, so sports radio shows and ESPN thrive <laughs> yeah. off. Well, sports radio shows. Exactly. I know you watch. The score six seventy or something That's on in right. Chicago, uh -huh. and let's check it out today. And you, I got my whistle on. I'm teaching. I'm teaching coaching kids today. So there I, you go. You know, whistle, How the whistle. Has that been? Coach Prime, nice. Coach Prime over there. <laughs> yeah. How's that been? Has well, it been they good? got it got canceled. The, the two day ago one got canceled because uh, oh. too cold and uh, oh. drizzle. Aspen five kids, year olds. Man. Yeah. Aspen kids are soft. <laughs> Yes, baby, 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 because maybe because they're five. Slight <laughs> uh, uh, over, slight overcast. Like, got a case of the sniffles. No, I'm kidding. Michael, you, you got to you gotta wear you got to wear a football jersey. You, you got to have something to rep that. Hey, I'm a coach. I'm never. I will never wear another man's jersey. I've I've made that rule a long, long time. Unless that individual is uh, passed away. Uh, or, or it's Michael Jordan. I don't even well, know. There you go. You got, you got a lot there. You got a lot you can pick from. Dang it. Oh, passed away guys. Yeah, did you're you right. John, did you see all those buyers just pop right in off of that 60 level? Yeah. That 65 66. level? Yeah. Yeah. Crud. And I moved my target up into that range to just get out. And it just stinker just ran from me. Dang it. Hey, one of our coaches, uh, Jake Cook. Shout out Jake Cook. Uh, this is a much better spot for a short, in my opinion. If you have anchored to the New York session at 5061, there's been support, though. So there may not be a ton of room unless we see some real yeah. selling. It's kind of sit on your hands for the moment. Might be. Mm -hmm. yeah, set up coming. As long as, it, as long as the opening range remains the high of the session, I'm looking for shorts and we're in one now. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. What are you? What are you? What do you guys think in the uh, in the chat? Do I fish or cut bait? Oh, I haven't heard that in a while. I love that. Uh, right. <laughs> <clears throat> Tilt's not saying much. Nothing yet. Nothing. Yeah, it's really stuck in the middle. I was just noticing that. Mm -hmm. I am waiting in the NQ to short at about 17,670. 650 is that line that I think sellers um, that initiated below um, might have to buy to cover. And so I think it punches up as the shorts try to cover. And so that's why I've got it up at that 670-ish area. Dow pushing the new highs here. Dow continue yeah. to push the new they highs. They are here. trying to fill the gap. Here goes Check, check out what Dow's done. Yes. Sorry, Marie, go. Yep. Oh, no, that's okay. The Dow gapped down uh, on the 15th of April and then closed the gap during the trading day, but then by the end of the day was well below that edge. That line in the sand is 
38,230. So if we close the day above 38,230, tomorrow should be a buy the dip event. Hey, I got short up there with you guys on my personal at uh, 49, so 50s. You train, uh, is that NASDAQ, got, Michael? NASDAQ. Yeah, you got, are you guys, you guys are short around these levels as well? Yeah. Uh, we're in the ES right now. I'm waiting right. for the 670 area in the NAS to short. I have a limit sell right up there. Well, they did at six, oh, 70, 660s. Yeah. And, and I got that off, I got that off my trading view, uh, VWAP pulled right off of it. It's a little bit different. We got Dakota in the chat. What's up? She's long. Dakota. Oh, where's he at? What's he saying? He's long. He's, He's long. Three nine in the uh, NASDAQ here. Looking for a run above 17,700 to the upside. Dakota's Dakota's long. I have shaved range. my position down to, down to a one lot. <laughs> oh, no. My oh, short no. position is now a one lot. Oh, no. Uh, well, while we have a minute here, well... Jack will come to you. Hold on. Uh, Dow keeps yeah. making new highs here. Jack will come to you once these uh, markets quiet up. Now, S&P yeah. Wait until out. the markets aren't moving. You got it. So just yeah, call me back you when you're not range. busy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Pardon me, yes. John? <laughs> we just took out the high of the opening range in the S&Ps, not in the NASDAQ. Yes. Right. <clears throat> we just took it out by two ticks in the S and P's. Man, that happens so much. They just get those little stops up there, it. and then that's it. Yeah, I I have started putting my stop action well outside of that because well I've been of caught it, right? in the clip so yeah. many times. It's yeah, just I'm, annoying. I'm going to try one more time up here with a tight stop, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this goes. That's so often it does up. that. It just just takes out the high of that opening range by a couple of ticks so and then turns annoying. around. Yes. Here we but go. I've been hey, wrong Cliffy before. in the chat. Shout out to Top Step Support. They've been superstars. Amen, Cliffy. You know that. Yeah, yeah we had uh, a couple, a couple of things. We, we had a, uh, uh, what was the, we had some issue that happened overnight with a script that ran that closed some old accounts. Yes. And possibly, I think possibly you got billed. All will be fixed. Hopefully, uh, um, very, very, very soon. I think it affected like I don't know, seven thousand. I don't know. I don't know how many, but that was a good, a good chunk of people. Um, and yeah, we uh, no excuses. Uh, so, Stephanie, Stephanie says top sub support has been so helpful to me. All caps and the hearts. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Stephanie. Awesome. Love it. Good to hear. I, I, I uh, still got that one lot on. I took it off. Got flat, and then I just got short it right now. But that, that was the one I wanted to carry for the runner anyway. Hey, John, the Start majority of the chat yielded down. Hey, cut bait, cut bait, John. Majority. Of the well, we hit the, we got the stop, so they were right. Okay. All right. Good. All right. <laughs> I'm still I'm short. I'm short, short again. Seventy seven percent. Hey, you should be green though, now. right, John? Because it's coming off of your levels. Yeah. Yeah. Seventy seven percent. Yeah, I uh, am. We all got short around 50s, uh, and then uh, in, in, in sorry, 50s in the Nasdaq, and then you guys are around the 70 what? 73 half is where I'm short now. 70, 73 half. Okay. Like we we would not want to have taken 10 plus handle. No more than that. 14 handles of heat on that on that 10 lot. Yeah, and yeah. it's just That'd that's wrong. Um, that yeah, yeah, that would that, that would have been rough. That would have been rough. All the way to still be sitting <laughs> ten handles, eight of handles away <laughs> out of the money. So that that that's a, a those are one of those sickening positions that just never wants to come back close to your entry and never Pulling really teeth. showed. Yeah, yeah. My hair oh, starts mean, falling out at the desk. Uh oh. Dogs. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're you're you're, you're, sque you're you're squeezing the mouse a little tighter. You're looking to see how far you can throw your keyboard. Yes, I've been there. <laughs> if I throw it, what will break? What other things will it break? Oh. 
<clears throat> Look at those wicks on that 30 minute chart. Oh, I got it. Jack, I just saw a news story that came up that said, why are emperor penguins jumping off these 50 foot cliffs? I saw that too. I just thought, did I, they oh, did you interview see that? any of them? I saw the headline. I the interview. <laughs> <laughs> it's they have no comment. They have a no wow. comment stance. It's part of a. It's part of an emperor penguin cabal. Such is the code of the penguins. Yeah. <laughs> are, are these are these positions still rocking? I will yeah. wait patiently. Still short. Yeah, you're in the green. Seeing some sellers here in nice re-entry there, John. That's yeah. awesome. Super decisive, I, love it. I, I can't stand it when they when they do that, and I'm surprised that's where yeah. I put my stop. I just kind of arbitrarily put it there. Usually, I put it a little further away. <laughs> that's me thinking again. Well, you know, here's the thing, John. Sometimes, when it breaks like that, it just runs up and clips your stop far away anyway. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's oh, almost yeah. better to go, hey, listen, this is my defined stop I'm staying in because it yeah. doesn't really widen the overall risk. So I think it's like six of one, half a dozen of the other, to be honest, mm -hmm. because if you're managing risk, you should clip it. If it turns around that it's the right thing, you get back in and you, get back in. you make it again. I mean, widening the risk sometimes can be a real hit or miss. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. The story in the history. I hear the you. History day of me, it's, journal. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. What? Uh, I missed that. More often than not, not, uh, none, not. I have, uh, yeah, when I move, then. when I move stops or anything, it just it ends up being, I know. you're already reading it wrong. So you move in a stop. You're like, what makes you think that you know better? Except the fact that you're, you're just making yeah. it worse. Yeah. Learn to, learn to, learn to, yeah, learn to. Cut off your hand when you need to cut off your hand to save your life. Exactly. Huh. So what do you think about that it one, sitting up over this uh, VWAP? Yeah, that did give me, that had me thinking no, for a paper? second. I'm not liking that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a heads up, uh, uh, if you're trading natural early. gas, got about five minutes here before the natural gas storage number hits the wire. A hey, quick question. Is anybody trading here in chat with a friend or a family member? Yikes. Friend or family member? Uh, it's pull. Why do you pull, ask? Pull, pull, Don't. I, I just like my know family who, uh, too much. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, put it as an option. I trade with a friend. At top, at top step, I trade with a friend, family member. That's mm. cool. Or, wow. or nobody. No, no, no. My son with the dogs. Me and my wife. I've TV. seen a lot of me and my wife. Sleeping. Yeah. My wife. Wife and cousin. Me and two other amigos. That's cool. Mix, my friend. Peyton, that must mean you, you've been on his uh, tap on the shoulder list. <laughs> it's the only go. way you get on. It's the only way he calls you. It's the only way he calls me is if I tap, tap me on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm going to call you guys my friends. You're my buddy. Uh, are you trading with? Uh, I'm, I'm your friend. friend. <laughs> what if Lois, what if you, in, any one of <laughs> Andre? What if any one of us or Hoga uh, said alone? I trade alone. Even with you guys, I've still oh, us like, like right now. I'm trading. Alone. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to revamp Top Step TV real quick. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's hilarious. We are uh, <laughs> not very self-aware about what we're doing around here. <laughs> no. <laughs> Completely miscalculated. Does anybody I love trade husband better? wife teams that trade. Oh, I'm pretty sure yeah, I do too. if I traded with my husband, we would burn the house down. Because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we are both so fiery. Yeah, it would be rough. I admire husband wife team that and, can do that. And Marie, have you ever been on yeah. when I've mentioned that I used to work at a firm where there was a couple that met there and got married? And then they use the money to save night coverage. And so basically 23 hours a day, oh, one of them was there or both of them sitting at the screen. Oh my God. They were strange folks. Oh, my God. Oh, my word. <laughs> How does that work? Did they get along? <laughs> yeah. I, I think so. They were both a little bit quiet. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, it, <clears throat> I got to ask a question because I, I might be uh, unaware. <clears throat> While he goes, uh, MPU, my guy, love when you well, love when you're not on. It's different when you're not. Is that Andre? You've been friends with me for a while. Uh, well, where do you T- start? Today, there? where do you start? I mean, okay. you know. All right, fair enough. We'll end it right there. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's all I need to hear. <laughs> where do you all right, start? Cool. I, I, I wear my emotion. I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Johnny has always known that. Yeah. And, and then what's the bed? I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Oh, Johnny, do, do not. Here's Johnny. Well, I'm usually very calm and happy. That's what I hold. That's what I put on my on my shoulder. Uh-huh. But if I, if something's bothering me, you know, people can usually tell. But I don't. You know, I guess you're right. I don't put that on my shoulder. Speaking of uh, on your shoulders, thanks for taking the rally jacket off your shoulders. I know, right? Yeah. yeah, I know. Right. I know. The rally sweater is off. Rally sweater. <laughs> you still short, John? Yeah. Yes, yeah, me too. It's one of those painstaking, you know. Imagine SpongeBob. You know how SpongeBob looks when he gets out of the sea and he has to sit on the beach. That's how I feel Eddie? when I'm in trades that last more than thirty minutes. One <laughs> week. <laughs> you say tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Never to stop. All right, Jack. I think we got a minute here. Uh, if All we right. Get some new, if you want to get some news in before we uh, we get this EIA net gas coming through at uh, bottom of the hour here. Yeah, I'll do it as quickly as possible. Sweet. Uh, Vanguard's warning that the 10-year Treasury re- yield could jump back to 5%. They no. also mentioned yeah. that four and three no. quarters, which we're not far from, would set in order a disorderly sell-off. And yes, because as the we've discussed before as the interest rates go higher, um, all sorts of institutions are forced to keep selling to hedge their uh, risk basically, right? Because if you hold a mortgage and it's below where it is, you're in trouble otherwise, as we've learned from Silicon Bank. Um, Next up, this is, uh, I believe what Danielle has referred to as millennial news. If you haven't heard, Ashanti is having has announced she's having a child with Nelly. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. You know Nelly, Michael. Wait, wait, wait. Talk, you, oh, like, you I know, know Nelly. Nelly. I, yeah, you know Ashanti. Yeah, I do. You know Nelly. No, I don't. You know both of these people. Maybe someday you'll meet their child. Um, <laughs> uh, other around the horn um, in bad decisions. <laughs> huh? A, wom- a woman in Indiana uh, called 911 to report uh, bad meth. Oof. Um, <laughs> Anne Marie takes a deep sigh. <laughs> Anne Marie. <laughs> Anne Marie. Gosh. I mean, she, she's got she's got to pay up. That's how you get. That's how you get the good stuff. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> it's gay for what this you is, get, man. You get what you this get. Galaxy, yeah, for- oh, man. galaxy brain behavior. You said That's Indiana Jack. Apart. Everything in your house. Yes, only in Indiana could this happen. Oh, and what part? Of, uh, take a guess, Michael. Hold on, Michael, guess first Gary, before he tells you. Ga- I'm not. I'm not going to know. Gary, I knew you'd go. I'm Gary, go find this. Hammond. I was. I wasn't expecting the Inquisition Hammond? on this, but I will. Fi- it says Lawrence County on the mugshot. So if anyone knows where Lawrence County Kansas. Indiana is, that's where that's this happened. Next to Gary. And and lastly, I think this is going to be a reoccurring segment, but I just wanted to give an update on the White Sox right now. Uh, the oh 2024 20, dumpster fire. Uh, Jerry Reinsdorf has his third eye open. They are currently three and fifteen. They were two and fifteen, which would extrapolate to thirty-two and one hundred and thirty. And we'll keep an eye on this because the worst ever in the history of the one hundred sixty-two game season record was forty-three and one nineteen. So go White Sox. I know you can do it. Wait, aren't the twins below them, though? Oh, no, really? Wow. The twins are? Let me check. Even worse. Uh, No, the twins are 6 and 11, which is all star territory compared to the (laughs) Sox. Oh, no, Freddie. No. I got out of that. When it when it 
kind of creeped up towards my stop, pulled back, gave yeah. me a hundred dollars. I took the hundred dollars and, and I'm oh, glad. Good. Very yeah. good. I'm feeling like that's what I should have done, but. Take a little heat on it. Are you still in the short in the NQ, Michael? Yeah, I'm taking 10 handles of heat on it. It's points. So 57s. Trading 67s. All right. Uh, let's get back to these markets here. Crud. 67% mm. long. ES, 64% long. NQ. Nothing wild. Nothing too wild there. Did take a peek above VWAP in the NASDAQ. Came right back to it. Keep in mind, uh, we get that net gas number, Eddie. I didn't see it hit the wire. s p is holding above VWAP. 50, 50 billion cubic feet in line wow. for the net gas. Thank you. Gold seeing some sellers here about... Oh, new lows, gold, new lows, gold. It's just some stops went off mm. there, about $2 worth of moving to the downside there. Trading 23.88. I remember earlier, Anne Marie wants to see it, says she could oh. see it going back down to 2300. It was a beautiful failed auction at the high of, the, of gold today. You guys want to see it? Please. Yes. Yeah, 2400s got rejected. So here's the initial balance high, 2403. 240360 market looked above, <clears throat> came back in, reopened the next 30 minute bar inside the initial balance, and look what happened. Pow! That is excess, failed auction, end of an upside auction, beginning of a new auction. Boom. Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Can we see where Boom. the floor might be in this rotation? If you're looking at that and you go, all right. Well, we see this low, we see gold coming off. Where, using that technique right there, John, where would you see a floor? Okay, so on the profiles, uh, I'm I'm kind of viewing. Uh, this is this is going to be kind of spaced out, so I'm going to smush these profiles down a little bit. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, so, you know, where have we been? Well, we had the big move up. We're basically in a kind of a two-stage range here. I'm calling uh -huh. this upside digestion. And in this digestion, yeah. instead of a deep pullback to, to, to scare out all the longs, it gives people time to adjust inventories while we're here. So there's a lot of inventory adjustment going on here. And that's going to bring power to the next move. The floor, to me, is probably, uh, well, I mean, this point of control here, 23.66 even it looks you know pretty pretty, pretty prominent yeah. and it's a it's a weakness in structure and if that doesn't hold i'm looking at all these lows down here let's call it 23.40 yeah. 23.40 because that's where the market came up to and started to show balance if we're looking right. at if we were looking at this like a five minute chart like a dolby chart this would be the area that he would be looking for longs right mm-hmm Yep. And probably up here somewhere would be the area he'd be looking for shorts. What are the prices? Yep. Uh, 24.12, let's call it. 12s, yep. 24.12, I mean, we did open up here and reject. So these highs become relatively important as well as these points of control, which were both hit two days later. But now we're just really range bound here. Just really, really in a range. Squishy, as, as you like to call it, Anne-Marie. Squishy. <laughs> hey, John, how are we looking on Delta? Delta S&P is 3,600 oh, positive, 1,300 positive NASDAQ. Hey, where's Pro Ball at? Pro Ball, Dakota. Pro Ball. Pro Ball's Dakota. long. He's coming yeah. in. I'm stepping out. Yeah. Dolby's coming in. Trade well, everybody. Michael, Anne Marie, Andre, love you. <laughs> love all of you. We'll see you later, John. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> this afternoon, John. Levels. Wait, Dakota's coming in. Dolby's coming. Dolby time. What's up, man? What's up? What What is that background all about? Dolby time's on mute. We're on mute. Yeah, what so perfect funny. mind background is thought, that? I just thought about that. Uh, this is the Yolo Bolo. Thanks to AI. 
Uh, we bolo. asked it to figure out what a YOLO bolo is. And we need it to is wear one. quite a magical, magical area of life. It's a YOLO bolo. Like a bolo tie? YOLO bolo? Or? Uh, yeah, you know, it kind of rhymes. So that's what we went with. But uh, yeah, I think I have a lot of spirit animals in this picture. So, you know, we're going to roll with it. It's trippy. I like it. Yeah. Oh, nice Toby, you should, uh, what are you looking chat. at? <laughs> what am I looking at? I don't know. I just opened yeah. up the charts. Let's, it looks like Dow's on the up and up. I got it approaching the daily range high. Um, so there could be some interesting opportunities. I think that would be a cheap short, to be honest, if we could get uh, get up there. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're going to try to work that. 76% long. 76% long NASDAQ. Yeah, I got 80%. Yeah, it's coming right up to uh, uh, Man, Dakota's number at 700. Yep, Dakota nailed this one. Yeah, I, uh, I moved my shorts higher because of that 700 number. I went looking for it and found it. Is yeah, ask him it. if he's going to take some profit. Yeah, so I, I'm not going to take the short up here. Uh, one of the rules of range trading that I have found is that you do not want to see a strong candle going into your level. And what I mean by that is gotcha. this, th this right here at uh, what is, well, it's not really time, but the last, this five minute candle, the most recent five minute candle. So with the daily range high up here at 38,257. And what you prefer seeing is not a strong candle pushing through. You want to wait and see another five minute candle sort of uh, get tight or do like a spinning top. I've gotten burned many, many times thinking that, oh, this will be a great level to short. And then you get a super strong five minute candle and then it just rips your stop right out. So if we can hang out for three more minutes, this would be very interesting for a potential cheap short. Yeah, I, th I think that short might still be coming if we use Max Maserati's uh rules about checking out volume you'll be back see today. how it's yeah. got in a super <laughs> declining formation as it's heading higher yeah so we want to yeah, watch for that acceptance. Volume, right yeah this 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 little downward trend right here that i got i'm gonna draw yeah. this yeah this is what this is what anna marie is referring to so you have this declining volume as we approach uh daily range highs so if we can hang out I'm for having... two more minutes up here, I think it's I think it's good. Do you like that idea? Uh, I do. No? And I, I am having so much fun looking and digging in to all of the guests that come on oh, yeah. Top Step yeah, where I can me take too. a look at their strategies and go, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna carve that one up and see how it looks. And I've just yeah. I've been having a ball, really. And uh, I, some of them are a lot harder for me to grasp. Some of them, my brain simply does not gravitate to. I can't mm. resonate with it. And um, yours, I love because you and I trade the same way um, in many yeah. aspects. And so yours has been super easy. So I'm beating that to death right now, trying to see where it uh, works best, uh, where it works least and um gonna be putting some stuff together up in the in the on the strategy lab channel for nice. us on that so i appreciate you being my guinea pig but i have really enjoyed it because it's very robust and it's simple it is very which simple. is nice robust plus box. simple is it's a hard game to to get good at robust and simple and you've really put on there. So the only things I look at would be, all right, what do my volatility bands tell me? How far mm -hmm. away am I from the VWAP? And then I'm adding Max's, uh, Max and Coach Jay. Jay's been oh, wow. so great to go in because he's got a lot of volume based trading triggers and listening to those and incorporating them. It makes me go, ah, you know what? That looks like a strong candle but it's mm -hmm. also on really declining volume. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take a small, uh, short there and see if it continually collapses 
or mm. it breaks out again. Yeah, I mean, we, we got a pretty good rejection off of 38,260. Uh, but I, I do worry about, you know, strong candles getting up to that level. Yeah. Oh, no, but you're, if you're could, right. It's just not worth it. I mean, if you can pull back up a little bit, like maybe I would take a like a one lot just to test it out and see. But uh, it's a good range. It's a really good range. It's a great range trade. Yeah, it sure is. It's been the same range for four trading days. Yep, we're I mean, seeing a yeah. lot of the same prices. A lot of the same prices lately. But very All right, little well, we're a little bit behind. A little bit behind schedule here, which is okay. We have some markets moving here, and markets come first here at Top Step TV. But JD is here with hot streaks. And hopefully, chart pattern of the day, which has been very valuable. Learned a lot from it. Uh, JD, hit us. Checking in. What's up, guys? Yeah. All right, James. Up, let's drop those hot streaks real quick. Look at this, Michael. Mm. <laughs> All right. Our guy, Che, is back after taking about a week off. Che picked up uh, around 100 bucks trading the micro NASDAQ yesterday. Picked there up right go. where he left off on a streak. Now at 27 nice. days. Welcome back, Che. Uh, Arian, Petrus, Tien, and James all extended their streaks another day. They're all sitting on 24-day uh, heaters at the moment. Nice job, guys. Wow. Wow, wow. All right. Yesterday's best live-funded PNLs. Now, this doesn't happen too often when a live trader outperforms an XFA trader on the PNL list. I think it's only happened once before since we started tracking it. But, uh, yeah, Salman sure pulled it off yesterday. Mick featured Salman on the shoulder tap yesterday yeah. because he absolutely drilled it trading the NASDAQ. $51,685 in profits. That's a single live funded account. Jeez. That's pro ball right there. Oh, nicely yeah, done. it is. That's incredible. Uh, 52 that large. How much was it? 50 large? 51,000. 51, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me yeah, do man. this. Yeah, math. Remember we saw his numbers? He was up like 52,000. Hold on. 52,000 oh, on one account. On one account times whatever multiple I want. LeBron James. 20 money. accounts. Yeah. $1 million. <laughs> You're buying multiples when you do copy accounts. I'm, I'm convinced <laughs> on that. So 50000 is over. what you really made. That is kick-ass. That's pro ball give trade. This yeah, yeah. Let's give this overlay just a second to update. I'm putting the live numbers in there right now. I had the XFAs up. What size so size? Is, what size account? What size... I could find out real quick. I'll look this up on the uh there it is. Overlays adjusted. Wow. He's in a hundred fifty K live account. There you go, Michael. Fifty one large. Almost fifty two. That's Robo. incredible. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is. New eyes. Seriously, that's my, my biggest day ever was thirty two and I traded my entire life. That's um, right around there as well. This was fantastic. Salma made a... Uh, 10 trades yesterday. Average five grand a trade. Well done. What what kind of size does he carry? I remember Mick saying something about him taking 10 lots. Is that yep. it? Is it Looking 10 like lots? 10 lots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to work some there's Nick T. The oh, there's our boy Nick T, number two. Let's shout out to Nick T. He'll be on today. Yeah. Nick Just T. another word about oh, Simon. Yeah. Yesterday, yesterday his average winning trade was fifteen thousand seven hundred. Average loser was around eighteen hundred. The forty percent <laughs> oh, win on. rate. How about that? Wow. Fantastic. That's the way to one do more it. time, say that one more time and help people understand what that means. JD. Average winning trade yesterday fifteen thousand seven hundred six dollars. Average losing trade uh, minus eighteen hundred dollars. Forty percent win rate. Keeping the math on his side. Uh, yeah. You could oh, yeah. have Fantastic. you could have a you could have a forty percent win rate if uh, you're taking that kind of risk to reward right there. What's Seven that kind one. of risk to reward? Seven, Seven to one. Seven and a half to one. Yeah. Yeah, that works. You only have to <laughs> you only have to be right like like thirty twenty something like that percent. We we have a chart somewhere that we had, but if you're taking seven to ones, which is just incredible average, you know, it's hard to do. It's hard to find that big of a winner versus those big of a loser. Yeah. So don't get that in your head, guys. That that's just something that you can just find. Those are home run, home run uh, stats, stats. Yeah, just, for it, sure. just just knocking it out of the park for for the day. Yeah, two to ones is what we see a, a lot, a lot. One point seven to one to two to one for the funded folks. Uh. Oh, looks like we took the rest of it down. But, yeah, great job all around to the rest of the traders, too. 
Nick T, Wang, Venkata, Nathaniel, all the solid days. Nice job. All right, James, you want to oh, switch over to my charts real quick? Oh, yes. Oh, chart so, of the day. Hogue talked about this head and shoulders pattern earlier today in uh, the opening call. So we're looking at a... Oh, there it is. Uh, so the head and shoulders top, typically, historically, a reversal pattern. Uh, it has been known to be a continuation pattern, but uh, more than not, more times than not, more likely than not, it's a reversal pattern. It consists of three peaks, higher peak in the middle, and a uh, shoulder on the left and right side, with a neckline connecting the uh, troughs between the peaks. When price breaks below that neckline after formation, uh, suggest a bearish trend reversal. Uh, let's head back over to my charts. We'll do a little deeper dive into it Seriously. all right so this pattern this pattern has not uh fully formed yet hogue was sort of uh it's kind of a theoretical pattern hogue was suggesting that this is how it might play out so we're going to start with how to identify uh the head and shoulders pattern so like i said it consists of three peaks uh left shoulder mm -hmm. the peak the head and the right shoulder uh two so shoulders are don't have to be symmetrical in height, but uh, they're separated by that peak, the head in the middle, and it resembles a head and shoulders. Uh, to confirm the pattern, you have to identify the potential head and shoulders and confirm its uh, validity. Uh, the first shoulder forms as price rises, which we are seeing here, uh, followed by your retreat in price right here. The head forms as prices rise again and peak, and then retreat again to form the right shoulder. We have not formed the right shoulder on this pattern yet. Uh, there should be a neckline drawn connecting, this is just a hypothetical neckline, connecting the two troughs or two uh, retreats. Uh, this neckline acts as a support level until a breakout. Uh, a breakout confirmation comes once uh, the pattern is identified, it's confirmed, and then the breakout comes on a significant uh, volume increase breaking that neckline. Uh, and that the increased volume sort of confirms the strength of that reversal from there you want to look for a target of a measured move right here we kind of have a little double top here in the crude oil and so we're just going to use that <laughs> yep uh -huh. <laughs> so we're just going to use that well it hasn't it, it hasn't picked up it hasn't picked up the shoulder yet correct right so this yeah. is all hypothetical so that's what we're going to it's yep. all hypothetical so assuming we that's break out right around here where we're predetermining where a breakout might occur extend from a breakout price down the size of the peak to the neckline and this is your measure move target somewhere around 7454 uh something we're monitoring we're going to keep taking a look at it we'll touch back on this later next week got a few more things to follow you up with you also oh go ahead uh, no, go ahead, J JD. That was good. I got a, I got an Andre jab going on that, that I'm waiting to do. Sure, sure. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that. We were talking about that round of the top pattern yesterday, and uh, I caught this one on a four hour chart in the E Mini S and P 500. Uh, nice round of top going back to what is this? Mid March, early March. Uh, we have our support line drawn right here, going to uh, a low from last week. If you want to calculate a measured move, I don't have the exact prices, but uh, you calculate a measured move going from the peak of the pattern uh, down to that support line. And then you measure from the breakout that we had the other day. That gives us a measured move in the ES down to right around 45, right around, uh, sorry, 4960 area. Uh, if you're keeping track of this type of thing and uh also just checking in on our measured move targets in the nasdaq we had the double top the diamond formation and uh this rounded top that we mentioned yesterday let me just show that one more time yeah you got to wait uh, a little so longer we Michael. That, we are approaching that 17380 measured move forgot. target for yeah three <laughs> major reversal patterns playing out in the uh nasdaq right now so we'll be keeping an eye on those. We'll go over all this in a little more detail tomorrow, but that's what I got for you right now. Be back in a little bit with the uh, top 10 list. Thanks, J.D. Head and shoulders. Yeah, J.D. Plays out. 
All right, Ivy. what do you think about what do you think Michael, about? You gotta wait a little longer, Mike, Michael. You, you gotta got wait it. a little longer, Michael. Yeah, we got Eddie exactly coming in here now. Let's so hold that thought. Let's see <laughs> exactly if your old ass can remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's just he's just waiting. Locked and loaded, <laughs> uh, Mr. Must Patak. Must be a doozy. Must be a doozy. Oh my goodness! It's, now it's, yes. it's fading. It's it's fading now. It Go ahead. I'm trying to draw this thing out. All right, write it down. Put it on a post-it note and put it on your monitor. You won't forget it. Um, hey, for those just real quick here, for those that are asking. We did have our bell to bell yesterday. Let me repeat that. Yesterday was our bell to bell. We do not have that today. And those that are eligible will be emailed a code uh, before the end of the day tomorrow. And remember, this code is good until May 1st. Also on the plugs, we asked you yesterday, what were your hobbies? So we want to know more about your hobbies so we can keep bringing you the best in trade entertainment uh, from sports to video games, music, art, cooking, and more. We want to know. We're interested to hear about what you're doing when you step away from the screens. That is, please, legal, not illegal. Make sure that your hobbies you share with us are legal. Um, we're going to post <laughs> that, uh, if you can, post that form in chat and um, fill it out. Let's have some fun. Back to you, Andre. Thank you. All right. Without much further ado, Michael, let's, uh, do, you, do you still remember what that joke is? No, it's it's wow. a, it's astronomy astronomy for traders. You always call it charting astronomy for traders. Say Wasn't that. really a jab. It was more just kind of funny because it's, it's something you call them. Well, I've heard it been called that before. Oh, Anyways, sure. let's get back to these markets. While we're doing chart pattern today, uh, really, Dre, I've been Ours. short the tens up here a few times. The tens up here a few times. Tens up here a few times. Now I'm short three from oh six. So I'm building a day being short around these yeah, like tens it. up here. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Just kind of trading around it and then leaving a runner on, but then the runner doesn't doesn't hasn't hit yet. But if we get a fallout of it, because we keep retesting. Shan said in here earlier, Shanna saw that. I prefer to take a trade on the retest. I prefer to take a trade on the retest. That's actually pretty smart. Here's another retest lower. It's and I'm going to get out of, it's I'm, I'm going to keep retest. one on. Yeah, it has. I'm going to keep one on as a, re, uh, as a runner. I had four. Nice. It's good. It's a good area. Cause I'm looking for shorts in YM, but I wanted to break 38,280 because we are trying to stretch out a daily range high. I want to make sure that I give that's it enough room. the same number. Watching. Gow, Anne Marie. Say that one more time because you guys are both uh, traders that I look up to. So if you guys are agreeing to something and I missed it, I need to know it. Well, I think you're actually kind of in a similar trade, MP, but the market structure is a little bit different in NQ than it is in YM. So YM is in a daily range, uh, as we can tell right here. Like it, it tops out at approximately 38,255. I have a bottom of 37,846. And so if you're a range trader, you're looking to short tops, buy bottoms. And the reason why I have my shorts up a little bit like out of uh, out of the range is because if it does push out of a daily range, the move is going to be more dramatic than say if it's like a five minute daily range extension to get out stops. So I'm tr it's like you're kind of like walking a tightrope. Do I try to get in now and hope that it doesn't happen, or do I wait and see if that big range extension happens and then I can get a better fill? So it's, it's kind of a tricky spot to play, but I am going to leave my orders up here and be patient. I do think we can do a stop run to the upside, but you are uh, kind of taking, taking some risks, you know, for sure. But if it does extend mm -hmm. a daily range extension, it's going to be, it's going to be larger than you want for say, uh, you know, a $300 loss limit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is Dakota still long? I believe Dakota is <laughs> out. Dakota is looking he's to get out. long crude. I believe Dakota is currently long crude. I believe he's out in the NASDAQ from what we've been talking here. Uh, he's been carving it up lately. That Nikkei trade overnight last night hit nicely. Yeah. Oil trade hit nicely. Another NASDAQ trade this morning hit nicely. We should be pulling our levels yeah. from him, Michael. He's hot, right? Hey, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Abbas, there's no way I would ever charge for a seminar. I don't do that crap. I do Wait, seminar. No, no, no. I do what is it? talking. And, yeah, it's, uh, I am. I am looking to go out to Taiwan. We have a lot of Taiwan folks that we work with that are really cool. But I don't charge for. I've never done that. And I'm not the, fly in here and sit next to me for fifty thousand. 
that fifty thousand I'll have in my personal brokerage account, and I'll show you how I trade your money. No, I don't do any of that. I've been a part of this whole education thing for forever, and a trader. I'm just I'm not into the game of selling. What's the rumor? Selling, oh, the um, rumor that you're doing some kind of seminars in Taiwan and people are yeah, doing so. Yeah, it's, it's debunked. How about that? There you please go. Please be true. Please be true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that would be incredible. All right, we got five minutes till Bostic uh, speaking here. Right, we'll push and higher. Push and higher in higher. All right. Yep. I got stopped out, stopped out of my runner. All in all, that was a thirteen hundred dollar uh, trade around position. Sounds good, Jack. We'll go. Yeah. Uh, we'll cut to that here. Okay. We got some size at thirty eight thousand three hundred which is about 50. Okay, we got filled on one. And let's see if we get filled on a second one. A really strong five-minute candlestick pushing higher here. Uh, only risking $300 on this one. So pretty good risk reward, but we do want to see this start to reject if possible. But, you know, it's kind of the risk here of, of trading the ranges. Either you look uh, like an absolute genius or you look like a complete idiot and there's very little in between. That's trading. That's every day of trading, it is. right? No kidding. 50, no uh, kidding. New highs ES, new highs NASDAQ, new highs Dow. Sorry about that. NASDAQ has not hit the high. I take the take the blame on that one. But we uh, are moving much higher. ES hit the high. Yes, it did. My Answer bad. to the Dow. Answer to the Dow. All good, Eddie. NVIDIA pushing strong here says, damn, bro, okay. Yeah, so my profit target is going to be middle of, of the daily range. So it's going to be a ways down, all right. a ways down. But that's the system I am going to run for all of April. So let's see how it goes. Gold catching a bit here. Coming up to 2400 it's about $3 short of that. Tilt uh, was looking heavy long in the ES. I saw up to 70, 70, 77% long in the ES on this move to the upside. I'll keep in mind we do have Bostic in three minutes. It's been a bit hawkish lately. Oh, we'll see if he can if he <laughs> continues that tone. Raphael Bostic out of Atlanta likes to talk. It's so like frustrating of, trading. Like right the sound now. of his own voice. You do, let's be honest. You get into a trade and then someone is coming on in five minutes or ten minutes from the Fed, and it's like, okay, I know. Great. I know. What are they going to say now? <sighs> what are they going to say now? <clears throat> And then we might have. I, I think they yeah. finally caught on how. I think I think they finally caught on on how everybody hangs on every word. So like, no, no, I'm going on stage. No, no, I'm going on stage. No. <laughs> so now it's just like, come on. Rock, paper, They're scissors. all auditioning for their next yeah. jobs. Hundred percent, Ann. A hundred percent. That's all nice coming. Call, don't they Ann. all get? Don't they all? They're they're under interview Huge right now because. Doggles. Oh, they all end up yeah. working for Goldman or Merrill or you know the big banks. You know, they, this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the yeah. stepping stone. Yeah. Or, or Goldman goes, on. hey, uh, t yeah. Or Goldman goes, hey, Tom, uh, don't retire. How about we just get you that chairman role over at their Fed? Exactly. You yeah, still okay. friends with everyone in DC? All right, cool. You're hired. Uh huh. Yeah, you're hired. Consultant. There you go. So far, good. I got um, short. Uh, I, I, got short I got back. Nice, nice entries there. Nice snapback. Yeah. Yeah, I got twenty six. Oh, yeah, I got the twenty sixes. I got the twenty sixes. I was short of sevens. Got stopped out at seventeens. It did a it did a oh, rip of the, the stops 26s? up to like sixes. That's awesome. Twenty six. Seventeen. You say twenty seven? I like do twenty six. It's a hell of an entry. Nice job. Yeah, it was. No <laughs> yeah. kidding, dude. What's your target? Uh, lower. <laughs> yeah, my man. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm always, I'm always on this one line. I'm up, at the, I'm up over a thousand, so I'm looking for twenty handle. I always look for twenty. Once I start getting up over, like a, once I get a cushion, I'll look for that. Yeah, I I took the short in oil, but I covered into um, some heavy congestion right here. But I think oil comes in just a little bit more. 81.55 maybe, but this is a good first target, 81.74. Oh, yes, and there she goes, mm. 81. Wow, oil selling off here. There she goes, James. Yeah. You got that animation for Anne-Marie? Uh, oh. There she Whoa. <laughs> Anne-Marie. Oh. <laughs> Anne-Marie. Oh. 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 One more time. One more time. Oh, no. One more time. I have arrived. 
<laughs> I have a ride. It's supposed to be clear. Oh my gosh. Anne Marie, my, you're chasing a plane again. Gosh, Anne Marie. My <laughs> life. We gotta have we, we gotta have a title for the plane. Every time Anne Marie does something like getting in a trade, we gotta have it say something that uh, the plane is like. I don't know. Yeah, lower. Let's do that one more time, yeah. James. I want to oh, see my, what's going yeah. on here with these oh, formats. Like, there she goes. There she goes. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. uh, <laughs> oh, that was good. Oh, my, my heart. Favorite. Oh, and so while good. I'm here, um, Andre, did you see Angel Reese when she was at Tao last night? <laughs> no, I, 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 she already making herself feel at home. Yeah, there she was go. there. I'm just, I'm just uh, disappointed that you weren't there. I was not there. I was trading slow markets last night, Jack. Angel Reese right. spotted at Tao nightclub after, yeah, good, good on her. The newest uh, member of the Chicago Sky. Yeah. Good on her. Uh, uh, Andre's, uh, Andre's office. You know what? I'm not going. <laughs> I was there for, that's I was there. It was in June. And that was, uh, yeah. And do you know what you, do you know what you did? Uh, you, you had the, 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 the bottle service folks walk out with sparklers and didn't say happy birthday. I know it's your, your, your buddies put it, your buddies put it together. And my God, is that embarrassing? I was cringing at a club and I don't know how you do that. You can't like hear it. anything. You know, I didn't like it. <laughs> it was I didn't like that. You shit. know they Hilarious. big ask, and then you get like a bottle of kettle, which costs like I don't know, way too much box, and it costs four hundred. Yeah, yeah. Wait, yes, much. pretty good markup. All right, Eddie, if you got anything coming out from Bostic, should be hitting the wire here. Please, Morris code in. Well, that was a great animation. Anne Marie, for those that don't know the inside joke, there, Anne Marie, uh, who was it? Oh, Robert Plant, who was it? I'm yeah, the Robert Plant. Plant. Robert oh, Plant yeah, in his Robert private Plant. jet in a. Uh, in private jet at a small airport. Anne Marie, being the super fan she is, well, Anne Marie, you tell the story real quick. You uh, just, <laughs> no, that's case, it. That's try to <laughs> chase Robert PJ Robert plants PJ down the tarmac. Not advisable, but uh, that was our uh, graphic <gasps> interpretation of what oh, happened there. Oh <laughs> man! Yes. I tell you, if you listen carefully on that uh, thing that Jack made, you can hear Plant saying, go, 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 go. Yep. <laughs> She's getting closer. <laughs> She's huge. Like the T-Rex scene in uh, Jurassic Park. Is that Jurassic what they were trying Park's to do? In a world of rock stars, Anne-Marie chases him <laughs> down the army. <laughs> She almost got them. Man, we get, we get those sound bites out real quick. <laughs> yeah, we do. We turn those around real fast. Hilarious. Uh, we are not getting right. a very uh, fast rejection up here. So typically yeah, it's like it's some really... failed moves come fast moves, and it's being very, very not fast. Very yeah. not fast. But we're going to stick with it, though. We're going to stick with yeah, this I short covered. Uh, I covered when we got down to... Um, what was it? 30. Nice. Oh, nice. 230. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. at the edge of those wicks. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I got 240. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah next month in May, I'm going to change up the take profit strategy and have it be yep. more like base hit oriented and see how it performs. This one's more like structure oriented. Oh. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out, but. I think I'll probably have a lower win rate with this strategy, but a higher risk reward. And then the other one will probably be, you know, higher vice versus whatever's. But we'll All see. All right, I'm out. Uh oh. Oh, what'd you get? I yeah, I got 27 handles. My man. Yeah, I got. Nice. That was a nice try. I'm up 1,800. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Nice. Okay. Chasing that. Anything, Chasing nothing from Bostic yet Bostic. here. <laughs> nothing from Bostic. No. He has a flair for the dramatics, so he might be fashionably late before he starts speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Does like the sound of his own voice. But uh, he has been warning us that uh, not as many rate cuts as we think this year. So we do need to listen. He is a voting mm -hmm. member as well. So we do need to listen. Gold's still seen a bit of a sell off here. I'm sorry, not gold, crude oil, I should say. I yeah, separate those two charts. That's probably helping the indices, to be honest. I think you're probably right. By quite a bit, if I had to guess. I think you're right. Middle East, according to Tuckman, was kind of the number one thing on the market's minds. And now we have oil coming down. It's a little bit quiet in the Middle East. So now I wonder if the markets are mm -hmm. kind of given the green light to start slowly pushing higher. Yeah. 
Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, that's a powder keg, so like anything could happen at any time. All right, now we're at my entry, and we are probably going to start making some new daily highs. Nice cover, Michael. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good one. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, we'll Look at the five minute here on the Dow. We do seem to be in an uptrend here. There was a bit of a pullback in the previous five minute candle. Hold. So we have one more that we're going to add at 38,303. We do have okay. like a good amount of size. Now, why why did you pick 303? What's sitting? Um, a, I'm looking uh, at an hourly chart. I see 309. Yeah. But there was a, uh, a little five minute consolidation that happened on April 15th. And I think we just yeah, I run, see that, run that little nub right there. So yeah, like I said before, like I if you're trading it. a daily consolidation, like the runs out of the consolidation are going to be larger than like a five minute range. So I'm trying to like anticipate the the run happening and still give it enough room that if, if it does, if I am right, that I will have space and it will come back down again. And if I'm wrong, it's just going to steamroll me straight up, and I have, there's nothing I can do anyways. Right. But I got I've gotten burned a couple times trying to play like a four hour range or a daily range, only to have it run, you know, outside yeah. the range pretty far and then come back in again. So I'm trying to respect, yeah, uh, kind of the, the natural volatility of a larger range. I think actually paying attention to volume on the larger time frames gives you insight into that. Just as a mm. heads up. And I see that you've got volume sitting there now. And, um, you know, I have never looked at volume. I mean, I looked at it, but I never used it in any of my analysis until yeah. I started seeing that really <laughs> it could, it gives you good clues about continuation of price for sure. Uh, yeah. that, and I was, I was just going to say that, is there anything out there that says, uh, like, you know, how they have run rate on like, you know, well, so if you start the day, uh, and your volume is is uh, uh, accelerating higher than normal pace for that day. So at the end of the day, you're going to have greater volume, but you don't know that. But it, it's but it's setting up like that because you have something that's watching. Is there anything out that uh, out there that watches that? What percentage like uh, will be in line with the average daily range by the end of the day, considering what's happening, you know, in real time? Does that make sense? Well, so you can see if, mo yeah, if you see if volume is going to be uh, bigger for the day. Is there something out there that, well, that does that calculation? I think a lot of, you know, someplace like Finviz, that's free, right? You can go in there and in the first 15 minutes, that's F-I-N-V-I-Z. In the first 15 mm -hmm. minutes, you can see whether the, the charts are tracking at higher volume rates. And you can scan through the middle of the day that says, you know, is, is the spy moving at one and a half times relative volume? So you can, you uh -huh. can scan for those. The question is more, yeah, you can scan for that, but where, where does volume tell you that you need to watch out because something's a coming? <laughs> and so yeah, yes, what, yes. what I think is the better thing to look at is as volume continues to rise on say your 13, uh, your 30 minute candlesticks or your 15 minute candlesticks, it's always relative to frontline resistance on your daily or weekly charts. Mm -hmm. And as it runs in there, if it's not giving you rising bars but it starts giving you decreasing bars it's the key event that tells you listen price action is not going to hold there there's going to be a dip it's either going to be a reversion to the mean where you can go long again or it's going to rotate into a deeper price action which is really why i still suspect that dobie's trade is a really good one because he's looking at getting short on declining volume into prior day's resistance. And that, that's really where the power of uh, volume analysis works. Now, Max, who will be on later today, I'm going to dig into to more of his stuff. When he starts describing how, of course, he looks at like a 15 and a 30 second candlesticks 
stick, it's which like 30 uh, seconds you know or makes me so have a fast. seizure, right? So, so yeah. he looks at that, but he looks for price acceptance based on the volume candle that just preceded. And it gives him a notion of, okay, is this continuation? Is this reversal? What's going on here? And that is also really powerful. It really dovetails to Jay's strategy, which is also very volume based and looks at the rejection for reversion to the mean on the quick trades and then the break into new trades on increasing volume in that space. So what I love push. is watching all of these come together here by really studying them. And I'm a student at heart, so I'm, I'm really mm -hmm. vibing on all of it. I'm starting to see some wiggle in the ladder. I think we're going to get our move either to the upside or downside yep. in the next five minutes. Yeah, it, if it stays above 30, I'm out. I got short 26s again. It, again? Not a test. Okay. Again, but. Nice, nice. See, now you're trading, Michael. You're, you got to trade what you see sometimes, you know? Just got to well, feel it. Yep, exactly. Read the tape. Read the tape. Yeah, I think the, one of the other things that Max was, was saying is that he looks at, like, the 30-second bar, 30-second, uh, you know, candles, and then he tries to pick out, like, the super high-volume ones that kind of stand yes. out, and then he actually draws highs and lows exactly, on that. Exactly, the range. Did here. Huh. Yeah, I did that on the one minute, so... I, to see if I price will hold. Yeah, nine fifty six. I have a really a one minute candle that has you know peculiarly high volume, and so I, I actually drew these kind of turquoise lines uh, that represent that, and it's been kind of stuck in there. So I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen if we do push yeah. above thirty eight thousand two ninety eight, or if we do push below thirty eight thousand two seventy two. You know, I, I'm always looking to add, you know, a tool to the toolbox, if you will. So, you know, if this is something that I can help improve my edge a little bit, then, you know, I'll add it to the toolbox. But we're starting to get some weird price action here. Like just the ladder is moving in a way that um, to me is unusual. Okay. So why don't you describe that? Tell us, tell us what you mean. Yeah. So it's, it's something I caught from watching crude oil and I don't even know if it's like officially translatable to YM, but typically like the ladder, if you watch it will kind of move in somewhat like a normal price, a like normal price action. It goes up, it goes down. And then every now and then it will just kind of like flutter up and down really quick. Mm -hmm. And that to me is kind of like, uh, something's happening. Something is weird in yeah. the market. And just based off of watching that, you know, for 10 years, that I've kind of wrapped it into my toolbox, like, oh, we're going to get something weird. And we're starting to get some, you know, interesting price action now. And I called that maybe 45 seconds ago. So in this case, it has kind of panned out. It doesn't always pan out. But if you watch the dome enough, it's like watching the matrix. It's not an easy thing to pick up, but I'm starting to get some weird price oh, action. Definitely. And then all of a sudden I'm it's like, you. oh, that's strange. And just, you know, over repetition, it's like something... Something weird is probably going to happen soon, which is pretty interesting that you can be like, look at a dome, be like I can call, not call, but like I have certainty that we're going to get some weird price action and we're kind of starting to get a little bit of it. So we need to get below 38,272, which would be uh, the Max Maserati large candlestick low or large volume candlestick low. And we're just kind of wait here. We'll have it, have it play out. Uh, I, I scratched I, I scratched that one because we were hanging on the twenties too much, and I, I'm, I'm yeah. I don't. It's just it's staying firm, but you know, since then it's pulled back a bit. So, so it's kind of a, a time stop, right? Then MP, you would say. Well, it's either gonna yeah, it, but it just keeps us crawling, and I'm like, I can't be mm -hmm. the only person thinking it, looking to get short right here. <clears throat> so. No, but we still have that the kind of declining volume too. Uh, you know that Anne Marie was talking about, and probably a lot of other traders who use volumes. Like we haven't seen a big volume mm -hmm. spike yet in in YM. We're just does that mean people are losing interest? Does it mean that you know, like I don't coming, know, what it means. To, I don't really trade coming up to Euro close, perhaps. Yeah, uh, we do have. Yep. Still waiting for Not Bostic. Nothing on a Bostic. I saw John in the chat. I saw Eddie in the chat. Still nothing. Still, yeah, I mean, it's pushing higher in low volume. So yeah, let's try to get short one more 38,303. And then here. kind of let's see what happens. So maybe it's priming for just a super run to the upside, or maybe it's priming itself for a stop run to get back down within range. 
you know, it's a very interesting time right now for, for indices. Okay. Pushing higher, but still, still low volume. Like we have declining volume on the whole, on the whole move. Okay. Now we're short two. Let's move our stop down. So we'll risk about 350 on this one. So short two YM 38,295. And we want to get back within range and see if we can get below 38,272. So we are looking for a come failed move, come fast move. So we do want a quick rejection here if we can get it. What market are you in? Well, YM. Down. Uh, Math is why am I shorting this? It's top of the daily range. So it's a really cheap trade with a lot of potential for high profits. So the risk reward you, is like Next exceptional. Pause, Oil's going to come in yes, to the target that I'm looking at in about 10 cents. Nice. I'm coming back to the well way too often. I'm short 22s. Make sure you no, nah, I'm hesitant on this one. I'll let you. I'll I'm watch short, your short. I'm short program. around there too. That's up. Oh. Yeah, you can live, live vicariously through my short. We'll see if this plays out. I mean, if it if it kind of rips a little higher, and I see exten extension here because it could sit in this range that it, it it hasn't formed yet. It's still like very strong. Yeah, I mean, I I agree. It is, we're still kind of like waiting for a thing to happen, and it's just not happening. Yep. It's just slowly creeping higher. I heard Andre say something mm. about JD, so I'm sorry about that. We've been no, 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 so it's, much. no, no, it's fine. Well, we have a pause. Markets are moving right now. We're making new highs here in S and P's. Not quite Nasdaq yet, but Dow as well. Oil selling off. Gold catching a bit, but when things sell off or settle down a bit, we'll go to JD. Got the top ten for our live funded. Be very interested to see after one of our live funded traders put up over fifty thousand profits. We're pushing higher here. Seventy three percent long in the ES. Tops. It's yep. off the market. Once again, S and P S and P targeting fifty one hundreds. It seems to be a big magnet on fifty one hundreds in the S and P's. Now pushing, Nasdaq pushing. Not the highs yet. In the Nasdaq still lagging behind the S and P's and Dow. Crude selling off to uh, Amory. What's your target there in crude? Uh, eighty one twenty. Uh, no, eighty one forty. Okay, about 10 cents, like she just said. Yeah. Yeah, there's just no no sellers right now. So I don't time stop trades, so I just let this play out, and whatever happens, happens. Other thing, too, is that since I am trading a daily range, like what happens in like 1, 5, 15 minutes is not that relevant. Like I got burned so bad on a YM trade two weeks ago because I got impatient because I was trading like a four-hour range. And I was obsessing over the one minute or five minute candlesticks. I think, uh, Emory, you actually called me out on that like two weeks ago. So I need to not obsess over small time frames if I'm trading a large time frame. Since so a bit of a I I, saw, I, I got short. Anna, Anna, are you still short, Dolby? Yes. Yes. I'm still I moved short. my stop down to just above the five minute high. So I cut my risk about by like 30%. So now I'm only risking 230 to make 1500. Ooh, All right, I'm nice. short four from four. I'm short a four lot from 41. Oh, that's a good entry. Dude, the hell did you sell nice 41? clipping. Okay, you, you gotta on? tell me, Look at MP, smile. You, <laughs> you gotta tell me how, what time frame you're looking at that lets you clip those tops. How, how oh, are, what are you looking for in the formation that gets you clipping I saw, those I, tops. I saw the Orion belt cross over the Big Dipper. And what, <laughs> what sign is that, dude? <laughs> you're going to make me cry. Oh, we're getting good no. price action here. Oh, getting you're getting nice sending out a secret first. sauce? I think it's me. I think it's my presence, Anne Marie. M MP oh, is just yeah. right now. Fine. Nice entry there, Fine. Dolby. I think yeah, they saw, yeah, they saw that one. I think they did it based off volume there. They saw volume waning uh, to the upside there. Yeah, I mean, you guys were explaining it. <laughs> you guys were explaining it. Yeah, exactly. Buyers got exhausted. Andre, you heard all that, right? Yep. We're, yeah. oh, we're testing 
Uh, Maserati is 38,272. If we get below that, we could be good. But nice, nice rejection thus far. We are still going to hold this trade, though. We're not changing our plan at all. At all. I'm flat now because I, I got, I got great position and got in and, but okay. I, I want to know. You're not going to tell me. I'm going to hound you. Uh, it like, was, it was, it, yes. it, I was, I was looking, I was looking at everything short. And the uh, 5094s were just showing up. And the 5094s was a value area high from yesterday. That was one. Okay. That's in the daily daily top step level. So I went there. Okay. You guys are talking about the softness of the volume. Uh, we were all looking for shorts. And I I, I, I figured there's be a lot of dudes just like me play, playing the 20s short that probably were going to get squeezed. So given all that, that's when it kind of did a rip. It did a rip, like a like a, like a stop run. And I, and I like gotcha. to say, I, I like to do a join, I like to do a join, join offer, join offer, join bid, join bid. I don't like to do market orders. It kind of gives away. So how describe join bid to me? How, how does that, uh, what does that do mechanically in order flow to execute you when you say join bid or join ask? Join ask. It just, just puts the offer, uh, the best ask at the moment. And for me, it's better than hitting or, or hitting the offer, or hitting the bid with it with a market order. Market orders to me definitely give away a position, like you're looking to get long. But when you have something working, I just feel as though it's, it's different. Isn't that oh, isn't that Delta anyway? Delta. Delta's market uh, tracks market orders. So how many people are hitting the bid, or how many people are lifting the offer? Market orders. And I don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. So I want to. You want to be. But remember how you, remember how you people are coming in the pits say, "What's the pit? It's pit long or the pit short?" That's essentially what Delta's oh. tracking. That's essentially what Delta's tracking. So you, you know, if you, if you knew the pit was oh, long, was, you look for that. You look for their pain points, right? And then you try to squeeze them. That's essentially what we're kind of. Doing I would here. say that's what the two. I would that's say what that's Delta's what Delta's doing tilt. as well. Right. Exactly, same thing. Yeah. So the Delta I've just gives us a, 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 a more granular. I like it a lot. I had a one lot runner on there. I just scratched it. Uh, We're still up ticking here. I, I, in market orders, and then I don't like clicking in the dome on a order. I like to. Uh, that's why I watch the dome because I wait for these rips, rips, and then gotcha. those those get a those get a better entry. Okay. Still not okay. great volume. I'm gonna on those. try that little. Yeah, that's really it's really holding the floors. That's why I've been really sort of, you know, um, scalp trading in, in the Dow. Cause it just feels like the price action there is sticky to the upside. It's like people are trying to buy, uh, mm -hmm. the dips there much more actively than I've seen them in times past, Yeah, particularly the yeah. last few days. It, I mean, it's just a series of higher lows and higher highs, which is not great if you're short, but sometimes, you know, I'm just trading my system. I don't really yeah. care if I win or right. lose, just trading the system. You 100% care if you win or lose. I was just about to say, wait a second, <laughs> you do care, but... I'm trying not to, I'm just trying to focus on But it the can't, it can't, yeah, it can't be themselves. a deciding... It can't be the deciding factor. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's the joy of trading in a trading combine. Trading on sim is like, use this as practice to, you know, be bold, you know, accept responsibility yes. for your trade, accept the discipline, yes. you know? So it's like, I don't, I care more about the process right now than I care about, you know, winning, winning or losing. Exactly. I can always go back and journal about, about the mistakes and then I figure it out later, but that's the joy of the trading combine. If you're in the trading combine and you're obsessing about winning, you're going to have a terrible time trading. You're going to torture yourself. It's going to be awful. Yeah. It's all about process. Oh, we're going process. to short more at 309 and 317. Okay, now we're short three. And we're going to short one more at 317 and YM. So that'd give us four. And our risk is only negative 320. If we get this one, it would be probably 350. You know, I I think you're still sitting in a really good trade. It's this. What I'm size doing, combine are you using? Fifty k. It's tiny. I might be over leveraged for this trade, to be honest. Yeah, I I uh, that would be the only thing because I think you're going to be right. I see everything setting up. 
you're way on the outside of the volatility bands. The momentum is stretched into overbought. You're coming into resistance. If you just, if you don't have that, uh, leeway and you're using, yeah. um, you know, a 50 K it, it, it might, uh, It might hit you in well, I mean, the uh, in the jewels, yeah. as it were. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll cover up, Bobby. Cover up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bobby, take up, Jeff. What take is that, happening Bobby. to what? me? Well, <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Anne Marie, Sorry. we're bad influence on you. Anne Marie's taking this locker, uh, taking lo locker room talk <laughs> to the next level. I like it. <laughs> I mean, Chad is. Chat doesn't. Uh, I mean, chat. The reason I'm taking this trade uh, is it's a daily range high. That's the reason why I'm I'm taking this short. It's because we've been in a tight range, and so this is a cheap trade. It's just going to take yeah. a you long know what, time Dolby, to resolve. Dolby, you don't need to explain. I took that trade because you took yeah. the trade. I'm short three. From, and I'm and short everybody three. understands it. That's tracking. Yes. I mean, everybody that this understands your process trades. is tracking. Just. Okay. You know, if you don't get it, hold. press rewind later and you'll figure it out because that's hold on. Where's he's my, been uh, extremely explanatory. Um, obviously, very much so. Oh, it doesn't and, show up. Yeah. Hold on. Weird. And someone's been I, very, I very patient. That bounce in. Oh, yeah, I missed that long head. in. Crew. OCL's bouncing. I got short with. Help. I got short with you, Dolby. Stand by, JD. Let's do Go it. Ahead. Let's do it. <laughs> if we can get crude to bounce, that's just certainly going to help the case here. But here's the thing. Like, so Chad, imagine you inversed my trade and you faded me. You're that, that in my opinion, would be an extremely expensive trade. Extremely expensive. Why? Trade. Cause why? Because there's so much more room to the Where downside would you than the upside. I think exactly. great question. Oh, Where yeah. would you stop you if you went long? Yeah. yeah. Man, you'd, you'd have to be very, very tight on your stop because if you don't get the breakout, you're totally hosed. And we range more often than we break out. And so it's just like a statistical play. The problem is that yes. it's going to take a long time for this to resolve because we're trading a daily range and it's like turning a semi truck in a parking lot. It's like, it's going to take time exactly. for the market to exchange enough Ooh, contracts analogy. back and forth. Well, and is it though? Cause I see a lot, I see a lot of them at Walmart. There's a lot of trucks at Walmart. <laughs> Well, yes, yeah, that must be a place where they can make turns. That's true. Big pop and crude. Big, big pop and crude. Big pop and crude. Okay. Guess who's long a 10 lot and crude? You guessed it. Mr. Dakota is long a 10 lot and crude. Nice. And we pop. Coming up to almost 82 right. bucks. He was targeting $82 for his pro pro profit target. And sure enough, we just hit 82. $82.06. Dakota, yeah. my man, you got to come back on here more. Also, those levels. We are popping hard here. We'll see if crude, if gold can pop here. Amory, what were we saying about crude? First, we see crude pop, then we'll look for see if gold pops, and then we might have a headline. Uh, yeah, outside of the daily range. Oh, outside wanna, the daily you range. Watch. Okay. Yeah, you want if crude actually recovers above yesterday's close, which is eighty two thirty ish, then you know it might have some upshot. Other than that, every single bounce has been a seller. Every right, single bounce. See, okay. Yep. We are finally starting to get lower high, uh, lower highs and lower lows on the one minute in YM. Oh, now we're starting to get pushed. Now we're back to nice, and he's out. Michael. Nice trade, my man. And then we got we are still, we're still looking Crystal for thirty eight thousand two seventy two to Hold fail. Up. We're starting to push below that. All righty, guys. I am uh, real quick here in about 30 seconds. Uh, so minor nice. number coming okay. out here, four-week bill high, and our four-week bill bid to cover. Uh, minor, but I'm just to let even. you know, 30 seconds. Minor? Oh, Barely I'm, know her. I'm break even. <laughs> nice. Oh really my, nice. My, that's my a, that's the high of yesterday, wow. Dolby. 38,200 is my target, and I can't make more than 1,500 because that's 50% consistency target. So we're going to just have our profit here because we don't have a choice. Dude, oh, let's just see if we can get all of it. Uh, I'm going to lock myself out. Of out. Come on. No. I'm done for the day. I'm done for what? the day. Jump over to my screen. Awesome trading, I'm done for the day. Yeah. Yeah, JD, we'll stand by. Oh, so, I don't forgot about you. Three, three on the tree. Anybody know what three on the tree means? I do. Yeah. Come on, I Ann. don't. 
Rubazoo. Ready? Your shifter. Your shifter. Shifting gears. Yep. Yes, shifting gears. Oh, the tree. Yes. It's been a long time since I've looked at the stick like that. All right. So make it a lock. I have doubt. I have just now locked myself out. All right. Hey. Real quick, lock, hold, lock my, like, hold on, Andre. I gotta lock myself out here. <laughs> it's not me, it's JD. Guys, JD's hold on. Well, oh, JD can hold on. Guys, the, the lockout, the lockout uh, feature is a very good feature. A lot of people in here, it's working for them. Uh, yes. Whether you end on your highs or or you get to your high uh, high in P and L, and you're like, I want to lock myself out. Maybe I'll take one more trade. I'll only risk 500. I'm up 2,000, and then you get to 1,500. Learn to lock yourself out. It's it's a really good feature to use. It's on Top Step X. So right now, I will, I will have no anxiety. I go into a couple of meetings, actually meetings all the way till like the next four hours. Right after this, and uh, I will not be able to trade. So while I'm in the meetings, I'll have to focus on the meetings. So those that have a primary job. That it helps you with that if you're on your way to work and you're like, I want to put on a trade, but you already locked yourself out because you're already up. So needless to say, it's a good feature to use Top Step X only. Uh, and that's that's it. High watermark. Crude, crude still cruising to the upside okay. here. Crude popped about 50 cents in the last three or four minutes. We're 50 <laughs> points Dakota. away from, from getting our uh, getting our fill here. Dakota nailed that one. This is the nice thing, too. It's like daily range – like small time frames do not matter. They do not matter. Yep. So I think Dolby, that, was a, that was a good, good that was a good mm-hmm. call out, Dolby. I mean, on, on that, on that, uh, Dow short. Yeah. yeah. We're still Real sitting in it. Trade. We're going to wait. I might, I might get break we even te- here. We tested those. I mean, it was in the 20s and then it, uh, on the NASDAQ 17, 720s. Then it, Kind of pulled off that, pulled off that, then it popped up to the 41s, pulled off that, pulled off that. So there's a lot of retesting happening lately. I'm just, that's a lot. My point yes. is just there's been a lot of retesting lately. So, yeah, sticky price everywhere. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We got a four week big, big uh, four week bill yield coming in here. Uh, they were looking at uh, the four week bid to cover 2.9. Coming in actually at 2.9, so they hit that one. The yield actual bill high, they were looking at 5.2, coming in at 5.28. So basically unchanged here uh, for both of those. Back to you, Andre. Thank you. All right, let's take a b- brief pause here. We'll see. This is a bit of a plug. Keep an eye on crude here as we have popped about 60 cents in the last five, six minutes here. Dakota nailed that one. Yeah. He was long from 81.75, 10 That's times. Crazy. So you do the math there. Uh, JD, thank you for being so patient. Markets have been moving, and as you know, at Top Step TV, markets come first here. Trades come first, real trades, real P&Ls, real accounts. So, uh, JD, with that being said, his was that top 10, man. I think we got some movement there from yesterday. For sure, we did. Uh, and it all stems from this uh, XFA P&L list that we're going to take a look at real quick. We've got another Whopper on this one. list today. Mm-hmm. Gosh. You there, Dole? Right. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I covered one. I'm telling you. All right. Uh, yeah, a big winner on this list caused a shakeup on the leaderboard today. But let's start at the bottom. Jordan pocketed close to 20 grand trading the NASDAQ in gold. Uh, Yoon with just over 20 grand trading the NASDAQ. Ryan put up 21,000 trading the Nikkei. Uh, must be a student of the slow markets. Uh, and speaking of the Nikkei, Alexander, this is the guy I'm talking about. Alexander uh, made close to $26,000 trading the Nikkei yesterday. Here's the thing, though. Alexander was copying trades across three XFAs and uh, pocketed a total oh, of... Oh, my goodness. Man. $76,482 wow. in numbers, profits man. in the Nikkei yesterday. <laughs> Damn, that's yep. huge. Yeah. And uh, only- finally, our... Oh, what's that? Go ahead, JD. Oh, our leader, Shifton. Shifton pulled in more than uh, 38000 out of the S&P yesterday. All right. Let's That's get over amazing. to that top 10. Uh, what, si- what size? Yes. What size are they trading or number of contracts did they trade? Let's take a look. I mean, those big of traders that put up that big a day, average hold time, I don't know if you have that in there. Average position size. I don't know if you have that in your yes. spreadsheet. These are all important things. If we start seeing these numbers, understanding 
I mean, there's unless that's a lot of F and trades. Yeah, I'd on love a, to know what the average drawdown is. I would love to know everything about some of those trades. <laughs> I want to know. I want the trade. I want the trade report. I want their trades. I want his. I want their. Pull up a trade report right now for Alexander. Uh, JD's on it. Should have had it ready. Oh, it's all good, JD. We're gonna get below thirty-eight thousand two forty in YM. So Alexander was trading pretty heavily. Risk was inverted. Average winning trade mm -hmm. eleven hundred. Average losing trade sixteen hundred. But he had an eighty-two percent win rate. There you go. On forty on forty-three total trades. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. I mean, that's 43, just total uh, forty-three total trades. Forty-three total trades. Oh, with size scalping with size. Yeah. Yeah. Longest trade was a minute and a half. <laughs> Damn, carved all right, so he carved it up then. They basically just carved up the market. Car yeah. he, he, wow. That's what we call carving it up, Andre. Yes, sir. Yeah. Like turkey on Thanksgiving, Michael. <laughs> you ever you ever carved a turkey on Thanksgiving, Andre? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, what are you waiting you? for? You're almost you're you're almost de domesticated by the girl. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, right, talking about top carving top. a turkey. <laughs> What's up, Mike? Best way to carve mm -hmm. a turkey is without a knife. You can take that turkey and break it up with your hands. I was doing that uh, for the uh, cadets, naval cadets of Grand Rapids when I was with the VFW. And uh, somebody came in, one of the wives, and said, you know what? You don't need to be slicing that up like that. And uh, it was amazing. It's like magic. So back to you. Okay, are obviously they're oh, yeah. wearing silicone gloves? Yes. Of yeah, course. are you licking your fingers okay. while at the same time? Oh, this is uh, delicious. And toes. Yes. Those turkeys were hot. <laughs> they were very hot, yeah. Okay. But it worked. Hold on. How JD, cool. did we fi JD, JD, did we finish the top ten? Did we get that leaderboard yet? We haven't even started the top ten yet. Thank I'm just you, JD. About Come on. Up and down on turkeys now. <laughs> Come on, right. guys. We got, we're, we're, not go. done here. we're talking about turkeys. <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> Shout out Grand Rapids. What's up, Al Willis? If it's easy with your hands, it'll be easier with their feet, right? Uh, here we go. <laughs> Top 10 list. Bottom half. <laughs> All right. Starting at the bottom. Sammy dropped the 10th place after a 5K drawdown yesterday. Dylan fell the 7th after a $7,000 drawdown. Uh, Salman, who had that huge $51,000 day in the live account, moved into 8th place. He was in 116th place yesterday. Uh, Adam moved up to 7th from 9th after picking up 11000 across 3 XFAs. And Ivana rounds out the bottom of the bottom half of the list. Ivana dropped from second down to sixth after taking a thirty thousand dollar drawdown across two XFAs. It was a pretty heavy drawdown. All right, here we go. Nice. Drum roll, Eddie. Yeah. Kentucky Derby's coming up. I like it. All right. Uh, what? Starting, starting in fifth. Yeah. Uh, Wow. Alexander. Alexander. Okay, we'll start at the top. Yeah, Alexander <laughs> now has the highest account value at top step. So sorry. sorry. He's not a newcomer. Sorry, uh, yeah. Well, Dakota dropped about ten grand yesterday. Fell a notch after and after Alexander's massive seventy six thousand dollar day yesterday. Put him as uh, put him right at the top of the leaderboard. He's not new to the leaderboard though. He was in eleventh place yesterday, so he's been in and out of the top ten for a while. Uh, but he now holds the uh, highest account value at top stop. My gosh. So, but Dakota was up about three grand at last check, and uh, now he's in a long crude oil trade. So he's probably hot on Alexander's heels today. I'm not sure what Alexander is doing, but I'm assuming Dakota's up close to five grand already today. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Nice. Uh, Astounding. Big yep. time competition. I'm covering a second. Uh, so we're up 428 in this trade with one more running. It's just it's taking its sweet ass nice. time. So I'm, I I'm love your time stopping this. covers. I do. I love your partial covers, Dobie. I, I wanted to roll. They just make they make sense in a Thanks, slow JD. market like this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh my god. Eighty three percent short in the YM here. In terms of what uh -oh. else we got? Still nothing from Bostic. Let's have a real flair for okay, the dramatic entries here. Another Bostic. Then we got Collins, who's called tentative. I have no idea what that means, but Collins is a tentative speaker. 
Um, we Bostic is late right now. As we are coming up, we got about 17 okay. minutes left here in We're fast rolling. markets. Are seeing some moves. Dow turning. I mean, Dow, Nasdaq, S and P's. Dow really just turned over there nicely. Nice short there, Dolby. I played out very nice. Really pretty. Gold catching. A Wait, is gold. your target 200? Uh, I, I'm moving my target down. Hold on. I it was initially because of the. I'm trying to get to 1500, which is like the maximum I can make in this account. Oh, it's really starting to roll over. So yeah, the strategy yeah. would be the halfway point, which would be like 38,080, but I can't even make that much money because I'm in the trading combine. So I'm kind of capped on profits based on the consistency target, which is totally fine. Um, so I have to ad basically adjust. So yeah, the last one will be 38,108, which would be a, a, approximately the middle of the range. And that would also put me up like, yeah. I don't know, 1400 or 1450 or whatever. So we're just gonna wait. We're going to wait. Gotcha. FYI, the box I drew shows 38,150. Mm -hmm. That's uh, It just runs through five of the candles, five daily candles touch that price point in there. So just an FYI. Cool. Yeah, that sounds... Uh, we're doing great. It's a great trade so far. 87% yeah. short YM. 87%. Super interesting. Gold's still taking a peek to the upside here. <clears throat> Don't forget, we are, do have a five-year five year auction. Five-year auction at noon, and then we have Netflix earnings after the bell today. So action-packed day here at Top Step TV. Make sure you stay tuned in all day. The wire here. Um, Finally? No, not, not Bostick, but no. uh, we've got... Um, Iran missiles and drone attacks uh, does not yet change global baseline assumptions for the world's major economy. This is coming from the S&P Forex. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, like I said, blue, the hard blue thing about Ivy. Is, yeah, mm -hmm. but the hard blue thing about Ivy. I see we're talking. Go ahead, Mike. No, it's okay. I was gonna give Blue Ivy some props for seeing uh, for seeing things like as a real trader would. I I, I hear you. Blue Ivy was talking oh, nice. about um, copy trading as being a little cheating. I bring this up all the time. There's just something rub I have mm. with it because you can't do it. Li because if you can't do it live, I just I think it's I think it's woozy woo game. You're buying a multiple is what you're doing. You're buying multiples. It's, uh, it's, it's just more stupid. more risk. Yeah, I'm trying to focus on a larger time frame here. I don't want to get sucked into like a one minute or five minute chart because that's not yeah uh, for that's sure not why I place this trade. It's not why I place the trade. Yeah. So I don't want to get sucked into a small time frame if I'm trading a big Good time reminder. Frame. Yeah, it's, you have to Good remind yourself. That's a hard one because you want to get you know yeah. accurate and like over manage yes. the trade. But it's like there's nothing for me to do for sure at this point Great. other than wait. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we're sitting pretty. Let let the range do the range things. We already got four twenty eight out of it, so other other parts break even. We're just gonna chill. We might have to hold this trade into multiple segments. Who cares? We're doing it. We're doing it, chat. We're holding this sucker. Well, I did see someone just uh, perhaps come in. The green yeah, room here. I'm one here. of my favorite. One of my favorite things of all day. Just when he springs it. What is it? Yeah, me and JD are using the same code today, so we'll be in oh, and good. out like that. How's it going, Andre? Great, Jeff. Yeah. Great, great, great. <laughs> I love this. 21, 21 handles. I'd consider a $1 million account better than a 20, 50 accounts. A, $1 million account you can actually have live. In 20 accounts, you can't. So a $1 million account is also, to me, now you're talking trading size. Big traders that trade size are, to me, prefer. Well, not to me, to everybody. Professor. Anything outside the world of prop trading with the copy accounts, people would be like, what What would you say? Copy accounts? That makes no sense. Trade size. Increase your size. Increase your size. All right. Well, speaking of increasing size, let's increase the size of your brain, MP. We got a series wow. three question for you. Oh, oh yeah. there we go. Uh -oh. Were you studying last night, Michael? Yes, till 10. 
Good job. I gotta say this, and this book. Football. This book is not very long compared to other tests. So within a few months, we may well, run out of this. questions in there. So uh, saying you should pass it on the first try, Mike. And once and once no, a lot of questions. Well, because half the questions I can't ask on here because they're like things you need to sit down and do math, which doesn't make good TV. Um, no. But I'm running low on questions like this one. If James pulls it up. Which of the following describes a hedged commodity position? A, reduces the chance for profit. B, increases the need for working capital. C, transfers risk to others. D, all of the above. Ooh. Uh, Which of the following describes a hedged commodity position? I got position? an idea. Get your answers in the, uh, in the, in the poll here on chat, guys. Man, this is getting tougher for, for me too, but I think it's all of the above, but I don't know which of the following describes a hedged commodity. Well, you're going to reduce risk and, and then you also reduce your, reduces the chance for profit when well, you still, does. yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're lock you're locking in a price. It does. Okay. Yeah. Increase the need for working capital. I mean, you got to have a physical and you got to have the hedge. So you have more working capital. I don't know. A transfer risk to others. Yes. All above D. Okay, Michael's going D. I'm gonna go. I'm going A. I'm going A as well. Uh oh. I think. Uh, okay. Well, Paul I says. Am I am trying to find the explanation in advance of this, but oh, that means it's not all this. Still running over. Uh, it's just all, the, all the above. Damn it! I have so many things dog-eared. What is it, James? It is what? C. Damn, what? Transfers risk. We'll see other other get that. Yeah, and I see that's that. because of the that's because it's true that it reduces the risk, the chance for profit, but it might not if you're selling. So let's say you're long something, but you sell a call out way out of the money, right? What you're actually doing is increasing the size of the money that you have to uh, work with but you're transferring the risk to somebody else who will take that the oh, yeah, other side yeah, of that yeah, position. Yeah. Oh, so, I see. I see. I was thinking wrong. that I'm accepting the risk either way. So I don't I didn't know how the risk was being transferred transferred to someone else. I didn't think of it as it of someone's taking the other side of my of my trade. Yeah, well if you're hedging, you are you are essentially giving somebody else the opposite side of your trade in some percentage. Mm. I understand well, that. What I don't well, what what I don't understand is what was it what the two top ones are some about capital, more capital. Yeah, it reduces the chance for profit and increases the need for working capital. I think those it, are doesn't actually it though also and true. Yes. Oh, like I, I I, if I have a long it. position on or a short position on, I can't have one initial margin. I have to have two initial margins for both of those positions. So I have to have more work. Unless capital. you use an I option. Don't. No, unless you use an option, which always requires cash. And if you use the option and you are going long the option, then yes, it reduces your uh, potential. It, yes, it increases your working capital. Um, does your need for working capital, but if you go short the option, it transfers the risk. So it's not all the time. So what they want to do is make sure that answer is all the time, because yeah. if you've got a long put uh. or long, yeah, if you've bought a long put and you're long a commodity, somebody's bought the other side of that. So they're short the put and they have the risk. Right. So that's yes, sometimes a yes, sometimes B, but always C. Right. And also the key. Ah, word a okay. is always wait, say that again. OK, got you. Yeah. Always you got to be absolutes. Only series three deals and absolutes. So no, no <laughs> shit, Jack. That, that, that's interesting. OK, that helps me on the test because I got to read it like yeah. that. That's a good good point, guys. Thank you. And, it's a nice strategy, word, just a test taking strategy in and general. The last right thing, there. just remember uh -huh. the word. It said the chance of profits. It didn't say the amount of profits. 
Mm-hmm. No wonder you went to well, Northwestern. Well, the chance of profits. Man. No wonder you went to Northwestern. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I went to a state school. Your chances oh, yeah. stay the same. You just reduce the amount of profits in the case that it goes uh, way in what would have been your favor. But like the chance mm. doesn't change. Chance. Chance. So it's absolutes. You got to look at it from absolutes. In absolutes. Yeah, I think that's well, I mean, that's really that's a really hard question to parse through. Yeah, a lot of little sneaky sneaky wordplay going on in there. Yeah, this this test, yeah. man. This test is more about how you don't how you read than how you than what your actual yeah. knowledge is, base is. I feel is. like I could Jack, pass you, if Jack just taught me how to take a test. Jack, would you like to take this test for us? <laughs> <laughs> Jack, uh, test I have my ID. Is a, is a real skill. It's yeah. a real skill. It is. I suck at test taking some people are just very good at understanding the mechanics of test taking not one of them yeah but, exactly and but then, but then once they leave leave the test taking facility and they get on the street they ain't got any yeah. there we go. You get street smart they, they can't drop then boxes on then they're chasing like planes and, uh, drop boxes on <laughs> set <laughs> things on fire set things on fire <laughs> 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 There she is again. There she goes. Man. There goes Robert Plant, Ann. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where's of the 50 foot woman? Oh, my God. That's great. Oh. Reminds me of the game Rampage. Let's see if Anne Marie can destroy an airplane. The game was fun. That was a fun game. You, I am. My, my emotional state right now is like no anxiety because I can't wow. trade. Oh, okay. It's kind of, ex- oh, cause you locked out. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Cause you're locked out. Cause it's kind of fun. Not n- knowing you can watch the markets, but you can't trade it all. You don't, you don't have that, uh, devil yeah. on your shoulder or that the, whatever that yeah. speak kind of perceive something that's probably not there. You know, it's funny. It's a, a lot of, a lot of us have talked about locking ourselves out when we've had really good days, but I find myself locking out when I have made three bad trades in a row yep. and I'm saying to mm-hmm. myself, you don't know what the heck's going on. And I, mm-hmm. instead of going back to the pool, I go, you're done. And I really have enjoyed that feature. I've regretted it afterwards going crap. But at the end of the day, I'm glad it was there because it was very clear that I was not seeing what the market had to offer. I just was trading counter trend or whatever. So I've used it several times when, you know, I'm not seeing the market well. Yeah, I hear you. Starting to see some more sellers and Dow. It's really rolled over nicely here. S&P short. Nasdaq uh, bringing up the rear here. Crude starting to sell off a little bit. Nice out there. Dakota, nice cover. Yeah, we got 85% short this YM move. Let's see where this goes. Are we going to yeah. target 38? We're going 000? on uh, almost an hour in this trade. Good and whole it time was there. so well executed, dude. Kudos. Hat tip. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody giving you garbage and you stuck to your guns because you knew what you were doing. That's right. Believed in the trade. Yeah, and literally everything I saw was opening up to it. So good on you. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. And we locked in some profits. 428. Got a little bit, a little bit more to go. Oh, token mania! You got sucked up in the one-minute charts. I hate when that happens. It's yep. the worst. That's what I'm trying to avoid right now. MP, MP, you got to hand it to you with that lockout button, man. That was uh, off I know. the cuff. I love it. That was a smashing success. I <laughs> great move. Yeah, I had huge. no I idea it. it'd be such a hit. But, I mean, uh, people, want people it. freaking love it, man. They love it. I've been. You know. I've been trained for a while, and so a lot people of people in here that get, yeah. yeah. And then I'll, a lot of folks in here have been trading with Top Step for years, and they they give us great feedback. It's just a matter of how do we prioritize everything. It is great feedback. That was one I remember seeing. Rips was talking about a shot clock that made sense too, but just the the lockout feature in general, just like just get me out. Now we'll we'll have the ability. I don't know what. Don't what reverse this. Don't year, give them. <laughs> No, no, uh, per like, hey, lock me out for 15 minutes, maybe an hour, That's 30, or something like that. Oh, yeah. Like a little, dr- you know, or just for the whole day. 
Now, that's probably gives them options that then they're like, well, let me just see, uh, you know. So, yeah, when that comes on, just don't tell me. Don't tell me that that's okay, a new I know. feature. We don't need that option. <laughs> you know, keep it hidden. Be an Easter egg for Ann that she can't see. Oh, you can't see that. That's reverse, reverse Easter egg. Mm -hmm. Finally, Eddie, finally did the man get to the mic? Bostic didn't, but Daniel Pinto did, or Pinto, Daniel Pinto, president and chief operating officer at J.P. Morgan, um, and more and more have said, um, saying that there's a relatively high probability of no rate cuts this year, a uh, very, very low probability of interest rate cuts. So that's coming from uh, the big cheese over at J.P. Morgan. Back to you, Andre. Thank you, Eddie. We're starting to see similar messages out of people in the know about what, uh, what to come later this year. I mean, they're hinting at it. I don't know if the markets have been listening as close as they probably should be. 10 years still only 4.6. 4 4.63% in the 10 year. I know two years come around five, but they're kind of, we need to start listening a little closer. It sounds like one rate cut at the most right now. Obviously, it's all data driven, yeah. but we'll see. I did move my stop down to 38,225, and we are catching a little bit of a bid. So we might end up getting stopped out of this one for, I don't know, 400 bucks or something. So we'll see what happens. Well, there they are. We got Anne Marie, we got Dolby, we got Mr. Michael Patak here joining us for Fast Markets. Uh, here at Top Step TV, please hit like, please hit subscribe. We are getting close to 82,000 subscribers. For all the Bell to Bellers, you know, we hooked you up yesterday. Anne Marie, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always been a pleasure. Your energy, Love your every spirit, minute. your great trade ideas, and just your banter has been great. And even a little bit of a uh, little locker room talk there. He'll sprinkle along the way. We love having it. <laughs> Dolby, I will be seeing you next segment. Power players coming up. Nick T. I see Nick T in the green room right now. One of our live oh, fund has been crushing it lately. And the man to the upper left who has hit the lockout button, eh, capturing those profits, locking those profits. Mr. Michael Batak, do you have any words of wisdom for us before we kick it over to power players with Nick T? What's up? Well, I'm, I'm going to tune in. I'm going to tune in to Nick T because he's an up and comer. We always yeah, talk about up and cut. Well, we we we've talked about up and comers that became up and stayed up on the live top step live leaderboard. These are the ones that you want to follow uh, because they are the pro balls, of pro balls, <laughs> the professionals here that are on top of it better than all of us. Uh, give, given current market state, so keep keep an eye on tune, tune in for Nick T. Dakota, great trading uh, lately as always. Nick T. Great job going up the ladder of success. Nice work. Thank I'm you. locked out. I'm done.
Yes, one of our favorites is Michael just called him in the previous segment of Fast Markets, an up-and-comer here at Top Step. Nick T, welcome to Power Players. You are officially a power player, the funded trader, number 22 on the leaderboard. Nick is back to trade live, discuss the strategy and how he picks his levels. Earlier this week, Nick T climbed 27 spots up the leaderboard. Nick T, is this true? You climbed up 27 spots? It had to be your $7,000 day, right? Yeah, it must have been. Um, you know, I've been taking payouts and trying to consistently, you know, just be successful in this market. It's been tough. Definitely looks like we're having a bit of a regime change of buy the dip kind of being punished, at least for the last few mm, sessions okay. in a row where, you know, those those late dip buyers um, definitely have been kind of punched in the face at, towards the close. And I think I caught a nice short um, in the early part of yesterday's session, as well as into the close during power hour, kind of off that that same same area we're kind of sitting right now, that, that 711, 720 type spot on on the NASDAQ and you know, ended up riding it down twice, actually, in the last 30 minutes. Um, was hoping to break break new lows yesterday, but we didn't quite get there, but still caught a nice trade for about 50 points on, on NQ. Nice. Very nice. nice. Quick update from Dolby. I Dolby, I believe, yeah. Dolby, you covered your trade. I'm you flat. moved to stop down, locked in some profits. There was discussion uh, in the green room as to whether or not you're going to lock this account up. We might be seeing a little dip lower here. We'll see. Oops, I mean, I'm sellers, kind of getting yes. punished, believe it or not, for not. I mean, it sounds insane to say, like, oh, I'm up 846 and I'm getting Eddie. punished right now. Hey, but... Eddie, what do you got? Eddie, if you got anything, uh, please come Morris code in here. It looks like we got some movement. Something right. might have just hit. Oh, were you, were you seeing that? Eddie's gone. I got it. I got you. I think Eddie's uh, off right now. All right, we got Boston headlines coming out. Inflation's too high. We got still it. have a ways to go. Pathway to 2% inflation will be slower than people expect and bumpy. Hello. Uh, inflation's going where we want, there. but it's going slow. I'm comfortable with being patient. I'm not in a mad dash hurry to get there. I mean, he's re let's read between the lines here. I don't have a recession in my outlook. We won't be able to reduce rates until towards the end of the year. That sounds bearish uh -oh. as hell in these equities. He is telling us that maybe one rate cut, maybe. I and mean, we were we we're taking all these rate cuts off the table. So Bosick finally starting to speak an hour late, but definitely saying uh, maybe one rate cut, maybe. So heads up there. We'll keep you posted on if anything else comes out. Dow taking a tip, dip lower. Yeah, S&P is NASDAQ following suit. So here we go. I'm going to sell one. This is my last trade on this account. So I'm going to risk 150 to make like 200 and see if we just roll over here. It'll be the last trade in this 50K. And if, if, if this doesn't pan out, I'm just going to lock this one up. But let's see if we can get continuation to the downside here from this from this news. On NQ, looking like I'm getting I'm getting some exhaustion and some absorption here at the initial balance high, right around 680. So I guess, yeah, this is a, a good make or break spot. Why is that? Why is that, Nick T? Uh, it just, we could easily flow back into kind of the initial balance range and you know, kind of, ba I mean, just continue to balance inside the opening range. Hi, um, we got VWAP there. Looks like we're breaking through right now. Yeah, it's, Beautiful. it is not a happy camper right now. Beautiful. Yeah, there, there was a lot of absorption. And like I said yesterday, I liked selling off this level towards the end of the day. It just seemed like buyers were, you know, once we kind of lost that, we had that, that rip to like 780. Once they lost it, it came back in. I thought it was a no brainer short. I'm going to go to break even early because this trade is out of strategy. It was a tough, it's been a tough morning for me on, um, <laughs> at least in my live account. I, I am at a daily loss limit, so nothing there. But talk about a, a lesson in patience today because then yeah. shortly thereafter, I was, I was prepping for an interview. As, as you guys remember, I'm, I am fun employed right now, so I'm still actively in that <laughs> cycle. So lesson in, in a funded trader slash kind of doing this full time and to pay your bills. When you're distracted and you're focusing on other things, it's the worst time ever to be trying to trade, manage trades, and you know, firing things off. It's a it's a great lesson that that is you're you're not clearly seeing the markets when you're kind of looking and trying to do multiple things at the same time. So not recommended. <sighs> well, yes, you have to be uh, hyper focused on the markets, but yes, preparing for interview can definitely take you uh, out of the markets a bit, and understandably so. Is there any part of you, Nick T, that wants to go just full time full time trading? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I love doing this. It's pretty much been, like I, I, I've said this before, but it's it's really just how I've been paying the bills for the last, you know, six, nine months and been doing it very well. Like I said, this has always kind of been a, an active passion on the side, you know, making a little cash here and there since I discovered 
prop firms, but not in the, I would say, quantity and you know level of payouts that I've been taking over the last six to nine months. I'm sure if we ran those numbers, I'm pretty high on whatever list tops that might have as far as people yeah. that have <laughs> taken money out of the markets in 2024. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that. So I may kind of fall in and out of the top 10, the leaderboard and things like that as I take larger payouts, because until there is a more sustained, you know, income source in theory, then I'm taking money out because I got, I got, you know, uh, lifestyle to live. And I, yeah, you know, I don't incredible. care as much about falling on a leaderboard as much as I do paying my bills and taking care of my family. So yeah. I think your priorities I mean, in the right spot. I just think it's it's so impressive that you've kind of like removed the safety net on the on the trapeze, if you will, because you don't have a second a secondary income. So this is all trading all the time. So maximum responsibility, maximum risk, and you're just you're crushing it. It's so impressive to see. Yeah, keep it up, man. Thank you, keep guys. I'm glad to have you here yeah, at Top but Stop. It was, it's been a it's been a tough morning though, but you know, being able to kind of bounce back um, and focus on some of my my combine accounts and things that I've been working on. So I I know I I think someone was giving me crap for you know me wanting the lockout feature on Motivoy, which is my platform of choice, uh, the Top Step X feature. And of course, naturally, right after I kind of made that comment, I focused back when you guys did the five dollars a month like initial launch of the beta. So I had my five accounts that I've still just kind of been kind of sitting there using more so just to look at the tilt. Um, but finally passed those 50K, those 550K accounts on Top Stack X. So when those come, when there's, when the time comes to get some new XFAs, I will be excited to actually be more active in trading inside of that platform going forward for, you know, the XFAs and, and some of these accounts. It should be, it should be good fun. But I passed those and then passed three 150Ks. So talk about bouncing back, being patient and just, you know, a lesson in uh, as, as far as waiting for the right setups, because those setups came, le- came way later in the morning rather than me trying to knife catch right out of the gate, um, you know, at some at some levels that are, you know, a little shakier as we continue to the downside here. A couple more comments coming out of Bostic here. We can keep rates steady as long as the labor market holds up. He's uh, mm. It's looking like one rate cut at the most now. Let's 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 be honest here. I mean, Bostic is uh, Williams was saying it earlier this morning. Bostic saying it as well. I'm in. Uh, I'm in team no rate cut right now. You're in the no rate cut camp as well. Okay. For, you, for Michael right now, Patan. I'm on, I'm on hold, Jamie hold Diamond. Steady. Hold steady, hold steady for the time being. I don't think they're going to cut at all right now. I think they're. Doesn't sound like it. Boy, we were we, we were so wrong about four months ago. Exactly. I'm. Uh, I'm. And I, I'm feeling they're they're still wrong. So. <laughs> yeah. This is. I'm but they, but they love to go on their world shorts. tour here, their world tour and continuing to mouth breathe every day and, you know, just <laughs> just repeat the same things. And some days the market cares, some days it doesn't. So yeah. I saw your comments yeah. in the chat yesterday about Fed speakers, Nick T. I saw that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 80% yeah. short here in the YM. 50-50 across the board outside of that. But 81% short in the YM. Bostic is speaking. Well, we will keep those comments Current with you, the listener here, uh, as they come across the wire. Currently, we are seeing a, a bit of a pop here in the Dow. Nothing crazy. Um, very thin ladders in oh, the it's, S&Ps. It's, it's rolling right now. It's, it's, I think it's had a low. I just grabbed a short at 38,191 contract. I'm going to see if this is a continuation short to the downside. So let's see. Yeah, I'd like to at least this. see a retest here of the overnight low on NQ. You've got, you know, the five minute opening range low, you've got VWAP, kind of a, a consolidation of a few levels there. So I'd like to at least see it tested yeah. right now. I'm going to go to break even on this one. So since I'm kind of out of, out of strategy here and just trading like a continuation thing, I'm probably going to get a little bit more aggressive with uh, going to break even on trades just because I want to make sure that I'm not risking a bunch of money. So I think we can, uh, we're safe now in this trade. So we're just going to hang on to it and see if we can get that continuation to the lower. So it is tight, but, you know, this really shouldn't be catching a bid, ideally. Not that the market cares about These bearish energy. comments. Uh, let's be honest. These are bearish comments coming out of the Fed all day. I like that too, yeah. Uh, the, uh, the theme has been consistent. I think short side. Also, keep in mind, we're one headline away. So I think, and as yep. uh, Nick T said in the beginning here, on power players, that uh, there has been a regime shift, if you will. Market dynamic shift by the dip is uh, kind of out the window for the time being. Nick T, I think you said it perfectly. And uh, we're going to be in the range for the time being, but 
that may change with earnings coming out. We do keep in mind we do have Netflix coming in after the bell today. I did just see a graphic that all next week we got all the Mag Seven coming out next week. So buckle yeah, up, hang on say, your hat. Yeah, with earnings season, how fast that that mentality could change, especially uh, I don't I don't exactly know how. I would say lofty some expectations are for earnings heading into next week of some of the mag seven companies but you know if it's like anything in the past you know a little small beats as long as it's beaten raise i mean the market just will probably buy it right back up you got it it's kind of how uh oh how do i word this that's kind of how uh that's how the rules are if you will it's kind of how the game's played there so yes yeah. there is a natural bid to equities and where's quarterly earnings or money sitting on the sidelines that does seem to be a natural bid to the market. But yes, for the time being, short side does seem to be the play. We are I, am, some I am in the camp of uh, short Netflix to zero, even though I'm not going to do it. I just short am off the, the Netflix bandwagon as soon as I got kicked off. Finally, I'm sure most people in their 30s that are still sharing a password with a larger family organization here, uh, the second the password sharing kind of kicked us out of there, I am off team Netflix. So I, I would be happily if that company now goes to zero instead of Netflix to myself. zero. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Pulling thousands of thousands of dollars out of the market every day, going to complain about a twenty dollars a month subscription. I love it. I love it. Yep. We are starting to see some more sellers. If you have here in Nasdaq, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying it's it's unjust that they they kicked us off. It's BS. Give me my free stuff, yep. Netflix. You, you're, I'll the, uh, your just... entire the entire business yeah. was built on sharing passwords. Yes, it was. It was. How do you think? How do you think, think, you think you guys grew, it? Netflix? How do you think you guys grew? The old bait and switch. Uh, I'm looking for 38,159 to snap off. I Thank you, JD. I have a large candlestick there that had some volume that offered support before. So let's see yeah, we are, what happened. We are just stuck at this level right now. Now and the, the, uh, the NAS NAS just chilling. Yeah, I'm talking next to you. It's rolling. It's stuck, to, rolling? stuck to uh, BWAP here. Well, YM's rolling over, yeah. Clearly, I should put a, a Dow chart somewhere in my purview. I don't. I don't have one. I made space for it about four weeks ago. Yep, had to find some real estate on the screen, but finally did it. I added gold. I mean, that's a hey. That's an update. Update for me. It's been rocking and rolling, man. It's. Uh, I did. I did trade GC for the first time the other day. Made about a thousand bucks during Globex, and I don't know if I will ever do that again. <laughs> look at you I was, up, I was up eight i was up 800 i was down a thousand i was up two thousand and then i was like i'm done I'm taking a grand and not trading this oh. ever again right now <laughs> sorry exotic clarity was blacklist wants to know what is delta john if you're there to give us if you can be so kind and give us a delta update last we had oh about an hour ago we had plus 9300 in the es but we have seen some sellers come in so that number may have changed we are joined here by Nick T, one of our up and coming live fund traders. Quick update, Nick T, if you don't mind me saying, Nick T is taking a total thirty six thousand dollars of payouts from his live funded account. Ooh. I don't know if you wanted me getting that out there, Nick T, but I just did. I hope you're cool with that. Uh, yes, man, success. I, I we love am, it. it. Gosh, the uh, the number out of the XFAs, if you include that, is is pretty wild yeah, too. Lord. But. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's Plus been it's been a nice replacement if you were looking to do this full time. It's a nice replacement of a of a nice you know start to mm -hmm. start to somebody's salary. So I'm very thankful. I'm very blessed that I kind of I guess cut, not only caught the bug, but took very well to kind of learning things here and actually had some success. I know that's not always the case for everyone. I just yeah. some people just have a knack for kind of picking up the the day trading side of this world versus you know being long only or swing trading and things like that. I've just happened to have a lot of success of being in and out of trades within a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, I added a second short here. Uh, we're, be, we're still break even. So we added one at, I don't even know, um, approximately 38,182. So now we're short two at 38,185 or 186. We're already break even. Um, so we're just looking for a downside continuation here. That's it. But free trade, let it roll. I'm really trying to get that 1500 Any more mark. Headlines today. here. Any more headlines? Uh, appears that plastic has chilled out for the time being. 
We have this Collins tentative. Collins may or may not speak. I'm not sure if Collins a voter or not. Collins is not a voter, so the words do not carry as much weight as a Williams or a Bostick. So keep uh, one eye on that, but definitely not hyper-focused on that. We do a five-year auction coming out in about 50 minutes. Five years is a big one. Yeah, I think I'm going to get stopped out on this guy. Yeah, we're, we're flat. And on the on the longer time, not longer time frame, I guess, because tomorrow is OPEX. Um, but looking for, I'm still looking for a touch of SPX 5000 at some point today or tomorrow. I, I think it at least needs to be no kissed kidding. just based on option positioning for this week. So I'd be shocked if at some point in the next, you know, 24 hours that we don't touch that level. Hey, Nick T, I know that options plays a lot into your strategy reading the options charts and whatnot what can you please uh tell us a little bit of high keep it high level keep it simple but why are you looking to the options why are you looking to options so much to influence your futures trades uh for me it just shows me a lot of the time where market maker positioning and you know where they are kind of maintaining their their levels to be kind of gamma neutral on the options market but the the most simple way to think of this the basically just how they trying to think of this in the most simplistic way. Let me rephrase this whole thing. Cause I'm then we're going to go down to be like, I'm a fifth grader. There. Exactly. So basically looking at open interest and, you know, volume of options, um, on the SBX chain, you can start to see where these large levels of liquidity basically are sitting. So right now the largest level is sitting at SPX 5,000. So that just tends to act as gravitational pull on price action. It just will slowly, just like you may have looked at book map or even, you know, the liquidity that's sitting on a DOM and things like that, markets tend to gravitate towards those big pools of liquidity. So when you see these very large, you know, levels of open interest and um, volume of options, the market just tends to gravitate towards there. This is where Dolby, I know you're Goldman interns a lot of the time towards the end of each trading day, you may see, you know, those large, a lot of the time they tend to be round numbers. Um you know, the, the 50s and 100s uh, within the XVX op- options chain that just kind of naturally gravitate towards it. And we may kind of close for the day up, uh, you know, a dollar and change, two dollars, whatever, up or below that specific level. And it's basically these, these institutions picking up pennies in front of a steamroller, moving markets to those levels and making small amounts on individual contracts. But it causes these larger moves towards the end of the day as we as those options decay. Um, towards the towards the closing belt, basically. Yep. So I use them to just see where those larger areas of liquidity are and where price may drift throughout a trading session. I think it has more importance as we get closer to options expiration at times, just to at least have an understanding of where those levels are. There you go. So areas so, of interest, yeah. price, yep, price areas of interest. It's worked. It's the simplest way I can explain it, because even it gets down to a, a level of depth that I am not even an expert on. I just see big histogram lines and say, yep. great, liquidity is at X. I think that's about the level of detail that you need. You just need to know, right, just prices and general price interest. They want to know, CL Trader in here in the chat, what platform do you use to see options numbers? Um, so a couple of different ones that are out there in the space, but um, you know, I, I am subscribed to a service that gives me a lot of different things. It just just happens to be one of the many benefits of of joining certain certain ones where hey here's just a a, a visual representation of the options chain um so there's there's a ton you can use spot gamma there's um Gexbot, there's a million you go on twitter there's everyone trying to push a service they all do the same thing and they're all about they're all priced relatively the same so there's a ton out there but it just gives you a an idea of what's going on in the options world. I'm not a big options trader. I, to me, it's more throwing money at the casino, even more than futures is. Um, so I just more so use it to guide my decision making versus actually trading zero day expiration options. Because for me, I'd rather take a thousand dollars and go put it on a hand of blackjack. Personally, I feel like I have more control than <laughs> trying to beat the Goldman interns at the end of the day. The Goldman interns, those damn Goldman and Dolby. Andre A. yesterday worked for Goldman as an analyst. I had the question at the tip of my tongue and just could not squeeze it in there. Whatever. Uh, next he time, he NBA. will be back. He, he can't he will be back. He can't for those that were watching uh, Power Players yesterday, Andre A. from Edgeful, uh, we are going to start a relationship with him. Great session. It was. It was worked out well. For those that uh, have some 
report ideas, stuff that they'd like to see us uh, report back on, just different scenarios. You want to see what the data says, shoot them our way here in the next uh, week or two, and we can see if we can handle those over to Andre A at Edgeful and see if we can get some reports back on that. But for the time being, we are joined by our great up-and-comer trader, Nick T. As you see in the chat, Nick for a tick. Oh, man. I say that carefully, Nick. You gotta say that very carefully, or uh... you you definitely do. But that's a that's a running or a running joke that started in a Discord, and I have just been letting the name kind of continue to. Uh, you know, who doesn't love a good pun, dad joke, something like that? It just that kind of just works for for the space. So that's why, Nick uh, T, stick- Nick for a tick, whatever whatever you'd like to <laughs> refer to me as, because I have ha- I have been. A, a D for a T many times yeah. in this game. It's, and it's, uh, yeah, it yeah, it's, yeah, it's not worth it. I will tell you that much on a long enough time frame. Those be, doing that adds up. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Not, uh, uh, Chad's wait, what's Hope say? Like, what's the, like when you're with, you're within 10% of your profit target, just take it. You know, I think that's something like yep. that. 90% that's a great rule. rule. Yep, yep. I mean, like, because at that point you're risking everything for like like some pennies it's, it's just not worth it oh man i think ym is baiting me into a into a short right now ym well we are coming up to view app here we got view app at thirty eight thousand one two nine off those highs of thirty eight thousand. got called 317 mm-hmm. just target the view app george you gotta like that crude making some moves to the upside here up I mean, about really 40 nice cents range, 40 cents yeah. in the last 25 minutes A little bit of bounce. You know, I, I've gone break even twice so far, and I've gotten stopped out both times. If I had just let it breathe a little bit, I probably would have been able to get maybe another 200 bucks out of the trade. I just, I do not have good luck going to break even. I'd rather just risk like 50 bucks and go to break even. It's just like tip the market. Like, don't, don't, please don't come get my stop. The, the amount of times that I've done it, um, where it's it's moving against my entry, but it doesn't hit my stop. And then maybe, you know, I get out for a hundred, a hundred dollars or something, break even with a couple contracts on NQ. And then, mm-hmm. you know, my thesis was still right. And the yep. move then happens. It just took, you know, call it five to seven points against my my initial entry before the move actually happened. And I think I don't know. It, it'd be hard to kind of really measure how many times that happens versus how many times do I actually take the stop out. Um, right, you know, break even math, versus yeah. the, letting it actually hit my initial stop. But I mm-hmm. often feel like when I put it to break even, I end up getting tagged and the move does still happen. Yep. Yes, I well, know. What's, what's funny too is that, like, if the only way you can go to break even in a trade is if you're up money. So why would you get aggressively against your position and go to break even? Like, if the, if the trade goes dead against you, you never have a chance. Of going to break unless, even, so that means that your trade is in your favor, unless something breaks. Yeah, some something in the dynamic of the the reason you got into the trade in the first place changed. So there was news, yeah. there was something, and the market gave you a gift to get out, you know, at break even because yeah. it for some reason the the overall thesis has now changed. Where I right. now feel like the other way is the right decision. So unless your theory is that, you probably shouldn't do it. You should let your stops play out. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you know. It's, it's too easy as a trader to be like, oh, I just don't want to accept risk anymore, even though everything is still like uh, valid as far as the setup goes. Yeah. I do that. I would say I'm guilty of doing it more so on time stops where it's just like the move is not happening and I'd rather yeah. take another 10 minutes and reevaluate an entry. Um, and then, yeah, it's still the move may come right then. But uh, th- me doing it more for time stop versus like panic break even because I don't want to lose is is more like I've been sitting in this trade for 10 minutes, which, you know, usually for me is a long time to be sitting and still kind of waiting for the move mm-hmm. that I was looking for to happen. So that's that's more the situation where it's like, yeah, I'm going to cut this here. If, if I get the move shortly yeah. after, I can always reenter. Yeah. And that's part of like, you know, a system. So it's, it's one thing if it's a part of the system. It's another thing if it's just not a part of your system and you're just going to break even because you're scared. Exactly. Nick T, what's your trade? You said you're in a trade? You've been in this trade for 10 minutes? I didn't no. catch it. What was your trade? <laughs> no, not not right now. Um, oh, gotcha. I still do like the this kind of 700 area on NQ for shorts. We're just... 
we're just kind of stuck right at initial balance high right now and opening range high. So, you know, if we break back into opening range, you know, cleanly, I mean, we, I don't think we've had a candle cleanly close under opening range high right now, 30 minute opening range. So, I mean, if we do, I, I think that shorts, you know, a nice little reversal here back down towards previous day low is, is very plausible, at least on NQ. Yes, it's got a ways to go. Crude moving higher here. We're about six cents off the highs, trading 82.61. Really? High of $82.67, about six cents off the highs here. Might be coming on the heels of some comments out of the White House Economic Advisor, uh, Brannard. I'm sure the chat's going to get really fired up over this, but... Uh, oh, gosh. The Biden administration wants to keep gas prices in the current range. I'm just reading, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just clearly reading what... The headline is, and we've seen coal, we've seen oil move off that. Chat, go crazy after that headline. Go nuts, chat. But yes, administration wants to keep gas price in the current range. Oil starts seeing a move to the upside. After I'm gonna that. not make any comments on that. Again. Yeah, I know, I know. I I, I have to read it because that's what it says. But I'm sure the chat's gonna go like uh, dogs, like oh, raw meat. There we go. There we go. There we go. Had to read it. Had to spice only, up the chat a little bit. Only two things. Only two things get chat going: politics and ICT. Other than that, cool. <laughs> yeah. I said this in the chat yesterday. I still don't know what ICT is. I'm sure it's a concept that works with people. I just have no idea actually what it is, and I would rather not be educated by the chat. So, <laughs> no, the chat is. Uh, we love our people in the chat. Just go crazy in there. Luckily, the velocity of the chat moves so fast, you can't get really stuck on one topic in there because things change so fast. But we love you, chat. Keep it up. Yeah, I did have a good time interacting with, with folks in there yesterday. So thank you guys for the, uh, I guess, the the mod or admin credential there. Yeah, oh, you got the blue fun. status. Oh, yeah. You got, you, the, you got am, blue status, Nick. Check marks in the chat. Wow. We made it. Who cares about payouts, man? When you get that blue check I mean, mark, the, dude, that's, I'm you know, set. You made I am it. set. <laughs> Life's good. Life is good. Oh, man. I, I made a I made a joke. I have a buddy of mine who's a, a moderator in a Discord. I told him I was yesterday when that happened that I was coming for his job. Yeah, look out, friend. Look out, <laughs> he's on the move, man. Nick for a tip. Well, I hope they're kind to you in the chat. Your levels have been very good, and the reasoning oh, I've noticed the reasoning behind those levels has been have been even better. So keep uh, keep feeding those to us. We really appreciate it. And we're gonna hell. You're one for up and comers. We're gonna back your trades. And yeah, there was a uh, the. The opening range low retest yesterday, I think, was the would have been the home run. I, I called it out in the chat because you know you sometimes those levels that you give pre market it could be immediately invalidated because we're never going to get back there like we did yesterday. Right. But you know, in real time, I think you know maybe that's where with uh, with the top sub TV team we can find a good way to you know get that information into you guys fast. Love hate Nick all ears. Yes. We can talk offline about that. Yeah. Nick T. But uh, I know you're, yeah, you're a pretty smart dude, logical. Yes, we'd love to get your input on that. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, we'd love to get your input on how, like, we could streamline that information. Because we're, yeah, we're pulling levels from, I don't know, Dolby's, you know, Dolby's on this one, 50 different sources, if you will. 50, trying to find yeah, a way to centralize it, visualize it, so we can pull them quickly and keep them current and updated in real time. Hey, Nick T, they're saying that we look alike. Do you see any resemblances between us? I mean, beard... Beard, hat, good-looking guy. I mean, we're, I think, yeah, I get it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go, Chad. They've been staying forever. I'm ignoring it. But finally, they've broken me. Uh, we have about 15. Eh, not even, we got 13 minutes left here in Power Players. Thanks again for your time, Nick T. Dolby, did you take that short again in the Dow? Because we are buttoned no, up against VWAP uh, here. No. Okay. No. What did you say VWAP was? What number? VWAP, VWAP uh, 38148, where we currently are sitting right now. 148. 38148. Cool. I, I swear, man, I come on the show, the market just stops moving. You know how many people oh, say come that? Come on. Guess, you know how many guests come, come on, on here and say that? It's so funny how you people <laughs> feel so responsible. Dolby, they come on here and they feel responsible for market movement. I love it because it takes the heat off I mean, of us. <laughs> it it yeah, just right? seems like, I guess it's just, it's the logic of like you're, you're on, so you kind of want to take a trade. Yeah. But then you're yeah. just sitting here. It's just like, there's nothing. We're not moving. I can't even take one. And it's like, it's I my fault. It. Why? I'm, this is, I love I, it. I jinxed it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when our guests come on, the, they think they jinxed the markets. I love the it. Fed it takes the heat off of Dolby. Watching, the Fed's clearly watching my levels like they were watching Dolby's a few weeks ago with his tinfoil hat. 100%. Uh, so yeah. good. All so right. Hey, just freeze the market. Can still busting higher here, guys. We are up about 
well, 80 cents in the last 30 minutes. For some headlines God, I want to press the sell button headlines. so bad. God, I want to press the sell moving, button though. so bad. I'm All right, here we go. Bostic on. rate cuts are likely by year end. There you go. Rate cuts are likely by year end out of Mr. Bostic about four minutes ago. Y'all still okay. selling off here. I'm, oh my God. I'm, I'm locking the 50 K account. I'm just getting, I'm getting itchy fingers to grab shorts out of, out of strategy. However, if I had held that three lot I had to completion, I definitely would have had my 1500 that I wanted. So that's, you know, kind of learning. Oh, here it to, goes. Oh, it's melting lower. Here we go. Wow. Hello. What happened? <laughs> what happened? What happened? What happened? Uh, and Q right through overnight low held it. and DWAP. Should have just held it. And this is where yesterday's close was kind of holding firm. So what price was that? Right around six, 650, 648 was like the roughly kind of the low at the close yesterday on NQ. Where I was, I was trying to get like another twenty points lower. It just, it just didn't quite break that level. We are moving through now, though. Yep, man. If I just kept that lower. runner. All right, looking for headlines what if we have any here. Day. We are seeing that gold, uh, the gold pop. Not so much in. Or no, sorry, gold. Yeah, gold's up a little bit, but this might be on the Bostic. Bostic did say there will be a rate cut likely at the end of the year. Bostic leather rips, man. Uh, Is Bostic a voting member? He is a voting member and uh, likes to hear, likes to said, likes the sound of his own voice. Definitely not afraid to speak. Yeah. All right, we are above 2,400. Above 2,400 here in gold, catching a bid, moving here higher. Dow, S&Ps, and NASDAQ a little bounce with that after that sell-off. Someone someone needs to give the Fed their own network so we can just tune in because they're since like seven of them are talking it's Monday possible. through Friday every day. They are so just chatty. Live feed constantly of, of their speeches, yeah. symposiums, panels the that they're on every day. C span for the feds. Yeah, we did get to middle of range of YM and bounced. So yeah, we, I don't know what that means. Right back up. But I am probably going to try to hop into shorts, but on a 100K account instead. I don't think this is going to hold, to be honest. Not with if CL is still going to be pumping, then I'd have to imagine that that's yeah. going to put pressure on indices. So let's see if we can find some shorts in the YM. Taking a quick peek at ten-year yields because we're always going to keep one eye on that ten-year uptaking four point six four percent. Wow, S and P's harsh turnaround. Wow, all harsh turnaround in what all of the bounce. equities. My oh, goodness. Crap. Yeah. What so I mean, reverse. it looks like for future for future levels here, that 650 is slowly building into kind of the top of the low volume node for this that. new balance zone that we're establishing in. I think you nailed it there, Nick. Man, that was a crazy move. We that just was shot just... down and shot back up within like two minutes, two three minutes. Yeah, that was a very aggressive uh, reversal. Move. See profit. Yeah, take that would have been a. I was say, Dolby, that would have been a trade where if I was in it and I didn't have an initial take profit target on it, I would have immediately gotten, you know, ran back over and probably only gotten out for a few points in a kind of panic yeah. flatten. That's why it's important right to have a, a profit target right there. Yep. Stop some profit targets. I am going to try some shorts, though, on this 100K account, just above the five-minute candle. We had we did have that five-minute consolidation before. I'm going to see if the bottom of that is going to act as resistance. Everyone in chat is saying teleportation. That was a fast move there, chat. That was wild. Not gonna lie. Was, uh, that, was that was pretty brutal. damn fast. That was I mean, it was fast in the YM. I can't even imagine what it looked like in the Ed Q. That must have been super fast. Yeah, we went Q. right back to uh, where that sell-off started. Yep. Hardcore reverse. Good luck yeah. to you. Lots of big volume bars too on the one minute. Yep. That was a real move. Real ass move. That was a real ass. That was a real. <laughs> Good call. Uh, here we go. <laughs> we got you. Don't you like that one? Uh, it's seventy yeah. percent short in the YM. That's what we had a delta, delta kind of unwound back to neutral. Look at the ES about plus eleven hundred as of twenty minutes ago. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this short. I'm I'm gonna trade this thesis I got. Give me Let's give me that bounce we- YM and let's let's head back down again. Keep in mind, we do have that five-year auction here in about 22 minutes. What the major expect to happen, but it has been known to move the markets. Yeah. 
everything kind of moves the markets right now, it feels like. Yeah. Seems very just uneasy. Like there's not a ton of confidence, I think maybe is the word. There's been times when it seems, at least on Q, it it almost is is like when, uh, like right before news, there's just times of illiquidity where it just is very, very like jumpy this week. And we're talking Mm -hmm. during RTH. So not even, and not even before a Fed speaker or whatever, it's just there like normal price movements it's just it's very very jumpy there's a there's more of a spread too i've been noticing at least half half a point here and there three quarters of a point which you don't always see you know at, at any given time during the day on nq but i don't know that's that's my only explanation yep. for it it just seems a little bit more liquid to this week yeah yep it's i mean twitchy. what i do appreciate yeah it is it is very twitchy what i do appreciate though is that we've been able to kind of talk about and verbalize the change in market state because you know two months ago it was by the dip all day and then all of yeah. a sudden it switched and we still get to talk about it and kind of you know rationalize what's going on which i think is you know great content for for traders is you know market state does change and we get to talk about it and try to point that out and it's it's happened it's way way different than it used to be way different than it used to be I wouldn't mind Before, short the like, rip being yeah. back. You just you just get more mm-hmm. defined rotations. You get two way price action. So because the natural bid in the market, and then selling rallies consistently, you just kind of get a much better. It's a trader's market suddenly, and this is this is the type yeah. of market like going back to October where I did exceptionally well and took some very large payouts out of the market. And you know you get times when it's just kind of slow grindy, and it's just. Yeah, you can buy dips, but it's just it's not necessarily my my style of trading just because I tend to fade moves and fade different levels, fade rotations to different areas in volume profile that are um sorry, uh lower volume nodes and things like that within the volume profile that are just look areas of reversal. So when we get those, it's great. When it's not is when I tend to struggle. All right, fellas, we got a few yeah. minutes left here in Power Players. As always, Nick T, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're starting to see those sellers come back in the equities. Boy, this is uh, we are ripping around here. I'm not seeing any headlines. I'm in. Yep, I'm sh- I'm short one thirty eight thousand ninety five. We we broke like a low one minute candlestick. I'm gonna see if this kind of plays out. This is a little uh, Max Maserati trick. I'm so happy he's coming back on because I'm gonna pick his brain about how this works. But I think Maz I, I really is gonna be on so today. Far. The Maz will oh, be yeah, on today. At, uh, we got a stacked show. Really good guests. Yeah. All the way. We also have a new segment called Maximizing with Max Maserati. Did not know we got a Ooh. title for that. I like that. <laughs> Maximizing. Oh, that very with, nice. Very, uh, yep. Maximizing with Max Maserati this afternoon, 1 p.m. Central. Real quick, we got Top Quiz coming up next. Jack, Vanessa. Hey, at the top of the. Yeah, get those co- uh, group coaching questions in here. Pin to the top of the chat here for Coach Robert. Ask about top stuff X, ask about some algo stuff, data stuff, anything you want. Get those questions in here for JD and Coach Robert. All right, fellas. Well, we do have a top quiz coming up here shortly. Nick T, it's been a pleasure as always. Don't be a stranger around here. Let's have you on a little bit more regularly. You bring really good stuff. Please keep pumping those levels. And hey, if you don't mind, let's talk offline about how we can streamline the process for grabbing levels. It sounds like you have mm-hmm. some ideas and uh, we'd love to talk to you about that. So let's chat Maybe after the close. I'll ping you somehow, some way, but uh, yeah, I really appreciate your time. Dolby. I will see you later today on power players, the power players, so power excited. hour, power hour with Zach Anthony. Hopefully this guest remembers, actually knows our name when we have him on with us and <laughs> power uh that was yesterday yeah yeah that was a that was a doozy i knew it the whole time there's no chance that kid knew our name but he's i love justin Worline. he was a good sport about it that was that good was yeah it was yeah. good thank, anyways, it thank you guys so much interview. yes that was the bar, ball busting questions around here nick t thank you so much nick t thoughts for the rest of the day trading wise we do have that five-year auction uh we do have some netflix earnings coming out what are you looking for moving into uh you know the afternoon session here in uh yeah, on this Thursday, continuing continuing to balance, probably just a little bit lower. Like I said, I would continue to look to sell the seven hundreds, the low seven hundreds. Uh, look for balancing back, kind of around that yesterday, previous day's low. But if we keep getting absorbed right here at this six fifty level, I mean, we're gonna just probably continue to kind of hang out here. But I'm looking for further downside. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I do know your both of your names, and <laughs> you know, I, I but I still don't know what Upstart does, which is what that little bit yesterday kind of reminded me of on CNBC. <laughs> if anybody remembers like, that little bit that. of uh, of gold that occurred. I saw that. Thank you very much, Nick T. Dolby, I'll see you later this afternoon. We got top quiz Hell coming yeah. up next. Uh, that was very enjoyable. Nick T, you'll see you talk, talk soon. Uh, everyone, top quiz coming up next.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to Top Quiz. It's Thursday, which means I'm joined by Vanessa. Vanessa, how goes it today? It's still morning for Fantastic. you, right? You're in... Yeah, it's almost 10 o'clock here in Vegas. So, uh, yeah, it's great, though. It's a great 10 o'clock, I guess. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's kind of damp and dreary here. Uh, but these questions won't be. Remember, click that link to figure out how to get into the quiz. It's four multiple choice questions. If you get three or four right, you are entered into a raffle for an opportunity to win one of 50 free resets. The top five who answer so quickly and so right, they will also get resets. The questions are a hodgepodge. Just be sure to answer them on your device because that's where they pop up. Me and Vanessa, we're 2,000 miles away from each other, but we're also uh, delayed by six seconds coming to you. So you'll want to answer on your device. And with that, I saw a pretty good one. There was a name that I saw pop by that was like, you, you Jack ask. That was pretty good. <laughs> that, I love it, the creativeness of our traders. <laughs> I do too. And a name like that will not get you blacked out on the uh, spreadsheet. You're going to have to be a lot more inappropriate than that. That's not a dare. Don't do it. All right. Are you ready, Vanessa? I feel like it's kind of a dare, <laughs> but I'm ready. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, I just black it out for now, unless it's something I, I will not pick you if it's something that really crosses a line. It would make me yes. scared to ever meet you in real life. But like, for instance, I saw like both of these go by. Okay, whatever. Okay, let's get this started. I did the technology background today. That's what all those nodes are. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> We've asked before, but whose private jet did Anne Marie chase down a runway? Was that Willie Nelson, <sighs> Neil Young, Robert Plant, or Sir Paul McCartney? I feel like chicks dig Paul, but I want to say Willie. I have no idea. I don't know if Willie can get on an airplane. I think he drives around in a bus. Uh, the answer <laughs> is uh, Led Zeppelin's lead singer, uh, Robert Plant. That, I feel like I saw a brief moment when she said something about loving Led Zeppelin or something. And I was like, oh. yeah. That's still just like... That's the wildest story I've heard. Uh, to Turnty, Jace, Amber, Black Goose. Okay, that's pretty good. And the worst <laughs> is in fifth. <laughs> Somebody says, nice trading question. I never said these would be trading questions. Everybody about... always is on yeah. that in the chat. <laughs> like, it's a break. If you don't like it, go eat a sandwich. <laughs> like, it's the, just a little the, break. <laughs> right. The, the next one involves some trading. Okay, oh. question number two. <laughs> Which of these options positions would could theoretically lead to infinite losses? Short puts, long puts, short calls, or long calls? You trade a lot of uh, options, Vanessa? <laughs> no, not even, not even a little bit. <laughs> we'll go diamond. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> The answer ah. is short calls. And now I'm Seems waiting. Again. Now I'm waiting. I was waiting for someone to ask short puts question marks. No, <laughs> not infinite because the stock can only go to zero. So you do have hmm. defined losses in a short put. All right, let's go on. But first, let's see, Amber 33, who dat? Algarve Magic Glider. And I saw this name in here. Um, whoever this is, how did you do it? <laughs> Witchcraft. Yeah, I don't I don't know how they got that many letters in there. All right. <laughs> Let us know in the chat. <laughs> What percent of answers do you need to get correct to pass the series three exam? 
Ooh, I might know this. 50, 60, 70, or 80% correct? I think it's 60. I think it's the diamond. I think. I hope. You gotta up your expectations. <laughs> I think my boss a little is bit. also taking this, so maybe. Yeah, you need actually a little bit more than that. You need oh, 70%. No, no. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it. Yes. Shoot. I'll try to pay more attention. <laughs> How are those questions going? I feel like, well. Yeah. No. <laughs> I will. Uh, I have a note. I don't think I'm going to give it on the last question, but we're good. Okay, cool. Let's see who knows okay. this. Okay. Not going to make things more complicated. Not a lot of update right here. Okay, we got one more question. And this was mentioned if you were watching that. earlier. So I guess it's technically trading. So here we go. Last question is, what is the name of the club in Chicago that Andre claimed he has not visited since June this morning? Is it Spy Bar, Tau, Neo, or Fuddruckers? I have no idea. Maybe Spy Bar that, I don't know. <laughs> well, you don't even live in Chicago. There's one of them in Vegas too. That's a hint. Oh, Tau? Yay. Yes. I know that one. I saw Busta Rhymes there. <laughs> was he speaking very fast? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, hey, he Dolby in the green on room. At nine? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Dolby, could you type a little bit louder? Or whoever's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you were saying Busta Rhymes? Yeah, he was supposed to go on at nine, and he didn't go on until like one in the morning. And I was like, I have responsibilities tomorrow and these heels are a lot for that oh long goodness. of a time. Like, uh, yeah. I was like, know your audience. We're older. <laughs> like, he is pulling a, uh, who is it? Lauren Hill. Who's always <laughs> famously late. <laughs> who that magic ladder, Amber 33. Great job guys. This... Yeah. I love this discussion here. Uh, cool. We are done with the quiz day. Sorry, I'm, th I'm thinking about something else with a, with a question from earlier. I should focus being on air. All right, those are winners for today. Stick around. Uh, Vanessa, always a pleasure to see you. Big crowd favorite. You're, we got to have you inter interview Max Maserati sometime. Uh, two of the most upbeat people yeah, ever. He seems so delightful. And like the hype that's around him whenever he's coming on or right before he comes on, I eat it up. I'm like, oh, this man. <laughs> Yeah, and he's going to be on later, 1 o'clock Central. First, we got shoulder tap and group coaching, so stick around. We'll be back right after this.
Oh, welcome back. Glad you're still here. Welcome to Shoulder Tap. And it's time to share some success and, of course, time to avoid some failure. So let's bring in our risk manager, Mick, to tell us who's doing good, who's doing bad, and ooh, who's doing ugly. Mick, good afternoon, sir. How are you, buddy? What's up, Eddie? I'm good. How you doing? I'm fine. Having a great day here in the uh, the wonderful town of Chicago. And uh, what do you got for us today? Let's Let's get into this. Yeah, we've had beautiful weather here in Chicago this week, uh, minus a little rain, nice uh, nice warm weather. All right, so Eddie, this has been a super exciting week for me, uh, the risk team and for cool. Top Step, a uh, lot of good stuff. So I'll start off by following up kind of something I was talking about yesterday. We had um, one of our traders that I featured yesterday, Salman, actually had made almost $52,000 in their live account yesterday. You probably remember hearing about that. Uh, yeah. They wrote out a at a 10 lot for some big, big profits there, but it was a string of all their trading together uh, yesterday to put them at 52,000. Um, other exciting stuff from yesterday was we had our highest number of XFA to live call ups in a single day yesterday. We called up 17 people from XFAs to a live account yesterday. I think our our prior record for most call ups in a day was 13. So, um, Tells me we got some good traders here. We got some people mm -hmm. really in tune with what the markets are doing, and uh, and certainly you know getting a little payback from the last couple of weeks where I had mentioned uh, for anybody who was viewing the last couple of weeks said we've actually had a deficit. Uh, I talk about how many people we call up, how many live accounts we close, and two weeks ago was the first time we had more people losing live accounts than we were actually calling up to the live accounts. Same that we had the same thing last week. And then this week we're, we're well ahead with way more call-ups than live account offboarding. Uh, yesterday gave us a pretty good goosing of 17 to get us to 23. So hopefully uh, some of the people that are viewing right now were, uh, were in that group of people called up to live yesterday or this week. And if you are, you know, drop us a hello in chat and tell us how well you're going to trade in the live account as you uh, make the transition over to our prop firm. Um, as far as today goes, Got some good P&Ls on the board today. Uh, big shout out to our, our fearless leader, Michael Patak, up three grand, trading the NASDAQ this morning. Um, we've got Dakota. He's up, uh, I think, like four grand right now. At one point, was up 5,500, but he's in the money. Um, and uh, he also had a kind of a banger day on Tuesday, making over 17 grand in his live account. So uh, really good yeah. stuff out of, out of some of the, the bigger names here. Uh, but with that, Let's talk about some new names that we haven't talked about before, uh, and let's dive into these trading cards. I want to pull up the trading card for uh, Tian, please. Tian, got it. So this is uh, I'm. I'll spill the beans right now. This guy's getting called up to a live account today. He's going to be one of our live accounts today. <laughs> Ooh. Tan, Tan has been trading in an XFA for 25 days, absolutely killing it. Uh, they are a small trader, a singles hitter. Um, their average daily P&L is 450 bucks, 100% um, winning days on 24 trading days, 76% winning trades on those days. I mean, pull up this trade report and tell me you don't want this guy on your team, Eddie. I'm looking at it right now and I'm seeing um, well-managed, no greed. Um and you know what? Base hit, base hit, base hit. And this is proof in the pudding that small profits do add up. And look where he's going right now, folks. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, really good stuff. It's it's all base hits. There's one home run here. Um, usually their holding time is about 13 minutes on average on their winners. Uh, there's one day in here. They only have one day that was over the four figure mark, and that was back in March, about a month ago, where they made three grand on a three lot. Um, and they caught a piece of the trend for the day and let it run there. Um, they had an hour and 29 minute, hour and a half hold time on that trade. But overall, you know, this person's just coming in and they're jab, jab, jabbing. Um, when we have these singles hitters, oh, phone's ringing. When we have these singles hitters, we see pretty consistent profitability, uh, higher winning trade percentages, higher winning days. And I always talk about how like this is really good stuff. It's a great foundation. And if you have a foundation like this, 
you should be able to scale your business. You know, if it's working well, you're making on average a couple hundred bucks trading uh, ones and twos, you know, you go to twos and fours and then that average daily P&L increases um, if you're not changing anything. So we're always talking about scalability. Look at what they're doing. They have scaled their trading. You can see early on in the uh, in the account, Eddie, these winning days are all about $200, $200. And then you start to see these $500 winning days and you can see that they've increased their position sizing a little bit during that time. So this is a classic example of things we talk about, like the beautiful uh, scenario where you're consistently profitable and you can scale that to therefore generate bigger profits. And, and that's exactly what they're doing. We're going to call them up from the XFA to a live account today. We hope that they continue on at the rate they're going, uh, continue yeah. taking payouts. They took a lot of payouts here. And you know what? They're taking big what? payouts too, uh, which I which is a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. Maintaining kind of a low account balance in this XFA with all the payouts that they're taking. Uh, you know, before I made the call to call this person up to live, I do, did look at other accounts to see, you know, okay, they haven't had any losing days in this XFA. So I don't know, I, this one account in particular, I don't know how bad it could get when it gets bad. But I looked at all their other trading combines that they've had, which I don't remember there being very many of them um, since they've been with us since October of 2022. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're grinding it out in all these accounts. They're not having blow up days. So I'm pretty comfortable calling them up with a, a low, uh, an account balance on the lower side. So they're going to start live without a huge pile of money. They've already pocketed, you know, a good pile of money in, in their, uh, through their payouts. So, you know, this is just good stuff here and uh, definitely going to be an awesome addition to the team. Right. You know, what's uh, great, JD, just let me know here uh, that TN is on our hot streak list, 24 day win streak. 10,796. Yeah, That's no great. surprise there. Is he at the very, very top with his 24 days? Or do we have any other higher no, win streaks? I don't Just think curious. so. I think we got... Uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's Tien's currently tied. So uh, our top trader right now is Che. Che C is at 27 right. days. And then we have Arian, Petrus, Tien, and James all at 24 days. Those are our top five. It's tough, So man. impressive. It's tough. I yeah, I don't know if I ever had a winning streak like that. Uh, that's pretty damn good. Definitely something to write home about. All right, Eddie. Um, yes. Good stuff here. Let's move on. Yep. Let's talk about. Let uh, us. Let's get the card for justice, if we could. Justice. Let's see here. Pulling it up. Justice is one Yar, of those people we called up. For <laughs> Yar. Someone we called up from XFA to live yesterday. Uh, trading out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, really good metrics here. Really good metrics here. Uh, called up from XFA after 13 short days. Um, but that's because they've got killer metrics here. 85% winning days, 88% winning trades. They're taking on average only two trades per day, which I love. They're super selective. Um, you know, They'll have the swings. You can see best day here is thirty four hundred bucks. Worst day is three thousand. So they have hit that daily loss limit, but um, you know they're able to uh, they're able to rein it in and do pretty well. Also, someone who's taken a nice healthy payout uh, in their account. We love seeing the payouts. A um, couple things here that could probably improve, and it's a risk reward. It's right there. They're taking down 603 bucks per contract on the winners and risking almost 900 on the losers. To have a risk reward that's kind of lopsided like this, you definitely need to maintain a high winning trade percentage, which they are. They're at 87, call it 88% winning trades. Um, I really like that a lot. I do know that it's hard to maintain that high of a winning trade percentage. Um, you know, with any strategy, but they're doing it well right now. But you know, just consider the the risk reward. If you can make tweaks to that, then all the other metrics here change. Bottom line, that average daily P and L though uh, will will uh, definitely get helped out a, a bit there. Um, I also like that their hold times here, Eddie. You can see they're hanging on to the winning trades for ten minutes. They're cutting the losing trades quicker than five minutes. So 
um, very impatient with the losers, which is something that's, you know, a characteristic of, of a really good mature trader. And based off what we're seeing, you know, calling them up to live. So we like it. We want to continue to see it. Coming up Anything to the majors. Want, coming up to the majors. Anything you want to comment on here? Consistency. Uh, very wild. Total trades just over two. And that, I'm scrolling down here. That's about it. Once again, yeah. um, they did hit that home run, but most of these days were base hits. Um, I do see that the one day that they, you were mentioned minus 3,000, uh, they hit it right away. It was they, they were in the market for a little over 12 minutes, uh, took the loss, probably got stopped out, and didn't have that revenge uh, trade sort of uh, lingering uh, sitting on their shoulder. Come on, get back in. You'll get some of this back. Called it a day, threw in the flag, came back the next day. Beautiful. Five minutes, got that back and more, uh, even on uh, just one trade. So that's um, the beautiful thing about having the daily yeah. loss limits. You know, you it may, it forces you to call a losing day a losing day at whatever, you know, based on the account size that you choose where, you know, without loss limits, I know I'm guilty of it. Any other trader, you know, when I was trading full time, I didn't have loss limits. You know, it's if I wanted to. I'll just say uh, the extreme thing. If I wanted to risk the whole account, I could risk the whole account. So the loss limits are great. They hit that daily loss limit of 3000 that one day, and then they got payback the following day, made 3400 But, uh, you know, those speed bumps are all there for a reason. It helps with money management. Um, I yeah. always encourage people to come up with their own personal loss limits. You know, I've exactly. mentioned it before. In the live accounts, I have a lot of people that say, hey, can you lower my loss limit? I always love getting that, uh, getting that phone call. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned that one day that they – the only day they hit their daily loss limit here, the $3,000 daily loss limit, was the one day that they traded um, bigger than any other days. They're kind of a right, one lot, field, two line. lot trader. You can see, you know, we've got it on the card here. Average, average one trade at 10 lot. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's. They're trading up to six lots on average, but uh, the one day that they lost, they had they had quite a bit of leverage on, and and kind of that that always seems to be the um, the the case is the first day you up your size tends to be a losing day. I've seen that you yeah. know with myself with other traders and stuff. It's um, it's not fair, but it happens no. anyways. Right. Uh, that, that's why we. Why I really think when you increase your position sizing, we've got our scaling plan here at Top Step. I think it's great. If you have X amount of money in your account, you should be able to trade X amount of contracts. I'd encourage traders to considering taking it a step further than just what we offer. You know, our scaling plan is super simple, very straightforward. But I always thought, and actually someone told me about this, and I firmly believe in it. It's really important to base your position sizing and increasing your um, your position sizing based off of consistent profitability. If I'm consistent for you know consistently profitable for two or three weeks, Eddie, then I have real good justification um, as to why I should increase my position size if I am comfortable doing so. The dollar amount in your account isn't always good justification. Uh, one. Goofy extreme example of that would be, okay, I'm a new trader. My rich uncle gives me $100,000 to trade in my trading account. I have all this money I can put up towards margin and I could say, let's, okay, I got a hundred grand in the account. Let's trade 50 lots. Well, if I'm a new trader, I got no business risk uh, taking 50 lot trades. So the consistent profitability is really something that if you can see that in your own trading, you should be pretty comfortable increasing that position size uh, as long as you're, you know, comfortable assuming that kind of risk, but it's those kind of uh, justifications that I think everyone right. should give, have for themselves when it comes to increasing the size. Well said. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, we've got another card here. Let's pull uh, up. We're gonna jump on that one. Let's pull up Prince's uh, Prince trading card. Prince. All right, we had North Carolina. And now we got South Carolina. The uh, the Carolinas were hot yesterday. Um, Prince is another trader we called up from XFA to Live. Metrics, oh, again, that. kind of speaks for themselves. 
I am scrolling down here, loving. Yeah, loving it. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I mean, I'm always impressed with average, uh, you know, winning days, excuse me, winning day percentage being really high. It's really, really nice to see 80%. The uh, the hundred percent, the eighty five percent. Like I said, right. we had a good group of people that we called up yesterday. And um, Prince, let's take a little bit of a closer dive here. I like that the best day is thirty six hundred, and the worst day is only three thousand. You know, we never want to see someone risking more in a single trading day than they can put up on their best day. Um, right. Or you know their average winning day. So in regard to the best day, we're okay here, but the average winning day, uh, it is only 1900 bucks basically. So I don't think Prince has any business risking three grand in a single trading day, but he doesn't have a lot of losing days. That's something I would encourage him to consider, um, looking into and maybe, uh, putting some controls in place. So He's not losing three thousand in his live account when on his average winning day it's only about nineteen hundred bucks. Um, but the average losing day is lower than the average winning day. It's only about sixteen hundred there, so that's okay. Overall, you know, I don't have a lot of stuff to uh, you know critique here. They're taking regular no. payouts. Mm-hmm. What were you, were you going to say? Something? Yeah, you know, you said they're taking regular payouts. Um, I do see here April 8th. Um, Prince was up 366, and that was his big negative day, down 3,000. And I do feel that if we start off the day with a profit and then things start to go south on us, this is, I think, when revenge trading is amplified where um, the mindset is, man, I was up. I got to get this back. And I think that's one of the killers. Uh, if you do start your day, well, 366 would have been a day where I would have probably shut it down. That's just me. Mm-hmm. Um, but this trader trades a little bit bigger. But I think that can sort of lead to recklessness, um, you know, indecisions, um, decisions that aren't actually good for the account. I think that's sort of what happened there on that day. But the other days, I mean, he, you know, it's it, a very good trader here. And I'm glad to see that you are you're bringing him up to the live yeah. funded account. I, I think it's important that you bring this up, Eddie. I'm not sure, you know, while I'm aligned with you there, I'm not sure that this so much applies to Prince just because, you know, those average winning days are 1900 bucks. If, if, if this were a trader where 300, that 300 and uh, what, 30 bucks you were, 366 bucks you were talking about was yeah. a, was a significant profitable day for him. then sure, I, I'm with you there. But, you know, if you're averaging 1800 a day on your winning days and you're trading five lots, you know, 300 bucks is kind of a, 360 bucks is kind of a drop in the bucket, if you ask me. Um, I'm, I'm a, a huge advocate of, capturing large percentages of profitable days. You know, if two grand is a big day for me, a big winning day for me, I better be cutting it, uh, calling it a day if I give back half of that, um, you know, walking, essentially walking away with up a thousand on the day. So that's really important. But if you're trading five lots, we know how quickly, you know, uh, profits or losses of 366 bucks can come into play. So, um, I would say to a degree, that's that's a good point here. Um, but because they are trading a little bit bigger, uh, maybe a little, a little bit, it dampens the uh, the point just a little bit. Um, but I will say, since you brought that up, Eddie, I'm looking at all the other trading days here for uh, Prince, and they do a pretty damn good job about locking in the day at their high water mark. Um, We already talked about how they're selective with their trading. So four trades a day on average. There's a lot of days, not a lot, but there's a couple days here where they only make one trade per day. So there's actually a couple days as I expand the trade report. I like that. You know, that tells me they have a distinct strategy that, you know, they're looking for their setups. And if, if they're not seeing their setup, they're not taking the risk and putting the trade on. So it's like, I'm watching the markets. I'm waiting for my setup to come, uh, you know, to rear its head up. And, uh, if it, if it happens, 
you know, I take the opportunity. If it doesn't happen, I walk away. So there's very few days here where Prince is not ending on his high water mark. And it just tells me he's pretty mature and comfortable with his trading. And, and he's only taking risk in the marketplace when he sees a good opportunity, as opposed to someone who's chasing profits and, you know, taking shots. It's like, you know, he's not the guy out there that's looking to hit a big round number. Oh, I'm up 1800 bucks. If I just make a couple more trades or one more trade, I'm going to hit 2000. And you want to just, right. you know, hit that, that big round number for no reason other than wanting to hit the big round number. So I like that. Um, and I, I did see that in some of their other trading outside of this XFA, um, from which we, you know, are calling them up to live. Right. Hmm. Uh, I mean, if, if, you know, uh, appreciate the advice you're giving and, and appreciate the comments we're seeing in chat. And the thing is, you know, with shoulder tap, if you can learn, uh, from another trader, the other trader, and, and I mean, these are all getting brought up to, uh, the live funded. And I think our, our first trader 10, right. Um, yeah. Base hit, base hit, base. It took a little time. But, I mean, the thing is, if you're in a rush to make money trading or just to make money, go to a casino um, and, and try your luck there. Because the thing is, somebody, I, I really like Tien's um, trade report uh, because it was you know, $200, $300, $400, $500 each day. And it took a little while. But look where Tien is right now. He's being brought up by Mick and the team over there. He worked very hard. And to make that kind of money isn't that hard. It's it, one trade, two trade, and, and you're done for the day. Um, <laughs> they make it look, they certainly made it look easy. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up, Eddie. Like uh, the small, consistent profitability, it really adds up over time. Um, you know, I, I've said it before, like I'm way more impressed with someone that can average $200 in wins per day, as opposed to the, the trader that's making 3000, losing 3000, making 3000. I'm wrong with 3000. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the year, you know, small wins add different. up to, to really, you know, a, a nice amount, even if it's a hundred dollars a day that adds up to, uh, you know, over 20 grand, uh, over the course of a year. And, you know, for a lot of people that are trading in our program and just trading out there in general, you know, that's a nice secondary source of income. If if you're someone who's, you know, working a regular job and you come in and yeah. you've got, you know, a little time during the day, who doesn't want an extra 20 grand a year? Um, but more often than not, it's it's those smaller traders that actually have something to show at the end of the year, other than the people that, you know, have big winning days, big successes, and then bleed it out. I, I think about um, a name we haven't talked about in a while, but Hughes, that uh, live trader from France who had brought his account up. Um, this was like Q3 of last year, I think, uh, Q3 of 2023. He was over $100,000 in his account. Um, I know he took a nice big payout and and he was the guy that could have, you know, $10,000 winning days, $25,000 winning days. But then every other day, he was just bleeding out. And, um, you know, for someone who got their account above $100,000, they didn't have too much to show for it uh, at, at the end of the day. And that account was, you know, lost from, you know, just a lot of bleeding. Um, so, yeah. you know. Someone who can be consistently profitable over time can scale their business and they're always going to be better off than the person that, you know, has has lucky success or quick success, but then can't protect it. You know, we always say that goal goal number one in this business is capital preservation and, you know, making the money is what we're all here for. But we got to preserve our capital. And it's those trading big swingers tomorrow. who can't manage their downside. Yeah, trading for tomorrow. Um, so. Right. Happy to share. You know, I only featured three three of our traders, two of which were called up yesterday. But again, seventeen uh, traders called up to live yesterday. It's quite exciting stuff. A lot of work on our end of things. And you're doing a great job there, Mick and the team. We got Brett and we got Ben, and we appreciate uh, all the work you do and uh, save us when we're sinking very fast. Uh, but uh, remember, folks, uh, there's different types of traders. Like we talked about, Tien with the small profits. And of course, 
Um, we talk about prints with the larger dailies. We're all different and find your groove, find something that's comfortable for you. You don't have to be making a thousand, two thousand, three thousand to see success. But if you are that trader, God bless. Keep it going. Mick, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Uh, we've got group coaching coming up, my friend. So uh, I'm going to sit back and watch. We got Robert and I believe JD. So, Mick, you, you get back to work, son. Chop, chop. Uh, plenty to do. Thanks, Eddie. Take care. All right. Take care. We'll be right back with group coaching.
Good afternoon, friends and traders. This is just past the 1230 hour here, Chicago time, 1231 p.m. Central time. Welcome to group coaching. You made it. Thanks for submitting your questions. We had that form pinned in the chat for a couple hours this morning. We appreciate you filling us in with your questions. I'm JD, the man behind the curtain today. You're looking at Coach Robert, and it looks like some Branco charts. I believe that's where we're going to get started with today. How's it going today, Robert? Hey, it's going well. Glad to be here, and uh, glad we all made it. Just got back from lunch, had a nice little ribeye, of course. Getting my cup of coffee, and we're ready to get on. And we do appreciate the questions coming in. We pin the form. Sometimes we'll get two or three, and then we'll set a reminder, and we'll get like 50. So we're just going to run through them, um, spend the time that we need to on some, and just blow right through the other ones. We want to try to make sure I get across all of them today and uh, instead of just tagging on two or three. So without further ado, JD, you are you are you get the helm there, buddy. First question, talking about inflation, how much has the price of your ribeyes increased in the last six months? <laughs> yeah, very important question. It's been up and down, sometimes $13.99 a pound and sometimes $19.99 a pound. When it goes to $19.99, I will get the ribeye with the bone in it, so that basically a, a, a T-bone or sometimes a rib bone. It's a little bit less, and then you cut it out, the math actually works on your side. So that's what we look Ooh, for. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. All right, let's dive right in. First question from Nathan. Hey, Robert, I want to trade Rankos. Can you give me a reasonably uh, a reasonable average true range for a one-minute Ranko on a 50K account? I like to risk about $150 per trade. Thank you for all you do. Nathan with the Ranko chart, and Robert is prepared for it. Yeah, this was the uh, Ranko challenge that I was, I was doing here. We'll get to that. There's a question about that a little bit further down that we'll get to. But uh, so, Nathan, let's talk about the differences. I'm going to right-click on this Ranko chart right here. And notice the the chart type. Let me go actually go to back to the, there's a chart type up the top, and this is top step X. And I have chosen Ranko for my chart type. Now that I'm looking at a Ranko, I need to go to my settings. Right click settings. I know I'm talking fast, but you can re replay this video. Uh, and now I can change my colors, the up bars, down bars, the ones that are in progress, which you'll see on the right side. If they're going up, it's going to plot this light blue and down the yep, this orange color, and it shows it right there. Going a little down, shows it orange, you'll see them start to plot. There are two types. There are traditional and ATR. ATR, average true range, is just going to take the regular uh, price levels, and in this case, it's an average true range of 14, and let's just make that 20, for example. Um, so it's going to take the average range of 20, and that's going to be the length that is looking back to find out what these Renko uh, blocks should be. This is an average it's going to take that average range and it's going to plot uh, each one of these based on the average true range. So they're going to, it's going to fluctuate some. I don't generally like that setting because they can be all over the place. Uh, it, it can be the average true range starts going up a little bit, but because there's a look back of 20, you're looking at the market here, right here, right now, calculating a trade at this moment in time based on what happened 20 period ago. And I don't like that uh, for my trading. I want to know what's happening here, what's happening now, what's happening as I'm entering the trade. I don't care what happened half hour ago, quite honestly. So what I do is I like to choose the traditional. And traditional just makes all the blocks the same size. And I currently have it at 10 points. So a Renko block will, once the market moves in that direction, 10 points, it will plot green. In order for it to plot red, it has to go back the 10 on the green that it plotted and then 10 more to plot the red. So I know that whenever I have a red and green, like this area right in here around 17723 and 17703, uh, notice that it's a 20-point quote range because I have a green and a red green. It's going to toggle back and forth. 10 down, another 10 to plot red, 10 up on the red, another 10 up to plot the green. I know that this is now within 20 points. In, in the challenge, which we'll go through in a minute, that's what I'm looking for. And I want to play the break above and the break below and then ride it out um, when I can. Uh, as far as amount of risking $150 per trade, uh, I don't have any indication. Are you talking about ES, NQ, MNQ, gold, silver? What, what is it we're talking? What instrument are we looking at? I'll need a little bit more information, but it's easy enough to do by going into the bracket order settings and setting your risk parameter to $150, placing the trade where you think, uh, it, it, where, where you have uh, decided that you want to place a trade, the direction you want to place it, and let the bracket order of $150 take care of it for you. Good question. Um, I'm playing with the Ranko bars until we can get range bars on Top Step X, which I'm told is coming, and that will be a game changer in my eyes. Perfect. Thanks, Robert. Thank you for the question, Nathan. Next, we're going to do rapid fire here, all right? So next, NB says, uh, 
What's the best time frame to use? It's confusing sometimes. For example, at 10.30 Eastern time on trading view charts, the 30-minute, one-hour, two-hour, four-hour looked long. But the one three five fifteen daily, weekly, and monthly chart looked as if it could go short on the ES. Not knowing leaves one in limbo. Thanks for your help with this. Uh, well, I suppose it's all uh, the type of trading that you're doing. Are you a systematic trader or are you more of a uh, shoot-from-the-hip kind of trader? You know, uh, It's always better to take a top-down approach if you're not using a systematic uh, trade setup. Uh, so start with those higher time frames and work your way down to the lower time frames. You'll probably end up taking less trades, but you'll notice the quality of them will probably go up. Uh, Robert is not big on time-based uh, charts, but what would your advice for NBB? Yeah, taking my own personal opinion out of it, um, and thank you, NB, for this. Uh, I'm going to say trade around what uh, your style is. So if you are a trader, uh, let's just use my example. I My trades are generally, well, not before this challenge, but typically around three minutes long. I personally don't have any business looking at a weekly chart, let alone a daily or four-hour chart. It, it just doesn't... It, what is it going to do for for me for 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 that type of trade? Okay, great. I look at a four hour chart; it's going down. A one hour chart; it's going up. A weekly chart; it's a downtrend. Daily chart; uptrend. And my trade is going to be three minutes long. I, I just try to take it all in stride, all in context. It's the market you're looking at, the time of day that you're looking at. Uh, if you're looking at the, uh, uh, want to see what the levels are over the course of the last couple of days, like say from a Friday to a Monday to see what the weekend, sure, throw a daily chart on, mark off some couple of levels. So at least you know where they are. Those are the levels I have in my chart. I'm an intraday short-term trader. So this is the overnight high um, in the, let's scroll out a little bit, the, which is uh, roughly 17.772 and yesterday's high. So the only ones I have in my chart right now are yesterday's high and low, uh, excuse me, and the overnight high and low. So it gives me something to to look at. Typically, I may have yesterday's close on there also. I don't happen to have it on this chart, but it's right around, uh, we can see it, uh, 17,658. So let's, let's investigate that real quick. I'm going to go back several, several days. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's my weekly. So guess what? Let's take a look. And here's my weekly high. There I am, 18,523. Okay, well, if the current price is at 17,560 and my weekly high is at 18,523, uh, we're talking a significant uh, height. We're talking, this a, that's what, a thousand points right there. I really shouldn't take that into consideration at all whatsoever if my trades are in a smaller time frame. So, NB, yes, it can be confusing. I get it. My summarizing this entire comment i guess would just be trade around what you're seeing at the time you're trading it wonderful hey we had a down year we had a down week uh monthly is up and i, I don't know i'm gonna take a trade it's gonna be three minutes long like what difference does it make right and it's i'm not being rude here i'm just saying like try to take it in context take your time context market structure around it uh and make your decisions based on that sure you can have them on your chart no harm with sticking them on there and you're going to make one change weekly uh, uh the good ones are like hoke puts his weekly kickoff levels yeah those are great to have on your chart are you going to look at it every second every day of course not but if it's getting close and it's on your chart mm, it may want to be something you take into consideration why because it's trading around the area that you're focused on at that point of your trading time hopefully that helps i know i'm going quick but i do want to make sure we try to get through some of these and uh, answer as many questions as possible Perfect. Thank you, Robert. Quick check in on the markets. We've got the equities, ES and NQ, uh, just extended the range lower by a few ticks now, still hovering around the lows. Uh, crude oil, hitting some bids right now, trading around 82.30, and gold is just diddling in the middle. That is your quick check on. All right. Next question comes from Jeff. Jeff wants, or Jeff says, Hi, uh, Coach Robert, I appreciate you trying to pass the micros. Uh, I appreciate you trying to pass with the micros and limiting yourself to two or three. I'm assuming that means trades per day. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't been able to keep up and missed how it's going. Only heard you talk about it for about five minutes yesterday. Is there any way you wouldn't mind uh, doing a quick recap of how it's going? I'll be for sure watching. Thank you. Jeff, hope you're watching. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, here you go, Jeff. Uh, really quick recap. Um, I have done pretty much nothing for trades today, and I'm finding this – um, the difficult part of this is when you're in the back working in the production, you know, all day, you got to pay attention to the stream. We're not going to trade the times that we can trade. We are on air, but
but I'm technically quote like hosting this session. So I really can't trade. So today would be a null trade for me, whether I wanted to or not. So this is where it's coming into a little bit of a struggle for me. I just simply don't have the opportunity to trade. Um, there are opportunities and were opportunities. It, they, I was just unable to take advantage of them. So I'm going to, uh, not nothing today. If I can get something in tomorrow, I will, and I'll share the update. Uh, but I'm actually going to review it again this weekend. I will keep the same strategy out there, the micro challenge, because I know for the traders that are doing this during the day, it's it can be working pretty good. I've had some comments in Discord. They say, "Man, this is it's just like a simple approach, keeping things easy and just taking your time and and letting the market do what it has to do." But for me personally, to pass this challenge, I need to restructure it a bit and have it really wide, meaning I have to do analysis of uh, the day, what it looks like um, and what happened on the overnight, and then enter my trades like in the morning and then see what happens toward the end of the day if, if they go or not. So that's something I need to do personally. Um, so if you will look at the real quick stats on it, I'll just click on the stat button. This is what it looks like. The very first day I had this was down here on April 10th. Um, I had a bad day uh, and that, and that bad day was due to me trying to trade the minis as I was typically trading my micro, my, uh, excuse me, the micros, typically the way I was trading my minis, getting in and out of trades. I had like, I think 30 of them a day or something, uh, which, which is not good. So I had to readjust it and I had to come back and say, nope, this has to come differently. So we made our, we made, we made some money back here and then here and then here. So we're on the right side, but I'm not able to trade a lot. Like I said earlier, we're going to fix that. I will revisit over the weekend, come up with a different plan that I can use for this challenge, not foregoing the micro challenge that I do have documented and posted into discord. Cause I think it's a pretty good challenge. It's just not fitting for me for the, the, uh, the times that I can actually trade, but I will uh, keep you informed on that. Thanks for asking. Awesome. Thanks for the question, Jeff. Moving on, Bate wants to know, how do you find key levels for NASDAQ as well as how to use Delta? Well, for key levels in NASDAQ, you could start off with the weekly kickoff uh, levels that John Hoagland sends out every uh, Sunday night in the weekly kickoff email. Uh, those are available on the topstep.tv website. Uh, also, you could use our trading checklist that we share every morning. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. That'll give you a head start on finding some key levels. A few other things you could watch out for are... Uh, Previous series of congestion, swing highs, swing lows, uh, previous gaps that are unfilled, uh, weekly highs, monthly highs and lows, uh, three-day highs and lows. There's a, an entire range of things to find key levels. Measured moves off chart patterns. Uh, as Hogue would say, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat here. Uh, and there's a hundred different, a thousand different ways to find key levels. Uh, maybe get that level two data and uh, start looking for areas of liquidity uh, on the dome. Uh, Coach Robert, anything to add to that? What are you looking you for? Took the words or, right out of my mouth. Yeah, no, that's exactly cool. right. Hoax weekly kickoff levels, and then check uh, uh, the opening call for any key areas when we see like um, when when Hoag addresses those. If you have an imbalance from the day before, if you're opening in uh, in value and within market structure from the day before, looking at the P-shape profiles, where we may think it's going, and then of course once fast market starts, you get the opening range, what direction it's going. So those would be the levels. Uh, if you're looking for something solid that you can hang your hat on, uh, that would be them. Keep checking in on the chat, too. We uh, we share our top step daily levels every morning. We put them in the chat. And we have an active group of highly successful and longtime traders offering levels in the YouTube chat all throughout the stream during the day. So keep an eye on that out also. Hope that helps, Bate. All right. Nathaniel says, uh, why does market makers do it very hard for us? I'm not sure what this question really means. You want to take a stab at it or should we move on? Yeah, no, I got it. Um, uh, it's uh, for uh, Nathaniel. Well, why do market make it makers make it hard for us? Uh, well, they're not. First of all, trading is hard, but I the market makers aren't sitting there going, well, Nathaniel's trading, Robert's trading, JD's trading. Let's just push this market down a few hundred points because I know they're long bias. I, they're, they're, they're not doing that. The market is going to go uh, to, the market's job is to, is to facilitate trades. So it's going to go where the entries are, where the, where the data is, it's going to go where the, um, the liquidity is, where there's pending orders. That's what's going to uh, happen in the market. If they're not intentionally saying, hey, let's just make it really difficult. Yes, occasionally you may have something like that where if the market is far too extended, you may have some of the big players pushing it down so they can get in at a cheaper price to buy back in again. So yes, I understand that. But as far as daily trading like we do uh, with this intraday short-term trades, uh, 
can't put it on the market makers. It's trading is hard. It, it, it's, you know, it's, it's not easy. And it's not easy because it's, it's not easy for, for us. We can't blame the market makers. The market's going to do what the market's going to do. Um, take your time, study up and, and you'll get there. Hang with it. <laughs> Nick T's in the chat says the feds watching my levels. <laughs> it's the yeah, Goldman Mike, only Suma. if that was only only if that was true because we have two traders that will say like hey i have this level and i was short and they blew it out the top and then another trader was like i have that level and i was long and they dumped it first so yeah we're both right we're both wrong they don't do that stuff the market's going to facilitate trades that's its job hopefully we can get on the right side of the majority of them <laughs> yep dolby would just say it's the uh goldman interns hunting your sim stops uh, take that <laughs> right. for what it's worth. <laughs> All right, next up, Gagri wants to know, uh, how do we succeed? What do you need to do to become a full-time trader? I would say step one is don't quit your day job. What would you say step two is, Coach Robert? Uh, step two, have a secondary day job, right? Um, yeah, make sure you're, that you're, you're taking over everything of, as far as your own personal income. And it's going to be a little different. Some traders are okay with having less of an income because they want to enjoy more of the freedom. So it's all going to come down to, to you, uh, uh, Kagri, that uh, what's going to be best for you and what's going to allow you. Um, I didn't. I was I was had a full time job running my own business, literally doing 16 hours a day. I ran a sports therapy practice when Bitcoin started going crazy in 2017 to 2018. So I was trading around that time frame while doing and, and running a business I had for many years, a couple locations, a bunch of employees, and it was not easy. I got destroyed. And then I wasn't making enough money to cover my full time job. But I bit the bullet anyway, and I said, you know what? In order for me to do this, I have some that I can a buffer that I can save on uh, that I can go into. I need to really zone in. I really need to focus. So I get out of my practice. I sold everything out, closed the doors um, in the beginning of 2018, and it only took a few months to finally uh, actually take over my income that I was doing at that point, or, or close enough where I was comfortable with it. Um, and that was, you know, then I was like full time for like four and a half years, and then Top Step found me, and here we are. So um, it's going to be different for each trader, but JD was hit the nail right in the head. Man, if, if you're just starting out and you're having a hard time, keep keep your day job, you know, just and and try to work around it until you get something solid in there. And I know it can be tough because if you're trying to trade when markets are moving, but you're working when the markets are moving, uh, man, welcome to trading, welcome to the world. It's not it's not an easy feat. It's 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 that's why we we have such low success rate. Um, but it can be done and it proves it can be done. There are traders here. Look at all the traders on our leaderboards and all the pros and all the live traders uh, and, and those that have been done it. We have a lot of traders who have been doing this for a hell of a lot longer than I have. Uh, it's it's possible. Every trader's got their own criteria. Take it slow, take it steady, and uh, just don't put yourself behind the eight ball if you don't have to. Boom. All right. Moving on to Jayhawk. Jayhawk says, hello, coach. I want to get insight on how price should react uh, if you're looking for a reversal and continuation from an important liquidity level. What would you look for to be sure you want price to go either of two ways? Personally, if I'm looking for a reversal of liquidity level, I want to see immediate rejection. I want to see those, I want to see those orders trade out immediately and then come back immediately. I feel if you're looking for a reversal, the longer it hangs around an area, the more likely that price is being accepted and you're going to see continuation. That's just my personal opinion. How do you feel about it, Robert? I, I feel 100% the same way. I'm going to throw the DOM on my chart right now uh, on the screen so we can just address that a little bit more. You want to be able to see the those rejections. Actually, let me see if I can take this and move it to the entire side. Let's see here. The entire right here like that. Now, I know I just made this really, really big, but I wanted to get the full screen, um, mostly section of it. Uh, Let's say you're up in this area. Look, there's 115 up here, up, up on the ask at 17,576. This is in the micro NASDAQ. Um, so what you want to see as a rejection, you want to see those get absorbed and not take anything out the top and just start filling those orders on the way down. That would be more like a rejection. If it goes and it fills these 120 orders and then these start dumping off right away, it may have acceptance and it's going to continue on. This just jumped like crazy. Where are we at? Uh, 17,580. We have 134 sitting there on the ask. Now, the other direction, if looking at the bids, uh, it looks like 17,560. There's some 556. There's some. And we have large amount, almost three times the amount at 17,549. So 
throw those areas on your chart, watch the reaction of the market, watch how the DOM runs up and down uh, quickly. Uh, if it does do it quickly, uh, if they get filled, if they start filling in again, you start seeing them stack up, that may be an indication of it pushing higher. If they're not filling and they start to drop into them, those are being absorbed below, that may be an indication of a quick reversal. So it's gonna be price action and then price action and then price action. So knowing that, understanding it, using a couple of different tools uh, can really help you. Bookmap is great for this. It gives you some really in, uh, integral, in-depth look and very microscopic, uh, trying to look, think of the word, a very, very tiny granular look at how the market is running and moving right at that exact time. Uh, and also uh, Quant Tower has a DOM surface, which is very similar to Bookmap. So those are some options for you. Awesome. Thank you, Robert. All right. Next question from Zizoft. Uh, this is about your micros combine. Uh, when trading micros, do you keep the same stop loss as a mini? For example, if your mini stop loss is 300 for ES, would you do a $30 stop loss for MES or give your MES stop loss more room? This is what uh, Robert was just describing a few minutes ago, and I believe he's keeping it the same. You want to add a little more context to that real quick? Sure. Uh, since it's going to be a little bit different where... A three hundred dollar. Let's using those uh, that information right. Three hundred dollars for for ES. Um, I'm not going to do a thirty dollar ES and keep my stop the same uh, because if I did that, then my target is going to be that much lower and restricted as well. And we know if we're taking payouts, we need to have five days of over two hundred dollars. So for the actual trades, I would like to break that into fifths. Okay. So if I'm looking for two hundred dollars or two hundred fifty dollars, that would be fifty dollars per trade. Uh, and in micros, uh, that's that's going to take a while. Uh, so we need to have a little bit of separate spread, not dollar amount, because the dollar is going to be relative. Uh, so if I had a 10 points at $50 or, or sorry, $300, um, and then I am not going to go keep that same particular level, price level, because it's not, it's going to be thirty dollars now, not going to be three hundred. I do want to kick that up. It's going to be about a, about a fifth, so it'd be about one hundred and fifty. So thirty dollars would become about uh, um, one hundred and fifty. We just need more room. We we need more room for movement. We have the micros. We have some um, uh, some. Uh, it's a little more forgiving because we're trading the micros. I I do. I I like them. It just especially because I'm trading NQ. It, it's you. If you are wrong and you have a couple contracts on a mini and NQ and Eight seconds later, you're like, I'm looking at three hundred dollars down. It's like that's that's your whole day. The whole day, in my opinion, the whole day is gone. I'm certainly not going to hit a thousand dollar daily loss limit and lose half my account in a single day, let alone a single trade. Uh, I, I just don't think that's the right way to do it. So I'll go to micros. We'll give it some more room to breathe. And doesn't mean you have to let it hit that stop, but if it starts going the wrong direction, uh, the, not the wrong, the, the direct the wrong direction that I chose, uh, I'll just close it. Just get out of it. You don't have to let it go all the way to your stop. Yep. All right. Next up, Gary Van Horn says, uh, is it possible to import my own custom indicators to Top Step X? At this time, it is not, but it is on our roadmap. If you go to that navigation bar, if you're on Top Step X right now, go to that left side navigation bar, click on the question mark, and you'll be able to see the roadmap, what's in the queue, uh, where it's at on the queue. And uh, you could also vote on your favorite new add-on. There it is. Coach Robert's pulling it up right now. All right. Anything you want to add to that, Robert? Sorry. Yep, that's exactly right. That's yep, that, that's where it is. We, we go over that a lot. Um, it's a traders. It's a platform built for traders. You can submit your feedback, look what's in there, check the change log, uh, subscribe to them if you if you're interested in something. You can upvote the ones that you like the best, and they have changed. We had a we had a switch on here. Um, it's funny the the micro mini conversion uh, was the highest rated one. That's being pushed out, pushed out, pushed out. Working hard on it, and then. Uh, this was the other one was submitted here to allow the positions of PL to be ticks and percentage instead of just a dollar amount. And the traders said, you know what? We feel that that's more important than the conversion. And everybody upvoted it to be the higher part in the queue. So we're listening to the traders. And if you want to see something, get in here, vote for it, drive it up. And you can imagine if something had 150 votes and something else had 1,000 votes, which one do we think development is going to do first? Give you, give you a stab at that. It's going to be one that the 1,000 traders want versus the 100 traders. So voice your opinion, put it in there, show us what you want, and we'll get it done. Boom. All right, last question. We're running short on time. Frank M says, uh, I have trouble taking losses or cutting losses. I hit my DLL or my, my daily loss limit or my max loss limit with my last bad trade. 
what practices outside of trading can help getting more comfortable with taking small losses? Well, uh, there's really no excuse for screen time. The more time you spend doing it, the more comfortable you're going to be with doing it. But uh, mm -hmm. Robert, what's your take on this one? Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be screen time, first of all. Uh, it, it secondly, is I would strongly encourage you to stop hitting your daily loss limit and reduce it on your own discipline. Put it at $200 to $250. Uh, I, I don't see any sense or any reason to hit a $1,000 daily loss limit on a $2,000 account. Losing half your account in a day, I just don't think that's a, a strong way to do things. Uh, scale down, size down, take it slower. That would be my... Uh, opinion on that stuff. As far as what you do outside, that's going to vary per person. Uh, some traders like to go to the gym, like to work out and get that adrenaline going, get that energy out, and now they can focus. Other traders like to sit and maybe meditate or do or do yoga, or just simply go for a walk or just be quiet and be still. And that gets them uh, able to sit and to be able to focus. So it really is just a matter of what you like to do. Um, you know, some just like to get up in the morning and have the routine and, and some just like to trade later on at night and, you know, take a nap in the middle of the day. It, it's hundred percent up, up to what is going to get you focused. Uh, and it's going to lock you in, get that, you know, that, that brain moving forward. Um, <laughs> yeah. And again, just careful on the daily loss limit. You, it talks about that you have a personal daily loss limit. Mine is set for $250 and I have a personal daily profit target of 250 there we go. That that's uh, that gives me uh, four days of losing 250, and I won't even hit daily loss limit. And then I can have eight losing consecutive days of 250 dollars of my daily loss limit before I lose the account. I'm not going to lose an account in two days. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to do it. Uh, I I don't think that's the right way. It's my opinion, but uh, nope. <laughs> Sorry. We well, have the quick. same opinion on that. That went by quick, man, all the time. Yeah, awesome. We tried real hard. Our goal was to get through all your questions today, and we tried real hard. Um, we do apologize that we missed a few of them. Uh, we'll be back, though, tomorrow with more group coaching at 1230 Central Time. We'll try and get through uh, the rest of them. Uh, stick around, though. Coming up next, we have got Maximizing with Max Maserati. He's going to be joined by Andre and Hogue. Then we're closing out the day in Power Hour with Andre, Dolby, and Zach Anthony. So stick around. Plenty more trade entertainment coming your way. Be back right after the short break.
We have a new segment, folks. It is called Maximizing with Max Maserati, named after the man in the middle. There he is, Max Maserati. Everybody loves him. Max, welcome to the show. Congratulations on getting your own segment, Maximizing with Max Maserati. How do you feel about that? Do you like the name? Do you like the name? How do you feel? I love you like it. it? I love it. All right. I love it. Good. Well, thank you for joining us. Of course, we got John Hoagland to screenwrite, I should say. What's up, Johnny? How are we feeling today? What are we thinking about these markets right now, John? Well, I'm 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 feeling good. I'm kind of confused as the price action in the S and P's and the Nasdaq now. We're kind of holding below uh, the IB low. We took out yesterday's low, trying to figure out what direction this thing wants to go. So far, not being very successful at it, but just kind of watching for now. Max, what do you think? Um, so far, I think uh, I'm I'm at this level, uh, fifty two twenty two zero zero, and um, because I have an MMM block. Here, because this where uh, this uh, blo this uh, block, so the external block, uh -huh. CL, change theory, it was the one that priced all the way up. So I'm expecting maybe to be on midline here, or if price just touch the down part here, so we are completely bearish. So this is my this is the only thing I'm looking at now. Okay. I see. All I right. see. So. So you're bearish, no Max. Max. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm bearish. I'm bearish and bullish at the same time. I basically yeah. I'm bearish, but I, I wouldn't. Let, let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> Isn't that the way, though? Oh, yeah. I'm completely bearish because based on my strategy, so this yesterday was a, a bearish body close, right? So I, I was expecting low today, right? However, since we are to this PDA rate here, which is wrong, because like, this uh, um, uh, external block push price up. I'm I'm waiting for a lot of orders here. May mm -hmm. push price up a little bit. So until they they close, we don't really mean price was down the midline or will cross down this low 50, 50 to zero zero. So we don't we basically I don't know. So now we can take a short trade. Now I'll probably I'll be looking to go to go to go long if I if I see a good movement. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm, so you, I'm neutral. No position just yet. No position just yet. No well, position. If, if the case presents itself, I'll enter along. So basically, um, so for example, we see on the one minute here. I have, I have nothing to go long here. I, I do have a PO for bullish here, and uh -huh. it did not do a market like I wanted to do, but still, still. Still up here, but if price one, it should go ahead from this level here. But I would have preferred that price touch the one is the swing. Yeah, we do. Max, we do, do us a favor. Do, do us Sorry? a favor, Max. Move your mouse as little as possible because it keeps breaking up your uh, your audio. Oh, the audio. Okay, I, I'll try to do that. For example, you. you see this this is bullish here. The the um, the line candle. So it uh -huh. did, um, uh, this is on the one minute chart, it did make uh -huh. a market structure shift here. Yep. So we have a C here. So I will be marking, so I'll be marking it, the, the candle body to the, the low, to the here. So I expect, I expect this level here, but, and then, and if price give it an IPO for bullish here, maybe I might enter. If it doesn't, I'm still. But it's, it, it tested it here, to here again. And I, I do have bullish volume volume here, but it was uh -huh. violated here. So this is my high this is my high volume candle here. Let me white. So Understood. Uh, anything you're seeing in your volume studies to the downside here? So no, the the volume we have a nice we have a nice push up, but the fact is like this bearish candle close below it, so it's not yes. important anymore. So you see, price came down again. Price went up, but it went came down onto this level. Right. So, so it it's not important for me anymore because it got violated body close below it so this this was supposed to be a high high volume candle but it, it's not anymore okay 
So, so we're going lower unless we go higher, huh? Yeah, we could probably we're going lower a little bit more. And Pass hasn't touched the 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 midline yet. So I'm still looking. So probably we might have a nice consolidation at this level. Okay. For now. Until I For see now. something interesting. So you see something change. Yeah. Max, uh, I, last time you were on with us, you were on with Dolby and myself. And uh, Dolby really took to your strategy. Watching volume, watching how volume influences the markets, watching volume influences price movement. Uh, would you mind giving us a brief refreshing core, refresher course, a crash course, if you will, uh, to how you study volume and how you let use that to influence your trading ideas? Because Dolby's really taking a liking to it. We we're talking about earlier today in power players, and uh, mm -hmm. I think the audience would like to hear about that. Okay, it, it's my pleasure. So, uh, I mean, I've been looking at price because, you know, when I started trading, full-time trading in 2021, and then I struggled a lot at the beginning. I was trying to understand and then like learning on YouTube, learning over there. Learning. And then I'm like, okay, wait a minute. What price? Price is a movement between people. Like it's, it's all about interest. People right. be, uh, be, belief. People believe about what can happen now, what can happen tomorrow. So when you have billions of people thinking about price, and then even you sometimes, you cannot really um, understand yourself to take a decision. Sometimes you want to go long, you want to go short, you, because right. like market is doing a lot of things, because we as human, our mind change, our thoughts change every, every single second. So I'm like, okay, so what, what is the best way to visualize what is happening in the market right now? The candlestick are amazing. They are like the basic, the basic of the market. Even they look very simple, but they tell you everything you need to know. If you master how to read candlesticks, your life will be easy, much easier. Okay. So this is what my strategy is based on, candlestick and volume. So when you have the candle sometimes you might have for example you might have a a, a, can, a bearish candle and then but you need volume to tell you exactly how is it a huge volume is it a small volume so you have candlestick you have volume they are the basic of the market and then you have um uh discount and premium so if right. you're going to buy you want to buy cheap if you're going to sell yes. you want to sell high so these three things are the basic. For me, they are the, the core. They are the foundation of the, of the market. So volume now. So what I do, for example, if, if price is going down, if price is going down, so I go to the one minute, five minute, or three minutes, even 15 seconds. Right. And then you're looking for huge volume spikes. For example, here, you see this huge bullish volume spike. Right. Okay, here. So what I do, I'm like, I will be marking if price wants to go higher. If price wants to go higher, price shouldn't violate this, this, this candle because it's too huge. So we have a lot. So if price, uh, if we have this huge volume and then price doesn't continue higher, which means like we have a lot of people taking profit or we just reach a liquidity level if mm -hmm. price not keep moving up. So like the, the buyers are getting out, right? So, so I'll be marking this my high volume, high volume candle. High volume candle on the yep. one, okay? This will be my point of whether if I, if, if, I enter, if I enter a trade, it will be my reference to whether to get out or not. And then once I, I see this, then the price trades, and so, so now I get the first sign. Price didn't keep moving higher because this is a huge volume. So I'm expecting a bullish body close. And now I got a close. In. And then next I got a bearish body close, which, which is telling me that the buyers are not strong enough. Maybe mm -hmm. they might, price might close below here. And then, so, so as you can see, price came down here with a fair value gap, which, which could push price higher. But price on here, and then it didn't, it didn't. Okay, so my candle to the next to the candle that touch the the low if it doesn't close so this will be my my uh, my next high volume uh, candle to observe so i i call the hvc one 
high volume candle one because it's the gotcha. first candle that touched the the level i'm looking at but it didn't uh -huh. close below it so whenever i have another candle close below the hvc one i got out i i will as you see here there's no conviction close below twice close below this candle here so this is the moment so okay price is no longer higher this is not a this is not a retracement this is highly likely price will keep going down so i will get out and then i will check this as well here see this volume is getting higher here and this have even we have a nice bullish volume here but vo vo um bearish candle which is higher than the than the than the, the one that came before <laughs> Right. And so I would get out here and see if it went all the way down. So uh, to that point, Max, I think, John, that's kind of what we're – in a similar way, it's kind of what we're looking at when we're looking at volume pro profile, right? We're seeing where business is conducted. We see if there's conviction in, the, in what the volume and those prices, and then that's kind of how the market moves from there. John, am I, am I reading this right? I think that's kind of what Max is explaining for those that uh, you know, may want a little clarification. But yes, volume is conviction. It's, you kind of see it back to backed up with the volume and price movement. You know, there's conviction there that you might want to know there's more business to be had, John. I, right? Is that kind of how we're, I'm, I'm understanding this? Okay, so you know what what Max is talking about is volume of of specific candles, right? right. So you know he's looking to see what the volume of a specific candle in a specific time frame is. You know, if like you're seeing more volume on up candles you know he's thinking probably we're gonna we're gonna need to start to need to look for longs here if he's seeing gotcha. more volume on down candles he's he's probably thinking okay you know what we're we're starting to see volume on down candles that's power and you know if we continue to push that direction i can stay in this or get into something uh volume profile is a little bit different because you know when you're looking at, at uh candle um uh volume bars at the bottom that's each bar is telling you how much volume occurred during that time period gotcha. where market or where volume profile is showing you prices where more volume occurred and ah. less volume occurred right so there is there is a little bit of a difference uh in in this andre so it's okay. that's a great question and uh and Good you know decision. it's just two different ways to look at the same information one is horizontal. You know what prices have have accumulated more volume, and th this way it's you know which direction is bringing more volume. Is it on the up candles or the down candles? Would that be about right, Max? Yes, perfectly right. But by looking volume at one candle, it helps you to to get out faster of a trade, mm -hmm. or it helps you to get inside of a trade. For example, if you're like taking long or short, like just visualizing one candle, it helped much better on, on your analysis, whether you need to stay or when you need to get out, when you need to enter on a trade. Very good. Very good. Real quick, quick update. Hey, quick update here in the markets. We did see a pop. S&Ps did take a dip below setting new lows on the day, 50, 39 quarter. But right, right after that, we did see a pop off of that back trading about Oh, 12 points higher in about five minutes. We're seeing that also in the NASDAQ. Took a, uh, took a dip below, but then found some buyers right away. It's defending their levels here in the Dow as well. 37,900 seems to be the support level, if you want to call that. Some of us back away. We are up 95. We are up 90, 86 points off that bounce of 37,900 in the Dow. Uh, and I don't know. I didn't see anything, John, but uh, was that a level that we had down there that uh, kind of triggered some stuff? Well, let me let me that. let me take a look at the Dow. Yeah, uh, as you can um, as you can see, the fifty forty exactly on the midline. You see fifty forty on the uh, on the midline I talked about earlier. Yes. On so the midline, you see this reaction from the midline here. Yes. I don't know if you can see my chart. I think, hey, Max, I think we kind of, we're, 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 we're going to kill the screen sharing for now just so we can save bandwidth. But if you can still talk levels and still talk prices, we can still follow you in real time. So use your screen as a Perfect. reference and uh, we'll kind of do the play-by-play -play with the mouse and everything on our end. But as long as you talk it through and say price levels, we can do the rest from, from here. Perfect, okay. perfect. So if you go on the daily time frame, on the daily time frame, and then uh, you, you will mark 50, 50, 40 level, 50, 40. Yeah. Which is the which is the last take the 
uh, get a, a make take a box, a rectangular yeah. box, place it on the on the let me tell you the level from 50, 43, 50 to 50, 39, 25. Good stuff, John. To 50, wait, say, say that again, Max, I'm sorry. From 50, 43, 25. Okay. To 50, 39, 25. A rectangular bo box. And then... Uh, 39, 25. Okay, right there. Oh, 50, 39, yeah. 50, 50, 39, 25. All right, that's gonna that's gonna be close enough. All right. Yep. Thanks, John. Okay. Uh, it, it, so, it be to, oh yeah, yeah. I don't. Uh, so, are you using the which? Uh, is the adjusters price? Oh no, it's not. Yeah, this is. This is not the adjusted one. Yeah. No. It's okay. It's okay. Well, let's just keep keep talking it us through. Doesn't be specific. Okay. We just want to get general ideas, oh, oh. general concepts here. Keep uh, it. So, we keep it high level here, so everyone can enjoy. It. Everyone can uh, appreciate what Max. From maximizing what Max Arati has, has to bring. Max, please go ahead. We got this box. We saw that pop in the equities here. Please, Max, take it away. Great. And then if you go on the one minute now, go to the one minute, you'll see 50, 41, 25. And then um, so 50, 40, 0, 0. 50, 40, 0, 0. So this is exactly what the midline of the rectangular box is on my chart. 50. Yeah, 50, 40, 0. No, sorry. The midline right is 50, 41, 25. Midline 50, 41, 25. Mm -hmm. 50, 41, 25. This is the midline. Okay, I'll put a line there. Yeah, yeah. 50, 50 41, 25. This is the midline 40, of the of 25. the uh, external block, of the Matsumasa external block. There you block. go. So you see price came exactly to the midline and then you have this reaction because you have a lot of order here based mm -hmm. on the previews, um, based on the previews uh, change instead of delivery that we had uh, on the daily that pushed price all the way up to the, to the, to the new, new high, all time high. Right. So basically when price came back to this level, you will expect that that price move higher up you you need to expect a reaction so here mm -hmm. we might see we might we might see a reversal but i don't think so because i feel like price is kind of weak for a reversal not not the kind of movement i was I, I was expecting but still you will have a very nice reaction from this level of the uh, external blocks very good good stuff so it's bringing a strong showing the conviction in the volume like it was just shown there. John, we did see that bounce. Uh, we start see, seeing some buyers coming in, catching a bit. If you will, show <laughs> Isaac Rivera, Dow, yeah. catching a bit, Dow up 100 points uh, after we saw that that little dip there. Uh, did we hit a key level there, John? I don't know. What, what triggered that? On mute. On mute. You were just off mute, too. He clicked. Uh, you were I, on I can hear you. I can hear you. You can hear. I'm, you can okay, hear John. I'm here. There you yeah, are. I'm here. I'm sorry. I can hear good. Both of you. Yeah. I have a habit of doing that, and I apologize. So, you know, in the S and P's, we we were we were hanging below the initial balance low, the IB exactly. low, and we had taken out yesterday's low. So my thought was, I'm, I'm going to try and 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 try and work some shorts here. Um, you know, obviously they haven't they haven't been successful, but I got to remember, you know, we traded above the initial balance. And we traded below the initial balance. Initial balance that's going to kind of create a probability of range bound trade. Okay. So now we're back inside the initial balance. We've come off the lows. We've come up. We've taken out. We've come back above yesterday's high. We're back inside the initial balance. I'm looking at this market as a market that's probably just going to range inside this range the rest of the day, unless, of course, you know, we get some selling coming in or or something else happens that that you know that. Uh, that changes the, the, the current market state. Um, gotcha. the, the, you were asking about the Dow earlier. So yep. here's the Dow and I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so we can see the profiles on one page here. Very good. So this is the Dow's profile for today. We had the initial balance, basically the same initial balance as yesterday, right? Market awesome. looked above, rejected, came back, took out the low, 
and never took out the low from yesterday and is still holding below the initial balance. So, you know, if I were going to be short in any of these, it would probably be the Dow unless we, you know, unless we can't stay below the, the, uh, the low of the initial balance. I mean, this, you can see here, it, uh, it, uh, you know, it, it extended below the initial balance. And one of the periods was, you know, was an extension oh. of the range, but it came back and just traded right back to the initial balance. I know yes, it's it hard did. to see, but this H block right here, that yes. was a, you know, once, once we, once we leave the, the, the single ticks there, we come back and test the initial balance that, you know, that might be, uh, in an in initial balance rejection or an acceptance of lower pricing. So if I were going to be short anything right now, it would probably be the Dow. Okay. And well, we, we do have a bit of a weak low on the Dow as well. I like that. And uh, here's, I'll add a little more information here to that. Uh, we have a tilt in the Dow of 82% long, 82% long, 83% long. Here on all sim traders here, top step are along the YM, the Dow minis right now. So, John, I think yeah, we got something else. On, uh, yeah. I completely yeah. agree with them. Yeah, we got We're some good trades. 68% long in the S&Ps, 74% long in the NASDAQ. We had some, you know, we had some new buyers in here. If they That's continue new, what's to Delta? push. What's Delta looking like right uh, now, John? Here at 125 Central Time. Delta, 5,800 positive in the S&Ps. Negative 2,700 in the NASDAQ. Hmm, interesting. 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 And positive we'll eleven, positive a thousand in the in the Nasdaq. You, hmm. you can see it here in the Nasdaq as well. I mean, you know, we took out the low of yesterday relatively early in the session today. Uh -huh. We looked above, rejected. We looked below. As long as we hold below that initial balance, it's a short, especially below the range of the previous day. But we weren't able to hold it. We're back inside the initial balance. That takes the shorts out of the uh, out of the equation. And more likely, we're going to rotate inside value for the rest of the day. Okay. Well, this could be a nice short setup here. Uh, where are you watching? Delta? John's watch. John, where are you watching Delta? We get this asked all the time. I know. I ask. I ask you where am I watching Delta? I turn to my man John. I turn to my man John. So John, where are you watching yeah, Delta? Delta it looks so different. Max, all I do is ask John all day. I probably ask him twenty times a day. What's Delta? What's Delta? And that's that's fine. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, I get Delta right here on the on this T four profile chart. Um, oh, it's geez, regular yeah. trading hour session only. It, it begins to populate right at 8.30 when the market opens and finishes at 3 o'clock. So that's where I'm getting it. But good news, folks. It will be available on Hell Top yes. Step X very soon. Hell yes. I'm guessing John put that request into our tech team. Highest priority. First thing. So I, can just, I can just leave him alone and just get, why can't you get Delta? Because I'm not on T4, James Herman, but we will be getting it, as John just said, on Top Step X. And I can, but it's fun to ask John the question. It kind of builds a story here at Top Step TV. It keeps sure. people engaged. You know, it kind of builds a story as we get into power hour. Every now and then we do get that heavy short and the market ain't breaking. And guess what those shorts got to do? They got to cover. And yep. that's when we get the short squeeze. So we beat them to the punch, yeah. make some money that way. Max Maserati, we're up here at the. Uh, Andre, aside from that, it makes me feel important that you have to ask me. <laughs> there, don't put it in top stuff X. Don't put it in top stuff X. Keep it out there. It's John's proprietary info. Oh man, it's our thing. It's kind of you taught me how to read this Delta. And essentially, uh -huh. it's you know where the idea came from is when you guys are walking in the pit, you say, What's the pit? Is pit long or is the pit yeah. short? So that's kind yeah. of the same, same kind of what we care for, get, gather here from tilt as well. It's kind of good to know if you're flat what the other side is. You kind of beat them to the punch before they have to get out. But we'll keep an eye on that as the day progresses. We do have a half hour here till this a power is, hour. Yes. All right, Max, Max Maserati. We are maximizing with Max Maserati right now. Max, uh, tell us about some trades you've taken. How's the, how's the trading week been? Uh, it's a question I've been asking a lot of our guests here. With the heightened sensitivity to the geopolitical headlines, the geopolitical risk coming out of the Middle East, how do you navigate markets in this current state? Uh, you know that we are one headline away from equities just getting slammed. <laughs> Popping crude, a popping gold, uh, gold as well. How are you trading and navigating this market state? Um, you know your way. Okay, so uh, right now what I'm, I'm doing a lot of flying. I'm, I'm just uh, I'm trading um, my live account, uh, like for serious trading. But otherwise, I'm doing a lot of live testing for the moment, okay. and I'm doing contrarian testing because I, I want to push my strategy to the limit. So at the end of this month, huh. I'll, be, I'll be finished with everything. So basically, like, like I told you before, so what I'm doing, 
I'm focusing on candlestick. Candlestick will tell me everything I need to know. The news, I check at what time is the news. I do not trade during the news. I do not trade. I just wait for at least one hour candle to close. Because when I wake up in the morning, when I do my chart analysis, I'm expecting price to reach a certain level before I take any trade. And once I reach these levels, this is the moment I'm, I'm okay. Now, I can, for example, now you see price reach this stock. So this is where I will be looking for a trade. For example, this morning I took a trade at this, uh, I went price touch inside this here and it was, it didn't, and didn't violate, uh, uh, I can't really show my screen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay. Anyway, just, hey, right. Max, again, just say numbers. Just say the numbers tell and we can levels. take it from there. Yeah, tell us levels. Okay, great. Uh, uh, if we can go to the one hour, one hour chart. One hour chart coming right up. John, that, that short entry would have been money, by the way, in the Dow. Yeah. For example, uh, okay, so uh, you see the, the first candle, oh, it didn't really touch it in your chart because it's not the, the adjusted one. So normally I use the adjusted chart. Okay. So uh, as you can see the candle, one hour candle, uh, the one at... 9 9 a.m. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Central. Yeah. Right here. Uh, 9 a.m. Central. Yeah, New York. New York. New York. Right here. No, the oh, other New one. New York. The previous one. Right here. Yeah, New York. Uh, yes. New York. No, no, New York, no, no, New York. Yeah, this one. No, no, next one. The, the bearish, the bearish candle. Right here. No, no. Go, go on the left. And this one. Left. This one. No, no. Left. left. All right. Hey, all right. We got it. We go. We yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly <laughs> here. 8 a.m. Okay. 8 a.m. This one. Understood. Okay. So the so this candle, when it closed, when it closed, it touched. It came inside in my chart. It came inside of the uh, external block on the daily. So when price reached this level, I'm like, okay. So price reached this level. So I'm expecting a reaction from from the from the high, from the middle, and from the low. So I'm expecting okay. a reaction from these three level on the on the external block. And then, so what I will do, I will go, I will be dropping to the one minute and looking to see wh where's the, where's the volume is going, uh, what kind of volume do I have? And I had a nice volume up. Okay. If you, if you mark the low of the one hour and then you drop to the, to the one minute. All right. Let me mark okay. that low of that, that candle on the hourly. Mark the low of the one hour. Thank you, John. Doing great. Let me okay. mark and then that. we drop to the one minute. <laughs> when we drop to the one minute, and then uh, we mark the low of the one hour, like 8 a.m. So that's yeah. this. You want to show you the bearish. Yeah, this one. Right yeah. there. So you want the low of that marked? Low. Yeah, you mark the low. Okay. Uh, mark the low of the bar right there. Yeah. Marked. Yeah, you might sure let's get it. the one minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, now to the one. Yeah, one minute. Mm -hmm. One minute? Yes. All right, so there is that low. Yeah, and then uh, you'll see in the, um, uh, I will have a PO4 bullish on, uh, at 9.46 a.m., probably, uh, it's this New York time, 9.46 New York time. 8.46. Right for, here. Uh, 8.46 for you. And then, okay. so I'll yep. be marking this because this, it caused my, my, the, the chain instead of delivery I'm looking for. So, and this then one. I was, uh huh. So, yes, this one. Yeah. Yeah, this one. Uh -huh. Yeah, this one. Yeah, exactly this one. And you can see How do you the want volume. That mm -hmm. Yes, the volume. Yeah, no, the, the, yes, this one. Yeah. So, so you mark the, the, the bearish candle low, the bearish candle body to the low of, uh -huh. of this candle right there and then so um, i'll be waiting for price to come inside of it and get a reaction and then price came inside of it i got the reaction and then you see the next bullish candle with the highest volume yeah at, um yes that's this one nine. right no no you need to go on the right no, no, I hate to interrupt. Hold on, I got I got to interrupt here. I got to interrupt here. We're making new lows. Uh, we turned right around off that pop. Uh, we got lows yeah. in the S and P's. We got lows. 
NASDAQ yeah. Dow lagging a little bit behind. Boom, so we're going to some stops. Uh, John, that yeah. we were just talking about taking a short there because that was a weekly held low, and I think you called it pr perfectly here, and we are seeing it backed yeah. up by volume, like Max says. We are seeing these sellers' uh, conviction. New low. Yep, new lows in NASDAQ and, uh, and NASDAQ S&Ps. And maybe Dow will still see. We'd see. Okay, so let's replay it real quick. We had an 80% long tilt in the YM. I think we saw 82% long tilt in the S&Ps, literally at the peak, right before we fell off there. Uh, so fading the herd, fading the majority there probably would have been the nice play. We also said John came in and told us about uh, the weak lows, so they are going to retest it. So we'll see if we find some buyers here or if we can't have some follow-through to the downside. McDolby says five-minute range extension rejection. It makes it tricky. It makes it very tricky. So if you're a breakout trader, you probably took it on the chin there a little bit. But if you're a range bound trader, you played the upper end of that range. You may have made a couple of tickets. Yeah, things. you so might have done all right. Tricky. Yeah, we got you about uh, 20 minutes left here in maximizing with Max Maserati. Uh, everything tilt kind of unwound there. Uh, Max, have you taken trades? Uh, I know I asked you, how have you been trading this week? Uh, p and wise. I know you said you're going to do a lot of testing, a lot of testing until the end of the month. That's going to be very strenuous, a granular level of research uh how have you been trading so far this week how would you assess your, i should say how would you assess your trading this week oh i mean i'm pretty exactly as i as i expected so today i made uh, in the live account I, I had a very very nice trade on i have very very nice long i made like around like 7k 7k damn nice. what'd you trade so the trade i was uh, showing hog now right here yeah 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 so Damn. I entered with six lots. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> so I, yeah. So here, yeah. And then you see, yes. And then you see the highest volume on the on the on the ten. I think it would be nine for you. Ten at ten three, ten three. Oh, three and here. Which would be nine three for you? Nine three. Nine, nine oh three. Nine nine three a.m. No, the next one. The, yeah, yeah, bearish one. The bearish that bearish came inside one. of the box. Actually, yeah. Okay. No, no, be, go back. Yeah, back, back. N next one. Great. This one. Yeah. So this candle. Okay, we test this box, but didn't take the low on my on my on my chart. I think. Okay. Because now it's the adjusted one. Okay. So, and then price went up and I get a very nice bullish candle with a lot of volume. You see the, the bullish candle one. with a lot of volume, the one at, um, the one at 10, 10, 10, 9, 10, 9. Right there, right there. No, no, like Tricky. 10, 9. 10, 9 is 9, 9 for you. Yes, 9, 9, that's where I'm at, right here, right here. Yeah. So price, and then so now I get a very nice. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, yes. And then I get yes. a very nice pure for bullish here. So once I get this pure for bullish, this will be my entry. And then so I place my trade in mid uh, mid line of the candle, and then it okay. triggered my trade. And then I gotcha. put my stop loss right down there, and then I just ride it all the way up. And then where would your stop up, loss be on this, Max? So my stop loss, I put it exactly at at um, it was at this candle, like uh, three nine forty six a.m. So eight forty six, right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. There's your stop. Yeah. yeah. So you're in no, here. No, your stops yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop Six. here, and then it, yeah, here, 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 yeah. You see, about the, 12 the points of risk. Of volume. Yes, exactly here. Exactly here. The, yes, the bullish candle. About 12 points of, of risk on that. Okay. Yeah. And then and then I put my stop loss and one tick below it. One tick below the, the swing low. Okay. And then I ride it all the way up until this high volume candle, bullish here, got violated. So I get out of on here. On, the... You see the high volume. The eleven seventeen bar. Yes, eleven. It. Uh, no, it's ten forty five. Ten forty. So nine forty five here. Nine forty five. This yes. this one here. No, 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 not this one. Not this one. The previous down. Go down. 
you see the the other one the the highest bullish candle you have the highest yeah the highest vo bullish volume no no the, well, the hold next one next hold on. i'm not sure this next is the best time. television right here with max yes. trying to just yes. do yes. the lord's work right now trying no, 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 to uh, navigate no, no. what max is saying one, max i understand uh, Max, uh, let's, let's, let's just keep it high level here. If we're having a little difficulty this sharing your screens, so that's okay. We've dealt, this, we've dealt with this before. This yeah, one. we've dealt with this before. This one. We got it. This one. Yes. Yes, this one. Yes, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see how price violated it. Price violated yes. it with power. And then I'm like, okay, let's see what price will do. So I just moved my stop loss under it here. And I'm like, okay, let it run. If price came down okay. here, it took my stop loss. I'm okay. So I'm done. Okay. And then, Price down, took it, and then and then here on the way up, I get a, another CDL short, CDL short here, and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. This price, this will not keep moving a higher. Okay, probably up here and somewhere. I get out of the field. and then yeah, basically okay. this is what I did, and I take a couple yeah. of trades, but they were contrarian, trying to back test, live test. But just yeah. only, and just only with the with the combine. Yeah, I know this is difficult, and uh, Max, we we appreciate yeah. you being with us, hey, and I'm yeah, it's doing the I best I can to, to pick out the candles for you. And yeah, everybody, I know this is it's probably kind of hard to follow, but hopefully you're able to follow it and and get something out of out of what Max is talking about here. Uh, but that's great stuff, Max. James, or uh, I'm sorry. Hey, Max. Okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of take, we're gonna take you behind the scenes. We're gonna see if you're gonna get your connection fixed uh, in the next. We got about 15 minutes here. We gotta work on your connection here. We're gonna take you off for the time being. John and I are gonna talk. See if we can get that connection dialed in. I don't know if you're on Wi-Fi or wired or not. But let's take them off real quick. See if we can get that connection dialed in. Max, we're gonna try to come back to you if we can get that connection fixed. But for the time being, uh, John and I, let's just talk over these markets. Kind of replicate what Max was saying there. Thanks again, Max. Let's. Uh, we'll get you dialed in and behind the scenes here. But uh, okay. yeah, so he okay, yeah. So let's talk about what he was saying there. Kind of uh, help me recap that. Well, you know, the one thing that, that that I'm confused about is you know where this where this this uh, this uh, zone came in off the daily chart. Now it's a little bit different because he's using a back tested chart, right? And you know, some people like back tested charts. Some people don't like back back tested charts. So. You know what I think he was looking at was I mean this was this this is the one minute chart and this is really r right on the open right I mean we left the opening range at the high of the session we went down and this was the bar that he was fo this was the swing low that he was focusing on mm -hmm. now again I'm not Max I'm not in his in his brain but right. you know then he's looking for you know some sort of confirmation after a pullback on this bar here and then he sees the the high volume on that one minute chart so he says ah okay mm -hmm. so now i'm gonna i think he said his his entry was going to be halfway in the middle of that of that bar right there so he marks the low he gets a push a little consolidation and then he watches for the next pullback out of that consolidation and if it's on higher volume He's waiting for the pullback to halfway through the candle, and that's where he's getting in. And his stop was, I believe, down below this level. So he's risking about, uh, you know, let's say, let's call it 12 points in the S&Ps. And this kind of volatility, that's not, you know, that's not outrageous. It's, it's a lot of dough, though, with six contracts on. So hats off yep. to Max. Um, and then, you know, he's looking to see, you know, when the next, when the next kind of strong up bar comes in. And if it penetrates that, and within the next, uh, within the, you know, at some point in the in the, you know, it's got to be a strong up bar. It's got to be a high volume up bar. When it penetrates that, that's his warning sign that the that the move may be over. He moves his stop up, stays in the trade until finally it, ta it takes him out. Now, Max, I, you know, I know you're. I think you're listening. I think you're here. No, not yet. Not yet. So. You know, I, I, I'm thinking I'm pretty close to the thought process that Max had on that particular trade. You know, it's, you know, he's, he's looking at his chart using his tool <clears throat> and he's, he's got a, he's got a volume chart. So what a volume chart is, and I love these, I think this is a fantastic idea. Yep. 
the the bigger the volume on the on the bar, the fatter the bar gets. The bigger, say that again. The bigger the bar, so say the again. higher the volume of each bar. If it's a high volume bar, the bar itself gets really fat. If it's a low volume bar, it gets really thin. I never noticed. So it that. makes it totally really vis visible totally to see. Right. Right. Yeah, right? you're right. I've never noticed that. Holy shit. Uh -huh. <laughs> I learned yeah. something today. <laughs> Fuck yeah. that. Hey, hey, there's there's stuff to learn here all day. Every Unreal. Day. What we, it sure does, what we Johnny. Love about this. What I'll we love be damned. About this. Never yeah, confident chair never noticed that either. How about it? Uh -huh. yeah, the fatter the bar. Yeah, you have to, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, and you know, that's if uh that's something that people want to see we can you know eventually add that to top step t uh, top step x i think it's a really really cool thing because you're able yeah. to see you know a bar that has higher volume without looking away from the chart or the bar you know we all have these volume bars at the bottom here but just to see a you know to, to be able to see that the, the bar is a little bit fatter because there's more volume it's a lot of volume it gets really big and you know really wide and if it's a little bit yeah. of volume it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's much thinner. So they're, uh, they're volume bars and, you know, they're, they're really cool. I, you know, I, I've seen Sick. them on platforms, um, you know, other platforms, but you know, I, we've never had, I don't, I don't think one here at top step that, that actually has them. So I think that would be a cool thing to add. Sick. Nice, Johnny. Thank you for that. Well, uh, let's take a look put it on youtube janesh clip it and put it on youtube we do like to, what would you, janesh what exactly would you like clipped and put on youtube be a little bit more specific i think we can help you out with that I'll take a quick look at tilt i keep going back to tilt because i'm noticing heavy biases both long in the ym and long in the es es at 73 74 percent now long ym 81 percent long so we will keep an eye on that john we got uh, about 11 minutes left here and maximize mm -hmm. with Max Maserati. Unfortunately, we couldn't officially like go all out maximizing. Technology happened to get in the way. That does tend to happen. John, uh, I don't think you're going to be on the Power Hour, but help me talk through Power Hour. You know, we got Netflix earnings coming up. Yes. You know, obviously, we're not we're not on during earnings per se. But how do we trade? How do you interpret it? You know, how do we now we got earnings season kicking into high gear, especially next week with all the Mag Seven reporting? How do we? You know, how do we navigate the earnings season when it comes to trading? Um, if at all, it's a really good, it's a really good question, Andre. I'm sure a lot of traders over the years have pondered that question. <laughs> I think you know, with with everything that's going on in the world and all of the uncertainties and everything, there's a lot of weight being put on some positive earnings here. And I think if the earnings disappoint you know um mm. with the with the current uncertainties and mm. you know we don't know what other uncertainties are going to happen between now and then mm. you know it could be a, a rough earning season this morning on the opening call i was looking you know i've got a if you if you look at investing.com and you look at yeah. their earnings calendar you know any misses are are in red any any uh any you know any any beats are green and I'm just by looking at the kind of heat map right this morning a lot of red a lot mm. of red a lot more red than I'm used to seeing so you know I don't know I mean what are what are the earnings going to be like I mean you know you got six eight stocks that are the bulk of the stock market those are the ones that are really going to matter you know the the banks you know a little bit some of the bigger companies um, you know, I, it all depends on how they come out. My good friend, you know, if they, if they're, if they're doing well, we got to We got to kind of expect that Tesla's not doing all that well. No, it's not. Um, uh, you know, but, if, but the other magnificent six, you know, if they do well, great, man, that's going to help boost these equities up and, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can turn this thing around and start heading back higher and, you know, Maybe even more importantly than that, we can find peace somewhere here in, in soon. That would be ideal. Right? That would be ideal, yes. Uh, there are some breaking news. I don't know how much this is market-related. I kind of – U.S. is trying to uh, assist uh, a bit of a peace process out in the Middle East. Uh, we don't need to go into the details. It's just something to keep an eye on. We are seeing gold catch a – or gold. It goes all the time. I got to separate these charts. Gold is catching a bit of a bit. Oil is as well. Oil – 
touched, uh, gave uh, VWAP a little kiss on the cheek there and turned around and ran away. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a little schoolboy in the playground or something like that. It might be a very outdated <laughs> reference. Hold on. I might want to take that back. That might be a very outdated reference these days. Uh, <laughs> I turned around about 28% or 28 cents there to the upside. Uh, gold gold uh, touch VWAP as well, trading 23.94. Now uh, popped up four bucks to 23.98. But we are keeping an eye on that volume. Uh, we have about eight minutes left here in Maximizing <clears throat> with Max Maserati. Coming up next is Power Hour with our new good friend, Zach Anthony. I see he just logged into the green room, so that should be exciting. Please stay tuned. Nice. I have not met Zach Anthony. All right, John, so we're kind of chopping around here. What's Delta at? Last time we checked, we were at plus 5,800. That was about 25 minutes ago. So this is something we're going to keep an eye on going into Power Hour. So how are we looking on that old Delta reading there? 6,200 positive in the S&P is negative 3,400 in the NASDAQ. And in the Dow, positive uh, 1,000. You know, the, the kind of um, inert for the, for the Dow, but not when you're looking at where price is. Price is, you know, just lingering around the lows here. So if there's buyers coming in here creating that positive delta and they want to flatten, it could be an interesting... Uh, Interesting opportunity for everybody uh, during power hour. I agree. I agree with that. Thank you. Yes. Uh, in the chat here, we got some very good words of wisdom from uh, where? Where is it? Where was it? Uh, Bryce D here. Just short and shut your trap. Bryce D. I appreciate that uh, trading idea. Maybe we just get short and we shut our trap, and we will collect profits that way. All right, all right. I just did it. Yeah, you know what? I, I listened to that. Thing. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, John. All right, Bryce D. We uh put we put our money where your mouth is. No, so we are going to shut our not, trap. I did, I did, I did not. Did. I, did not I wish me. you did. did not put I wish out. you did. We would have put our money where someone else's mouth is, but um we are seeing some bit of sellers. We are in a range bottom looking at the five minute here on the S and P's and Nasdaq. We did perhaps see a range ex attempted range extension, the downside and upside for that matter. Both yeah. rejected. So we're in the range right now, John. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of what we were saying that was probably going to happen. We did extend the range a little bit below that, but, you know, the market came right back in. You know, there's our little range extension right down there. Those little three ticks down there. Ooh, yeah, I know. big range tried. extension. And, and now it's back in range. Uh, it seems as though we're still seeing some possible resistance up here at the initial balance low. 50, 50, 75. K period came right up to it has not come back inside of it uh you know this this is what i'm looking for is for price to stay below that initial balance and to see some range extension to the downside as the day kind of finishes out here but because again we've traded both sides of the initial balance the initial balance high up here 50 76 quarter we traded above it rejected we traded below it we're still showing signs of possible rejection of the initial balance low. This that's what makes this you know what makes this so difficult, Andre. Hit me. <laughs> because oh, it, the price is just kind of meandering around the IB low for so long here. If you're short below it and you get you go the wrong way, you're probably going to get stopped out. If you're long above it and it and it rotates lower, you're going to get stopped out. This yes. will just chew you to ribbons. Yes. I guess maybe it's a good idea to, to remain patient until maybe later on in the day when when price is going to resolve one way or the other and you only take one profit or one loss. It's uh it's been tough. You know, the, it has the been Dow tough. Speaking of has tough. Been you, want, you want to know who's tough? Our man Max Maserati right there. Tough toughing it out through spotty connections out in London, in London, England right now. Max, you are back. We got about four minutes left here for maximizing with Max Maserati. We appreciate you coming on. We appreciate you working with us behind the scenes to get that connection nice and strong. Max, welcome back. What are we thinking here for the rest of the day? Give me some words of wisdom going into power hour here. Uh, starting about seven minutes. Help me. Uh, what are you looking for in the, going into the close? Definitely from, from what I'm seeing is like uh, highly likely I'm expecting a bounce up a little bit, but um, yeah. price might just consolidate within this area because I'm not seeing anything like neat because like price is making a uh, new low every time price is making uh a, an external block and it's violating it going up 
violating volume, violating everything. Uh -huh. So highly likely price is entering consolidation. And we are below the yesterday close, which is the settlement line. Ooh. We are below it. Ooh. Since price is, is trading below it, and then it's not going up, it's not going down. As you can see on the daily external, um, um, Max Maserati daily external block, so you can see the price is between the line 50, 40, 0, 0 and the settlement line. So price is bouncing between these two levels because we have a lot of buyers and sellers interacting. So the sellers wants, wants to put, push price down. But since we have a high volumes buyers at this level, so they are trying to push, push price up and then none of them are succeeding now so we just yes. waiting if price close above the settlement line maybe we might see a nice moves up and then we have a lot of liquidity on the upside so so let's see let's see but once price violates 50 20 to 50 so um the long uh are over we are over <laughs> okay uh -huh. so look out below 22 halves 50 22 <laughs> half is the level uh, then we'll be targeting 55,000s maybe again, a little retest, but we will be keeping an eye on that. But, John, he did say the magic words. We are below yesterday's low. That is a yeah. uh, bearish signal, according to our, Austin, our guest here, Max Maserati, as well. Austin Silver, we've getting it from everywhere. It's really cool to be learning new things like this. Uh, Janesh is yeah, asking, well, Max, where can they me. follow you? Max, where are your social, your socials? Where can they follow okay, you? Okay, you can have... follow me on dr.maxmaserati on Twitter. And then I have some, I have the free, uh, free uh, recorded webinar. I, uh, on, on the, I have the link on my Twitter. You can just click on the link and watch all the videos I've made, like live webinar I've made. And uh, regarding my strategy and how to take trades. And then I think the last webinar I did, I explained exactly point by point my personal strategy. And I think, yeah, you can just go and watch them one by one. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me. And, um, and you can follow me on, um, on, on Discord as well. Yes. It's the same name, Max Maserati as well. So Love you'll find name. my bio link on my Twitter. Just click on it, and then you'll find all the all the link to follow me. Anyway, just feel free to ask me any questions, anything you have. I'll be more than happy to respond to you guys. Thank you very much, Max and Maserati. We'll have him on soon enough. Max, thank you. Please continue to share those levels in the chat for us, uh, especially during fast markets. Max, we really appreciate those. Currently, we're looking for 50, 22 half downside in the S&Ps. If we can break through that, look out below. John? Uh, that was awesome. Good job trying uh, improvising on the fly there. We're kind of working yeah. together, building this airplane yeah. in the air. Uh, John, yeah. words of wisdom going into power hour. Thank you again, Max. So John, take us away. Dr. Max, always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, words of wisdom, uh, think risk first, man. If you know where your stop's going to be, you know where your entry should be. So, and uh, boy, the, yesterday's from... Uh, uh, from uh, KV, uh, fortune KV. KV. Was was too good. I can't beat that. So I'll just go with that. <laughs> I put you on the spot. <laughs> Dr. Max. Everyone. Dr. Max, thank you so much. Stay tuned for Power Hour. We'll see you here in a couple minutes. Thank you.
Let's go. Power Hour, Top Step TV on this Thursday. Big earnings after this Power Hour. Don't forget, we got Netflix after the bell. We will keep an eye on that. ASFX in the chat. That's Austin Silver says, what's up to his man, the man in the middle, Zach Anthony, joining us from Brooklyn. What up, Zach? What's up, guys? Much, man. How we doing? Not much. Dolby time. There's a guy I got Dolby to the left. Uh, to screen right of him with the really cool background going. The trippy Yolo Bolo, if you will. Dolby time. It is the Yolo Bolo. The Yolo Bolo. Get it right. Like the Ohio State University. Zach Anthony, right. you are in a trade. Please tell us what your trade. Tell us about the position. How many contracts and from what price? Yes, sir. Um, so I'm in a long on Nasdaq from seventeen five forty five. And okay. uh, yeah, I, I I'm gonna move my stops to break even already because I mean we're super bearish, but I like where we're positioned at on the daily chart and the four hour. So from the higher time frame, you know it looks like we can get a reasonable bounce over here. I like that we uh, swept we swept liqui- uh, liquidity already. We kind of created some relative equal highs over here, which I like to target. So we're gonna see. I'm going for a minimal. Uh, let's see. It's I'm going for a minimum of like 200 ticks, but I think if this Damn. thing gets going, it, it could be a pretty okay. big trade. So we'll see. We'll we'll, we'll play it by oh, ear. Yeah. It's looking good so far, though. You always go for 200 ticks on these trades. Um, sometimes with Nasdaq, it it all it all depends. I go for a minimum of 100 ticks, and my okay. stop loss is usually 50 ticks. Okay. But uh, I'll, you know, I'll target 150, 200. You know, often, especially lately, man. I mean, Nasdaq has been crazy volatile. I'm actually trading micros right now because right. the volatility is just insane. No, I respect that. Yeah. It's, called, it's how you shift gears. It's uh, it's very smart. Uh, it's really good. We'll keep an eye on I that. Mean, you could still make a, you could still make a thousand dollars trading micros on Nasdaq lately. Like yes, you can easily. 
I think people underestimate just how much Easily. money you can make with micros, especially in volatile markets. If you're trading like the YM, I think that might be kind of like pulling teeth a little bit. What with the NASI, I mean, opportunity abound. Hundred percent. I would agree with that. All right, gentlemen. Well, this is power hour, so we're gonna keep an eye on tilt. All right, I gotta keep bringing up tilt, guys, because tilt's been super heavy long in S and P's. We got seventy seven percent long in the S and P's, seventy five percent long in the Dow. So bulls, that's seventy five percent long in Nasdaq as well. So we do have a heavy tilt bias to the upside. We'll see if we can get some follow through. We're taking a look at the five minute chart here. We are seeing we are at the upper end of the ranges here in the S and P's, Nasdaq, and Dow. Quick Delta update from my man, John, uh, plus 5,300 in ES. Didn't quite catch the NASDAQ. One second, minus 3,300 in NASDAQ. So a bit of a divergence there. We'll see how that plays out here and over the next 50 minutes. So we are seeing a bit of a bid here. Zach Anthony, since we spoke last time, this is a question I've been asking. I'm going to sound like a broken record here. How are you now? You said it's crazy volatile in the NASDAQ. A lot of it has to do with... Geopolitical risk coming over from the Middle East. How is that why you've adjusted and switched down to micros just due to all the volatility that we've been seeing lately? You know, really, uh, today's my first day trading micros again. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's just it's just been so volatile. I already made a little bit of a profit on the day, so I don't want to give too much of it back uh, on NASDAQ in the afternoon. So it just makes sense right now. But, you know, I've actually been trading a lot of crude oil at a really nice crude oil long today. Um, earlier like around 11 a.m and yeah i've just I, i've noticed that i've been focusing a bit more on cl and only okay. trying to take the the highest probability nasdaq trades because it's just so whippy like this one this looks really good to me i mean this looks like an a setup for me so how okay tell me why does it look like an a it. setup tell me why it looks like an a setup you know if we're if we go to the daily chart on nasdaq i mean obviously we've we've had some crazy big down moves but we're over here in this last bit of consolidation back from uh, January 31st. This is like really the last line of defense on the daily chart before we have this imbalance. And yeah. I just think it, you know, bulls are going to try to defend this level. You know, I'm not looking for, you know, to hold the trade for three days. This is an intraday move. And I just think with the volatility we've been having, we could definitely see a reasonable bounce over here. Then, from the uh, the lower time frames too, you know, we've just been consolidating here, and I liked how we came down, swept this low, moved back up, and now we've just about held this low. So I decided it's worth a shot right here on that on that last pullback, and yeah, it's looking good right now. So we'll see. I like that. All right, Dolby time. What are we looking at over there in the YM? We are at the upper end. Thirty of this minute range. range. Thirty-eight thousand even. Thirty-eight thousand even right now. Yep. Looking at the 30 minute range in YM. If you didn't watch fast markets this morning, I had a pretty good trade. I uh, ended up closing yeah. that out maybe a little bit early, but ended up getting quite a bit of money on that one. Switched to a 100K account, basically took a continuation trade, got another 800 in the 100K account. So we're up, I don't know, almost like 800 bucks in two accounts so far, which is pretty cool. But I did lock out nice. the 50K. Uh, so I am going to switch to the 100 and try to rock this one for a bit. I am very interested in some shorts right now, actually. But we are making On the YM, time. Dolby? Take a minute. Yeah, I might need to take a minute here and uh, digest a little bit. Fair enough. Uh, we are seeing gold push up against that 2400 level, trading 23.99, 20 cents, we'll call it. So we're right there. I'm not so sure. I'm not so certain how much that – Level matters anymore as if we've been up and down all around through it. So it is it is a big fat round number. We just gravitate towards it again. We saw S and P stuck around fifty one hundred level for a few days earlier this week. The gold does the same thing and just hovers around twenty four hundred till new information enters the market. Again, we do have Netflix after the bell today. Uh, if you remember in and the Q or Q four for twenty twenty three, they absolutely smashed it. Uh, higher subscribers, the password, cracking down on the password sharing, also success. So we'll see if some of that momentum does carry into today's earnings call. Uh, nothing really popping here in the equities to give us indication. Maybe someone did get those earnings early, but nothing really showing us here. All right, we are seeing a bit of a pop in the Dow. Yeah. We'll see if we can 
breakthrough. To, is, a, is a range extension? Don't be help me talk to the terminology. A range extension or attempted range extension? Oh, it's it's attempted for right now, but you know I don't like getting into a position into a strong candle. So this is a pretty long five minute candle that's done a lot of work and been testing thirty eight thousand thirty eight. So I want to wait probably another five minute candlestick and see if this will get into some sort of like spinning top formation or something approximate because we want to see it kind of like take time to to make the turn and to you know absorb whatever buyers and sellers are happen to be operating at that area. So I do want to wait just a little bit and have it kind of confirm that because you can get burned, uh, you know, hopping into a short or a long too early on a really strong candlestick. So I just want a little bit more confirmation. That's all. Definitely. Yeah. Especially with like I just higher moved, lows. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm uh, sorry. I just uh, wanted to update. I moved my stops to break even. Uh -oh. So. Risk free trade for now. We'll just let it ride and see what happens. We've had a debate yeah. today, Zach Anthony, on it's my favorite topic. Is it worth is it worth moving the stop to break even? We've had a it's been an ongoing debate today. Does it do more good or does it do more damage? Uh, you know, I, I think it stop moving on... it up to break even. It's a safe play. It's definitely a safe play. But more often, I don't want to say more often than not, but very you'll see it a handful of times. It's not infrequent, I should say, where. The market will retest your entry price, but then continue to go in the direction that you initially thought it would. Therefore, moving stop to break even could kind of backfire. So it's been a debate we've been having, but I understand both sides of it. Uh, I understand why you did it. Yeah, I, th I think it depends on your strategy. Like for me, I'm using tight stops and I'm usually taking one or two losses, maybe a break even or two before my trade hits. So gotcha. for me, I kind of have to do it, but it, it really depends on on your strategy and your system, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Depends on your entry. Kung Fu says, Anne Marie says 17,650 next target likely in the NQ. Oh, she likes to tell the upside here. I think Zach Anthony would like it to the upside as well. I'm kind of wishing I took that short off the, off the rit. We'll see if we can you know, get it's, like it's a, again. get up. I know you can't Dang. wait. You know, good right either, now. either you're too early, too late. You know, it seems like it's kind of a crapshoot. You know, is it going to just shoot up? Is it going to stop run? Is it just going to hit it in reverse? You never know. It's the game we play. No, you don't. It's the, what we signed up for. Pretty pretty awesome here. Yeah, I know. We, uh, we got... Uh... Right, do we do you... Um... Do you do you use like a set amount of uh, ticks or, or points that you look for on every trade? Is it like systemized or is it more of a feel thing for you? That's a, that's a great question. So for this, uh, for April, I, I challenged myself to stick to a consistent take profit system. And uh, basically what it is, is I will like find a range. I'll just use this one, for example. And so like, let's say I got short at like 38,040 at the top of this range, like my TP one or take profit one would be like the halfway point. So 37,971. The second would be the bottom of the range. And then if I had a third contract, it would be the extension out. So I'm trying this where it's just all structural. So, um, you know, we'll kind of see how it goes. I mean, so far it's been fine. So, uh, you know, I can have some really good risk reward. Like, for example, I was short, what, I was short like 38,280 this morning in YM and held that trade for like a little over an hour. Damn. And I actually got out of it a little bit early because we didn't even reach the midway point, which we actually did get to which was 38,075 and it continued all the way down. So that was actually a range to range trade in, in the daily because the daily was range bound. So that's how I'm uh, trying to run it for right now. Yeah. Being able to identify those like macro ranges, like from the daily chart, I mean, you can get some really long moves there. It's a good trade. Yeah. And that's, that's the gist. Cause you know, if you play longer time frames, you get larger movement out of that. And so if you can mm -hmm. find a way to get like, a one minute setup, but you're actually trading it on like a one hour chart. Well, now you have like very little risk to like massive reward, especially if you get the momentum. I, I completely favor. agree. Yep. That, that's what I try to focus on. Use four hour and daily levels and then take intraday trades off those levels because they're just yeah. way higher probability than like fiddling it. in the middle, as you guys like to say. Hey, yeah. someone's been watching Top Step TV. I like to hear it. So <laughs> oh, yeah, I man. like to. Hey, Zach, quick question before the fireworks really start popping here on Power Hour at Top Step TV. Hashtag Power Hour, by the way. 
I'm going to ask Dolby okay. to explain hashtag Power Hour after this very, very important question. This hard-hitting question for Zach Anthony. What is the best pizza in Brooklyn? Oof. Man, you know, I, told you. This, I wasn't this playing around today, man. I start told, some fights I, with people. <laughs> I wasn't playing around. You know, man, for Pauly me, G's. for me, a Pauly G's. Biased. This is Pauly G's. Pauly G's. Yeah, yeah, this is the thing, man. Every there's so many pizzerias with the same exact name. So I, I got to know the neighborhood that you're talking about. But uh, huh. for me, it's Joe and John's in Ridgewood, Queens. There you go. Someone in the chat, Joe and John's Rich was Queen. Shout out, shout out to Joe and John's. There you go. In the uh, there we go. He knows in the chat. They were wanting to know. They were wanting to know. All right, we're starting to see a bit of wiggle here. Thank you for that hard hit. Thank you for answering that hard hitting question there, Zach. I appreciate it. Put you <laughs> anytime, on the spot. Man, anytime. You got it. You got it. Didn't even flinch. Will be time with the stunners on. Looking, looking. I was about to swear there. Looking really good. <laughs> oh yeah. Will be time, Dre. Tell them. Uh, tell them about hashtag. Hey, tell them about hashtag Power Hour. Hashtag power. We're trying to get on social media here, people. So we have a great community during power hour. People are tuning in, want to hang out, but we also want to hang out with you on social media. So we have an X account at Top Step Official, and we have an Instagram account at Top Step. So use that, tag us, hashtag power hour. And uh, if you uh, have a killer killer trade that you had, or if you uh, you know maybe got a funded certificate or something that you're proud of, you know, please share it with the hashtag and then we'll share it on air so you can see your success on air in real time. But that is the goal. Awesome. And no one's there using that go, man. hashtag. Yeah. Get so that recognition. That yeah, yes. I mean, why not? Zach, I like you, man. Thanks for joining joining us again, Zach. Quick turnaround there. I think we met you last week, I want to say, and you're back on yeah. our Yeah, it was last already, week. Man. Yeah, good stuff, man. Good yes, stuff. sir, man. All right. You still in those longs there, Zach? Yeah, it just uh, I'm still alive, man. Um, my entry is at seventeen five forty four dot two five. So forty four quarters. We're still All right, alive I like right now. Um, yeah, we'll true. see, man. We'll see. All right, looking to take a hundred ticks profit. I'm not. We'll see. We'll see if we get those hundred ticks out of this market right now. Yeah, we got about 40 minutes left here in the session. As far as the tilt goes, everything kind of neutral, flattened out a little bit. We are seeing a little bit of heavier tilt in the ES out of all of them, 69% long. But nothing jumping off the page at me right now. Uh, I'm going to stack we're trying some to figure shorts out. up. You got some shorts in there? All right, cool. Tell us about the shorts, uh, Dolby, because gold, gold's just screwing around with uh, 2400. doesn't can't make up its mind. Dolby, tell us about these shorts you're looking at taking. I'm going to try to get some shorts off at 38,031, 38,043, and 38,049 to the upside. Okay. I don't know if we're going to get back up there, but that's that's the idea. So we're going to short the top of the 30-minute range. I like it. We did see a bit that's of a spike political. up there. Bit of a kiss, yeah. bit of a spike. It's uh, one of those ones National, like, ah, National has a question in here. Yes, National. Zach knows our names. That was just a once in a lifetime opportunity that kind of landed in my lap. And uh, you had to ask the question, but he, Justin will be back on with us. He's a good sport about it. But yes, uh, Zach knows our names for sure. He, uh, That's so funny. He's not as bro <laughs> oh, yeah, as I was our. Watching uh, that actually. <laughs> did you watch that, oh, man? That, that, he's such a bro. Yeah, he's a good yeah, kid. I saw that. Good trader. I, good actually, trader. I actually love good. that kid. He's a great yeah. trader, man. 100%. Justin is a great trader. That was, that was hilarious, though. Hundred percent. You could see he would kind of tiptoe around it, and he would uh, take it back. So I'm like, he has no idea. So we're gonna clobber him with this. Uh, we're gonna blindside him with this question, and we're gonna end off that and drop the mic and stick the landing, and that's what yeah. we did. So, but yes, he'll be back on this. Super cool, super cool. Hell of a trader. He's a good sport. Uh, let's all right back to these markets. Let's see if we can get these things rocking and rolling here. We got about 40 minutes left in Power Hour. They'll be working some offers a bit above the range here. Let's see if he gets that Zach Long. Zach Long for 44 quarter here in the NASDAQ. Look at squeeze 100 ticks out of this market. We'll see if he can do that. Uh, gold can't make up his mind what to do with these 2400s. Oil trading around 80 or 82 bucks even. So right on VWAP. What's, so Zach, you're long 17,545? Uh, yeah, 544 and a quarter. 44 quarters. 544 four and a quarter. Right, yeah, nice line on here. Nice little entry. It's looking like it's about to be over, though. We'll see. We're getting close. Like, you're, you're break even. Yeah, it is. It's getting pretty close. Yeah. 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 Nice range, though. I mean, really nice and boxy. If you can draw a box, you can trade a range. There it is. 
I mean, pretty pretty straightforward. Not a bad entry, though. I mean, I, I kind of like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just unlucky that you didn't get the extension to, to the upside. They tried. Yeah, you know, I could have been smart just playing the range, but I think this is an issue that I need to look at when I'm trading micros because if I was trading minis, I probably would have taken my profit at like 150 ticks. But I'm just kind of ah, now I'm looking for more because I'm on the micros. That's a good bit of self awareness, though. I mean, that you're uh -huh. even recognizing that that you would have because it's a, it's a small amount of money. Is that, that's what you're saying, right? It's like only 150 bucks yeah. or whatever versus 1500. Yeah, like like yeah, like I was up um, like 400 bucks at one point. It's like that's still a nice trade, you know. It's and yeah, yeah. we are counter trend, so but we'll see. Yes. Yes. That's, I say that all the time. I'm in a position. It's like, well, see what happens. Nothing we can do about it. Yes. Austin Silver, your buddy Austin I mean, Silver maybe, here is saying, yeah. Zach should be trading minis, not micros. We talk a little bit of trash <laughs> here, Zach. What's up with him, man? What's going on? You guys beefing or what? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, Austin's from the Northeast too, man. So we got that, that uh, you know, it, like it's it. like a healthy, friendly beef. It's fun. We like to mess with each other. Love it. Love it. Good stuff, man. So what are you doing trading? That's kind of what we're trying to have replicate here at Top Step TV. The camaraderie that you had either in the trading galleries in some uh, boutique or big time proprietary trading firm or on the floor. You know, trading can be lonely, uh, especially, you know, everyone's working from home now, trading from home. The big trading offices are few and far between now unless you're working from the big banks or a couple of the prop proprietary firms. So what we got going here is as close as we can to replicating it. Post COVID, I would say the post COVID era changed everything, and uh, now we're trading like a big, one big fan, one big team, good camaraderie. Everything's all in fun. Yeah, man. To collect, make profits together. Yeah, sh shout doing. out, shout out the Black Shirt Club because they are my group, and that's what keeps me active and connected with other traders. Love it's it. definitely essential for me. I can't do this alone. Nope. Good stuff. I shout out to the Black it's Shirts. Hard. Shout out to Black Shirts, man. Yeah, that's the name of a. Uh... Austin Silver's group, right? Is Black Shirts, or is that like a subgroup of the group? Yeah. Um, it's it's uh like the private mentorship of the group. There's like 20 of us, so maybe maybe oh, nice. 20 or 30 of us, and we get like private coaching. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. group. We got a good group of, of uh, traders right now in there. Beautiful. Yeah. It helps a lot. Wow, man, I got really lucky. I mean, we we still might get tagged out, but this thing <laughs> came like two ticks from my entry. And now it's, yeah. it's going back up for now. This is what we were talking about. Okay. This is what we're Can talking about. I just say that something? Move. That's what I, 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 I need to say this. This is what I love about futures because I came from the FX space. And yep. in an FX firm or a CFD firm, I would have gotten stopped out there for sure with spread. And with futures, I get tagged in or tagged out at my exact price. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that futures are real? Is that what you're trying to say here, Zach? The futures are real. I might be saying futures are real. <laughs> Ooh, I'm uh, correct. True prices. On true some price. of these. Okay, we're starting so to see a pop here I'm in the Dow. Can the Nasdaq yeah. follow the Dow's lead? Dow's making the move to the upside. Will Nasdaq follow the Dow here? S and P's trying to catch the bid, but uh, definitely saw the first pop out of the corner of my eye in the Dow here. We'll see a bit of a sell off. All right, Zach. I like it. I like it. Zach's long from 44 quarter. Now we're currently trading 60s. So in the money a little bit here. Let's see if we can get some follow through and push to the upside. Maybe even catch that view app for that 100 tick winner. That'd be pretty sweet. Pretty sweet here on uh, Power Hour. Obi, did you get did you get any fills there on that pop there in Dow? Yeah, I got one. I got oh. 38,031. So I took Thank like you, literally no no heat on it and just rolled over immediately like, nice a, like a puppy dog. Nice fill. So let's see if we can get um i don't know chat what do we think chat give me give me a range between thirty-seven thousand eight forty and thirty-seven thousand nine fifty-two for a take profit so it's, it's this box this purple box let's see if we can find a, a, a an exit for this for this short here let's see what they say hmm how aggressive is chat and taking profits? Yeah, get yeah, chat. How aggressive are we? Ooh, yeah, we got close to that to entry. Zach, we got close to that entry price again. Real but luckily, close. I'm still Nasdaq in, did the right thing. Nasdaq in. did the right thing and turned around. Come on, we I gotta it, blow on the screen. You gotta blow on the <laughs> screen, tickle that thing, make it run away from 44s. 
Send that sucker to 640s. Do the right thing, NASDAQ. Uh, looking at the tilt here. Still got 73% long in the ES. 70, 68% long in NASDAQ. I am chilling at 70% long. So everyone's long here. We do have a Delta update from John, my man. About two minutes ago, plus 5,100. Nothing crazy there. Ooh, Hoagland's aggressive. Hoagland wants 905s. Anne Marie's got targeted 650. 650 in the 650 for Dow. Uh, sorry, 650. I said scratch that. 650 Nasdaq. 17,650. Oh, okay. It's a 650 would be you know, tight, Dolby, right wouldn't it? Dolby, <laughs> we're eating lobster tonight, man. If 650 trading Dow. Seriously, do they take sim credits at uh, at Gibson's? I think they do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of steakhouses, Pete Luger's. Any thoughts on Peter Luger's steakhouse there, Zach Anthony? You know, I've never been, actually. Never been. Eh, I don't think you're missing much. Never <laughs> been. It's okay. It was okay. No, I'm probably... I've always probably... been uh, more of an outback guy. No, right on. The Blooming yeah, Onion. Can't blame go. you. Can't blame you. Yeah, man. Can't blame <laughs> you, but, uh, yeah. All right, Naz looking long. All right. Yeah, like, that's really crazy, man. Just tight. pop 20. Look at that. Here's a push. Here's a push. Very, Luger's very the best. Have, yeah. Sorry, we got like a 30 minute. We got a five minute within a 30 minute. Oh, who, did uh, you go to Peter Luger's? Yeah, at, uh, I want to see us break out of this range. Oh, was it the Caesars? I did not. I'd been in the, I've been in the one in Brooklyn. And hmm. uh, it was good. It was good. Very old school yeah. vibe, which is cool. I like that steakhouse feel. Very cool. It was actually there with Michael. Actually, there with Patak, with Michael Patak. Oh, nice. Not. Yeah. Uh, gold coming back, pulling to VWAP here. Touch, touching VWAP as we speak. We'll give it a little kiss. 23.95. Hit it up. Try to. Rejected 2400s. Well, this might be entry. It might be in the range here between 23.95 and 2400. I'm hanging out right now. Golden Steer in Vegas, definitely good. Anything. Great, great Caesar salad. The Golden Steer in Vegas, great Caesar salad. All right, Gold seeing some push through to the downside. Quiz winners, you know we got quiz winners. Karen Ender, you know we got you. Sit tight, hang on. We got you. I think the market's going to start moving though. So James, if we got those quiz winners, whenever you're ready, feel free to pop in here. Equities haven't really got going off yet. Yeah, JD here. We can yeah, do a quiz right now range. if you want. Thank you. Uh, yeah, JD, it, let's bro. do it. <laughs> JD, if you're ready, uh, if you're ready, let's pop those in there. We're getting close to the bottom let's of the hour. Let's do it. Oh, what do we got? Good story about uh, Outback Steakhouse too. I don't know. How, I don't remember how it happened, but uh, ended up there. My wife and I ended up at an Outback Steakhouse with a group of friends watching the Kentucky Derby one year, and we just had a blast. And now my mother-in-law sends me a $100 gift card to Outback Steakhouse for my birthday every year. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> nice. Dude, that's good. That's uh, good stuff. That's awesome. good stuff. That's a great story. How do we look at these numbers? Or how do we look at these names? Okay, someone put like 50 characters in as their name. You okay, you want to know, uh, one breath. You wanna know a fun fact about that long German name? It's not just gibberish. It's a real German that's thing. Good. I looked it up. It means, you're not going to believe this, Transport Infrastructure Financing Company. Wow. That's a real company. Wow. it's a lot of words. Uh, it's going to make for a difficult Google search over there in Germany when you're looking for a company that does exactly that. But yeah, very good to know. <laughs> wow. Thank that you for that. The word shaft makes me nervous. Yep. You're not wrong. Yep. Uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks pretty good. Yellow Trader slap that ass. Nothing crazy. Good job. Woozy woo. See there in their lot. Good stuff. Ooh, getting Thank you, a little bit of a push. All right. Taking quiz Thank winners you. down. Quiz winners are coming down. Quiz winners coming down. Karen, Take ask and shot. answered. Ask and you shall receive, Karen. Here we go, Dolby. A little push to the upside here. I don't know. I mean, technically, yes. In the yep. end, who knows? Who knows? But we're going to. Dolby, are, you, are you short already? Yeah, I've been short since like. When did I get in this thing? Um, no, that's not right. Orders. Uh, 24, so about seven minutes. Six minutes in this short. Seven to six minutes. And we're still going to try to add more as well. This is the 100K account. This is yeah, my I'm, least favorite account, so I'm right. I, I actually right really like the way you... Um, I actually really like the way you take your entries because it's so often you're not going to get that that perfect entry on the first one. 
Yeah. That's the thing, like, you don't know, like, maybe you get the full extension and you get all three. Maybe it, it just melts your face off and you take some losses. But at least, like, those contracts you were adding on, like, you're not taking full risk. So they're kind of like discounted ads if you get that range. You know, it just it just requires familiarity with the structure. Like, if you know that range, like, range runs can happen, then why not throw in a couple extra contracts? You'll risk, like, half of your first and maybe a quarter of your first. And so you kind of get, like, a discount uh, you know, add, you get to add, add a discount to your, to your trade. And if it works, you are sitting so pretty that it will just cover any losses you ever incur yep. from just having your face ripped off because your entry is essentially perfect within the range. Yeah, no, Better you can feel. get a really good average entry. Yep. That's what we're going to try to do. So now we got two at 38 something. Where's it at? Oh, 3807. We might get a third. And we might, and we might lose everything. Who knows? We'll see what happens. <laughs> we might lose everything. No, don't we? We cannot lose everything. We cannot, we cannot lose everything. You just made Zach leave. Zach, no, come back. Zach, no, come, come back. back. Sorry, I was. Yeah, that scared me, man. I can't. I can't lose. I can't see you lose. <laughs> right now. What do you mean? You're not totally lose everything. You should be feeling good. Come back. Zach. Come back. All right, pushing higher in the Nasdaq. Zach is lying from forty-four quarter. Currently trading five seven one. Little Delta update plus 6,900 ES minus 35,000. NASDAQ's got some shorts in here, Zach. They're going to start feeling some heat if we can get some push to the upside. So you might be positioned just right for this final half hour of yeah. markets. Yeah. And that's like a classic power hour move to me. You know, like you get that short squeeze of the bull trap in the last hour yep. of the trading session. Yep. So I, uh, I think we see a lot, a lot of profits here in Power Hour because, like we say, see the delta is. You know that you know where the clock is. Time is winding down. You know that some of these longs are shorts. Their hand is forced. And you also it know is, what the narrative yeah. is for the day. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Power Hour. Yep. I wonder what Edgeville has to say about that. I wonder if we can have uh, good question, Dolby. Thank you for even asking, my man. I wonder if our buddy can do some. What's his? What's his name again? Uh, Andre A. Andre A. Andre. Andre A. How did I forget yep. that? Yeah, Andre. Sure. Andre was awesome. He was so good. Sure, squeeze. Yes, with Delta. That's thank you, my man. Thank you, thank you. I don't want to risk. How much am I risking on this? That's like the one thing I'm not like locked in on yet is like managing like what what I want my total risk to be when I'm taking on like two or th like three contracts or more because it does kind of tighten up your uh, your 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 stop a little bit. Let's keep it at 420 though. Unironically, because that's just above the middle of the Shout daily out. range. Shout out. What up, Eddie? So let's see how this goes. This might be, you know, one of those situations where it takes a little bit of time to like actually turn around like the trade this morning. Yeah, this is a pretty slow power hour so far. Uh, are you, know, you saying you jinxed this deck? Are you are you taking blame <laughs> for the lack of volatility right now? <laughs> Dude. Nah, man, what's going to happen is now that I said that, it's going to break down <laughs> one direction. So here's the thing. The funny thing is we have – we've Joby and I were talking about this doing power players. The guests will come on and they'll blame themselves for lack of volatility in the market. And Dolby and I just sit back and let them take the blame <laughs> because – Short three. <laughs> yeah. We know the market doesn't give a shit who's on air. But these people come on and they think like they're the reason why the market stopped moving. And Dolby and I just let them bathe in that, uh, that shame. <laughs> if you will, so. You're a good sport about that. All, all right, Dolby, you're short three. You got all those working uh, yep. offers. You got filled yep. now. We're good. We're good. We're, we're done adding in. Our total risk is going to be 480 on the trade. Our you know possible upside here could be like up to two grand if we go range to range for the 30 minute. So four to one. I like those odds. Definitely. Let's see. This is mid. So let's see if we can pull one off at 37,977. Oh, that was uh, <laughs> shout out to Eddie there. Eddie, by the way, uh, keep an eye on those MOCs. I know he will. Yes, he over a billion. I will. Oh, he just ripped the, uh, ripped the bong there. Um, what do we got on? Yeah, I still feel fine about this.
It does feel it's a funny. I feel the same though. way about yeah. my long. Hey, both oh, can make money. Ooh, let's see what happens. <laughs> like this, I, I would like much this. rather be long to be honest, but it's just too expensive for me to take the trade. I would have preferred your entry. You know, at least you were within like a third of the bottom of that range for a long. But this might be an L here. Yeah, well, that's with with part of my strategy. That's because I use tight stops, and uh, mm. you know, I want my losers to be quick and my winners to to take longer. I try to like bottom tick. I try to get the best price possible at all times. Same. Like I, I agree. I wouldn't want to go long right where we're at right now. Yeah. Yeah. So you're more of a best price over best momentum. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean like a little that. bit of both, but it's it's definitely important for me to get the best price possible. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like just like from what I've noticed, it seems to be kind of like the two the two camps of, of day trading. It's either you're trying to find the best momentum and kind of ride that wave, or you're trying to catch the best price and then also ride that wave. Just two different types of two different types of trading. Um, we did get back to my yeah, entry yeah. here, which is interesting. Yeah, I might be able to tighten up my stop to 240. Let's go to 240 for total risk. We're getting back underneath this range. Come on down. We are on the range right now. Sure. Oh, Trader Cores. We literally just did the quiz winners about seven minutes ago. But I do not recall seeing your name on there. So we'll get after tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. Keep in mind, next week, huge earnings week. All the Mag 7 next week. We've got some inflation data too next week. So buckle up for next week. But uh, we're not there yet. We still got uh, this close and we got tomorrow. Hoop says ES needs to clear 50.58. And excuse me, says NASDAQ needs to clear 17,590. They push the upside. We've yet to do either in both markets. Put some levels there. You Thank you, Hoop. Got some declining volume, too. So we are. Let's see. Yeah, I don't feel as good about this as I used to, but also what I feel doesn't really matter because I'm terrible at reading momentum. So. That's something I have to like try to turn off. Do you ever do you ever find yourself kind of doing that, getting yourself sucked into like a system you don't like trade or believe in, and it's like you know influencing your trades, Zach? I mean, yeah, especially when I was um, still kind of working out my strategy. You know, I'd be changing things constantly, and then it works for a week, and then it stops working, and then I lose confidence in it. I think as long as you know you have a profitable strategy, like there's going to be ebbs and flows. It's really important to stay confident because when you lose that confidence, it really it doesn't matter. Like you're not going to trade well. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's you know I think it's just a part of like being a mature trader is just like owning your edge and knowing exactly who you are and like what your strengths are, and then just leaning into it as hard as possible, and then trying to turn off everything else that's not relevant to your system. Uh, good Momo so yeah, far. Exactly. Good Momo. Still want to see yeah, a flush. I'm not getting. Yeah. yeah, we're stuck as hell. We're yep. so stuck. Stuck in the mud. It's all right. I'm going to watch the ladder for a bit and see if I can pick up on anything. Any, any wiggles or whatever. Hey, so Dre, you were on with, with Max. Um, is was yeah. I right in, in interpreting how he does those big volume bars on his like on the 30 second chart? 100%. We actually asked him, we had a bit of spotty connection with them, but I did have, I was thinking about you. Uh, we we're talking about during power players, uh, power, power players, yes. And then we had uh, had my max just on, and we're talking about, I know that you've been taking a liking to strategy with the yeah. volume bars uh, showing conviction 100%. There'll be okay, uh, cool. like I I did just hear you say that you notice that volume is waning right now, which shows lack of conviction in any movement one way or another. But yeah, I think you summed it up perfectly, and that's what Max said in the previous segment. Cool. He looks to volume for confirmation in these moves. If um, especially yeah. if you get back to back, you know, bullish bars, you, you'll say the rally is on essentially. Hey, real quick, we got some liquidity here in the ES on the fifty fifty one dot seventy five. We got a five hundred lot sit on the bid. That's the biggest order I've seen all day. Got 450 sitting on the bid, about three ticks away. We're going to trade to it right now. But yes, Dolby, to answer your question, I think you got, uh, you're a quick learner. It's exactly what he's saying. Looking for conviction. Oh, that got pulled. So lame. 
Uh, I'm going to see if I can just add more contracts to this, but yeah. further up. I'm going to try to treat my 100K account like a lot more aggressive compared to like the 50 or 150, just to kind of see what see what happens. Try a different personality on this one. I've never traded a 100K account before, so this is all totally brand new. Zach, I got to say, I admire your patience, man. You just sit in these trades. I got to say, it's very impressive. You, you have conviction in these trades. You have conviction yeah, in your level. I think it was a great entry. I mean, yeah, you know, I got a good entry, so I'll, I'll sit here and wait, you know. Mm -hmm. I also have a good the upside. Entry, so we're just, we're just kind of like sitting here, I like that, <laughs> waiting for something to I like happen. That. Couple of good entries, putting it up. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like it. You know, Dolby, I, I um, do agree with you on treating accounts differently. If you are trading multiple accounts, um, hmm. I do that. I do that all the time. Like I, I treat combines way differently than I do XFAs and then I like to have more aggressive accounts and then more conservative accounts that I want to hold on to longer. I think it's just a nice way to kind of spread, spread out your risk and, and try some different things. Okay. We're short four. All right, our risk is still like so tight though. Like we're only risking 295 even still. I bet our total risk on this trade, if we get filled and stopped out on the other two contracts is going to be under $400. But it, it does feel very. Did you lower your stop loss? I did just over the pre, like previous five minute candle. It hasn't burned me too bad, uh, but we'll see how it plays out. Because I'm really just trying to size up. Like, how much size can I get for like as tight as risk as possible? I like that. All right, gentlemen, we got Please. seventeen less than seventeen minutes left in power oh hour here. Okay. Okay. Again, make sure you get those hashtag Power Hour submissions in. We'll scrape the internet and post them here on Power Hour. Great we idea, like Dolby Time. I think we got a couple of submissions. Uh, long, sorry, short, short six stopped out Damn. for. Ooh. What was the L that we took? It was pretty small though. I think it was like approximately three fifty. We lost on that one, so like not a ton. That's why well, I like damn, six I'm... contracts and you only lost three fifty. Yeah, that's why I like the YM. You can really th throw on some size for like very, very cheap, very, very cheap. We'll see if I get punished yeah, for. Can't being do aggressive. that with Nasdaq. God no, no, that's a recipe for disaster. Very, very tough to pull off. It's kind of unfortunate. We didn't really have any volume. It just kind of trickled up. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm hopping back right. in on the short side. I think that was uh -oh. the stop run. I'm hopping back in. We're going to keep our stop know. above middle of daily range, though. And we're just going to short everything up until that. Still see every time we come side. back up to this range, I, I get a little excited, and then it just lets me down. <laughs> This is much more experiment. This is like like my like experimental account. So let's just pedal to the metal a little bit and see what happens. A little pop here in uh, crude. Nothing significant. Just notice something popped up on the five minute chart here. Trading at the uh, upper end of the range. Looking at the five minute here in the YM Nasdaq as well. Nasdaq currently trying trading seventeen thousand five eight zero five eight one. Take your pick. But this is the upper end of the range. Looking at the five minutes. We'll see what ensues here in the last 15 minutes of the trade. Dolby, did you get back in? Sure did, boss. We got one. Gotcha. Lowly, lowly one contract. That's all we got. I, I feel like I might have gotten stop, stop run on that one. So li live and learn. Could be. Could be. Yeah. But for only $300 of risk, I think uh, you managed it yeah. well. Yeah, no big deal. We lost Chicago Sheriff says, come on, just break already. I know, seriously. Let's see if the market's listening. I agree. Yeah, I lost 135, 75, 45, 60, 35, and 20. Like, that's all small fries. That adds up to a medium fry, but those hey. are all small fry losses. I don't even care if I get stopped out at this point. I just want something to happen. <laughs> God, I've said those famous words before too. I've said that. I don't even care at this point. Just have something happen. Oh, 
Uh-huh. We got to outweigh. Come on, Zach. We got to outweigh this market. We'll outweigh this sucker. You got a good entry? Let's see, something's going to happen here in the next 13 minutes of the trade. You see the countdown clock? A little graphic, lower right corner there. 13, 21. Yeah. Do we have those cool uh, trader wins? I think I put up three trader wins that we can cover real quick. Oh, I yeah, I'm still waiting to hear back. I've got some trader wins, but we do. We're in the oh, last okay. 15 minutes here. We will get a liquidity injection here in the next three and a half minutes when we hit 250 central time. Another liquidity injection, 255 central time. It's been pretty tame. When we do get that MOC from Eddie, I'll let you know. The way these, a, lot of, a lot of these closes have been behaving lately, it's kind of uh, wait-and-see mode. Keep in mind, we do have Netflix after the bell. Well, I thought people are bullish on that. We are, I think I saw in the chat there, did see a little bit of a bid going into that earnings report. So maybe someone knows something. Options typically tell a better story as to what is expected going into that. Man, I don't think we've... I don't know if this has ever happened. Do you have two people on opposite sides of the market both waiting for something to happen? And it's like the money? I feel kind of <laughs> mediocre. Both in the money, I, mean, yeah. I feel, uh, I feel pretty mediocre the money. about this all Love thing. to see it. Yeah, I mean, you, you're in a great spot. You're in a great spot. Hashtag you're in profit, though, I'm power. guessing. No, I'm, I'm in the red by like 40 bucks. Okay. YM was only $5 a, a tick, so it's it's really, really reasonable. How many ticks does YM move on average? I, I actually never really look at the YM. Um, well, one point is so if it's like if the Dow is trading at like thirty eight thousand, thirty eight thousand and one is a five dollar move in futures. So that's one tick. So it's basically just five dollars okay. per point, which is like very, very straight, very, very straightforward. But do you know, know what the uh, average average amount of ticks that it moves in no a day? Idea. No idea. Mm-hmm. I just okay. I just trade ranges. It doesn't doesn't matter to me. Just follow the like range. what's a um what what's a good amount of ticks for you? Like wh- how many ticks are you usually catching on your trades? It depends on the time frame and the size of the range that I'm trading. Like so, for example, the range trade I took this morning was based off a daily chart. So it was a daily range short, which is like about as good as it gets for a day trader. And yeah. I held that trade for over an hour to get, uh, you know, quite a bit. I can switch to that account and pull up the orders. But, yeah, we were short. Uh, hold on. Sorry. We were short 38309 309 Holy crap, was that a good short? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, was. Oh, this morning? Dude, that was oh, very nice short. Was. God, was that an incredible trade. So I got that okay. one. I yeah, I took I covered that at thirty eight thousand two twenty five, but I could have held that pretty much all day. All right, right. we got twenty and seconds till the first liquidity great. injection here, fellas. Less than ten minutes left in the session enough. here. Power hour. Top step TV. Thank you for oh, joining us. Shout out to all the bell to bellers. Let's rock and roll here, guys. We'll see what happens. What both of you guys are kind of sitting in the money. Zach sitting sitting quite pretty, about thirty ticks in the money. Delta eight thousand. Yes. I got filled on a second. Yeah, thirty eight thousand forty nine. I'm like a hundred ticks in profit yeah. right now. We're getting wiggle in the ladder. Let's uh, five yep. minutes. We're gonna get something nasty. I'm calling it right now. I agree. Something's happening. Yeah, the ladder. <laughs> the ladder is getting that wiggle. So we're something gonna, we're happened. Gonna just something the happened. Getting the wiggle. Like Zach said, I don't care at this point. Just something happened. <laughs> there it is. Called it. Right. Something's happening. Yep. Something is happening. All right. Something. <laughs> well, breakout. I'm short like five right now. Six stopped out. Yeah, there was the wiggle on the ladder. Yeah, so now it. I'm down a hundred bucks. I was up like seven hundred or eight in this account. All right, so we got our MOC and balance one point five billion. Oh, buy side to the to the buy side to the buy side. side. All right, that's a big one. One point five billion. Yeah. Hmm. Hold <laughs> the wiggle at least. That was good. Trade, not so good. Come on. Zach yeah. Anthony I mean, I on from forty fours. Yeah, great trade, Ant. Yeah, great yep, trade. Yep, great yep. trade. Yeah. So now all the consolidations are broken. So there's not really much of a trade here anymore. Yes, looking not for not on the Nasdaq. 
Yeah. We're still in the range on the NASDAQ. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, I would just hold that sucker. Why not? If you can break that range, dude, oh, yeah, you're in I'm such holding. good shape. Yeah, keep in mind those are Delta. They're short, about 3,500 in NASDAQ. So there might be a little mini squeeze going on here, Zach Anthony. I like where you're at. Obviously, you do too. About 40 ticks in the money. Austin Silver, yes, he is still long, staying strong. Long and strong. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Are we going to reject the middle? Hmm. All right. Let's try more shorts. It's that's actually something that's really, really hard to do. So like, let's say you're like a range trader and you, you know, trade the first half of the session and then leave and come back. Like I didn't take into account the fact that we bounced off the 30 minute range low, which is bullish. So I probably should have been like leaning towards longs the entire time. Cause if you go to like a bigger time, like a bigger time frame, say like the, the one hour, we're still bouncing. We're still living in a world where we are bouncing off the 30 minute range low. And so to me, I probably could have justified longs there, but I just wanted to hop into shorts. And I think I just got stop ran, to be honest. That's kind of frustrating. Mm, yeah, that oof. God yeah, it's what it's looking like. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got stopped uh, out at 78s so and went to 96s. Bummer. Bummer. Uh, hey real quick we got over 2500 people watching pretty strong for power hour right now please click like oh, please click yeah. subscribe on the way to 82,000 subscribers we are well on our way to 100,000 we get to 100,000 we'll have a nice little celebration for that maybe sometime this summer June maybe It'd be pretty cool but yeah let's get that uh, subscriber count up we hit 100,000 hit 100, we'll throw a big old party here Sellers came in there. Damn, Dolby. It's rough. Yeah, man. It's rough. It's rough. It happens. It does happen. It, it does happen. It happens. It'll happen again. It's not the first time. It's definitely not the last time. It just sucks when it is that time. When it is that time. Yeah. I mean, that was a pretty. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be run over. up there. What the hell? I'd be very surprised if my trade stays alive and we go back up at this point. Yeah. Man. All right, 55 is about to hit here. 50 seconds. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm about to be stopped out. Man, 40 ticks in the munch. Dude, look at that stop run on that. Jeez, dude. Oh my God. I don't know how many people survived that one. I mean, if this is your range, it... Yep, we're out. 48 to 95. That was almost like a third of the range was the actual run outside and back in. That's, that's brutal, tough. That's brutal, a tough brutal. pill to swallow. Yeah. I mean, that's where, um, like, position management and sizing is super important. Like, I probably could have done a much better job, like, not sizing up so aggressively. And then maybe uh, have a much wider stop in anticipation of a 30-minute stop run. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? You can't win See, them all. See, it's funny. For me, it's the exact opposite. I should have had my regular size on and been happy with, you know, 100 ticks. Oh, uh, and Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was never in the profit in that one. I was just waiting for this to roll, but it rolled me first before I could roll it. But things we never saw volume. I think that's why I was. So, I think that's where I got my conviction from. Is that we? I just never saw the volume start to pick up as it approached the middle of the range. It kind of just peter off the entire time, and then all of a sudden, sellers came in, and you got this huge wick. Mm -hmm. So very, very tricky stuff here. At the end of the day. Yeah. Pretty lackluster yes. power hour. Hey, Zach, now that you're flat, can we get your P&L just so we can throw it up there on the board? Yeah, I am up uh, 229.30. 229.30. What is that? $2,000? Two, two, $2, uh, 220. No, no, no. I wish. Gotcha, $229.30. Gotcha. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Dow came small back. Day yep. today. It's all good. Hey, man, update. It was not the easiest markets at all. And we do have some more yeah. full store here. I'm not sure when Netflix will come out. If it'll come out exactly at 3 o'clock, typically they'll wait a couple minutes after. So we got that. Then we got the earnings haul following the report. 
look at the calendar here. Yeah, earnings call of 45 minutes thereafter. Eddie will update you with the schedule. Yeah, that was brutal. That was... I had, yeah, I had short 70s and 73s too, but that was my positions I was adding into. So I was over leveraged in my opinion. In, in that example, I was yeah. for sure over leveraged. Yeah. Hey, if you don't trade with a stop, then you don't take losses. Am I right, chat? <laughs> don't do that. That's not you ain't a loser until you cover the trade, too. Never forget that. <laughs> yeah, not a right. loser until you cover. <laughs> if I just held it forever, I never would have lost. Yeah. It's not, not a loser until you cover. Limits. Never forget. I'm just kidding. Don't take those words Let's literally. It's simply a joke Kool-Aid. in the trading world. Do not do that. Set your stops that. and just eat up the losses. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Live to trade another day or size down. Trade micros. Winners and quitters. Exactly, Brian Wagner is <laughs> winners and quitters. <laughs> I like that. All right, fellas, less than three minutes here on Power Hour. Yeah, it's been enjoyable. It's cool hanging out with you guys. Zach Anthony, That's do welcome. not be a stranger around here. We're definitely going to have you back. Get these markets cooking again. Tough break. It's not your fault. Not your fault. It's not your fault. Do something. You know I, what, Zach? I hope not, me. man. Zach, you did say, I don't care what happens at this point. I just want the market to do something. I did. I did. I got what I wished for. The market hurts you. It did what you asked. (laughs) Uh, Did exactly what you asked. Maybe I just got to like open up a a 15 contract long right now or something. (laughs) Maybe that'll move the market. Brutal. Tough, tough, tough. But uh, it did happen. I have 90 seconds left here in the session. Of Netflix coming out shortly thereafter. Be flat going into that as we don't know what's going to happen. Back in Q4 2023, smashing results for that, that earnings call. Pass cracking down password sharing has seemed to improve the uh, top and bottom line there. Yeah, Chad is saying it's crazy how both of us lost, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, we did." <laughs> Welcome to trading. House one. That's, house, yeah. house one. You know, we were sitting at the blackjack table. You know, I had a 17, Zach had a 20, market flipped 21. That's how that one happens. That's what a range will do. <laughs> That's yeah. what a range will do. Oh, it's so true. All right, 50 seconds here. Eddie, you got the bell. You got the outro when we get there. Just want to say shout out to all the bell to bellers. Uh, you guys, this ain't happening. We'll keep this sucker strong. Last day of the trade or for the week tomorrow. So, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Let's keep making the sucker bigger. We got some more house account trades coming up in the near future. Excited need those levels, though. Account. When we send out those emails for levels, please submit. If you don't want us to use your name, we don't have to use your name. We do need those levels, though, because uh, we like to uh, submit trades. Here we go, guys. About 30 seconds, 10 seconds, sorry, 15 seconds. Here we go. Kind of a weird spot for the market to end up if it just closes here. Like we're not even like in the middle. We're not even at like at an like at an extreme. Damn. We do have ten minutes left. Maybe it just rolls. Who knows? Session is over. Thank you guys. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Fun. Yeah, man, that was fun. That was fun. Let's do it again, Eddie. All right, Zach. We got to see you back again, brother. To see it turn Definitely, out man. I think I'm coming back next week. So, oh, All right. sweet. Save you a seat for sure. Oh, folks, traders, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, animals, vegetables, and minerals. I hope you had a good day today. I uh, hope you learned something. If you didn't, right? And remember, uh, if we didn't fail, we'd never get any better. Um, tomorrow, taking a look at our economic numbers. Well, I usually say there's meat on the bone here, but tomorrow, uh, you're just getting a piece of toast. That's it. Burnt toast tomorrow. Uh, we've got uh, the only thing I really see here is Goolsby speaking, 930. And then our U.S. Uh, Baker Hughes uh, oil rig that's going to be out here. And scrolling down uh, the CFTC, that's it. But gosh, nothing. No, I'm not seeing nothing here. But to make up for that, we want you to be here tomorrow. Uh, we, once again, the all-star cast, um, I'm going to be here. So I hope to see you here. Uh, log in, log in here, uh, about, uh, you can get here early, but eight, 
8 a.m. 8 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we're gonna have opening call with Hogan myself. And check this out. All right, check this out. Fast markets. We got Andre. We got Hogue. We got MP. We got Dakota. Coach Dakota and Coach Jay. You're not gonna miss that one. Uh, after that, power players with Dolby. Peter Tuckman's gonna join us for a Friday. We all love Peter. Um, also, Jack and Brooke for top quiz. I haven't seen Brooke in a while. That should be fun. Shoulder tap, Mick and Jack. We also do have group coaching, JD and Hogue. Uh, we're going to have our strategy lab with Anne Marie. And I got to give her props, man. She called that level top and we knocked on that door. I didn't think we we're going to get that high here today. Props to Anne Marie. She's going to be with us at one o'clock. And then Power Hour. Yes, the dynamic duo, Dolby and Andre and Danny's trades. Mm. <laughs> so be here tomorrow. I'm going to stick around, but uh, hey, we, we love having you with us here today. And um, we hope that you love being here just the same. Hopefully you did learn something here, at least one thing. And if you have, you're moving your trading knowledge forward. So let's get some rest. Let's re-energize. Let's have a fantastic rest of your day. And of course, stay safe, stay healthy. Until we meet again, I'm Eddie Horn, and this has been Top Step TV. See you tomorrow.